people for your first gym session at a at like a MMA gym or jiu jitsu? Uh, you know that I like was a D one wrestler and like I got my brown belt in jiu jitsu. That's kind of what I was trying to explain to him uh, right. when I was I'm, doing. I'm trying channel. to understand how you got in the environment. Oh, this was a weird. I was telling. I was lady. telling. I was telling previous stories about my training. Oh, back oh in the yeah, day. not by that like hundred yeah. ten percent. And lactoid. I was thinking like that current was you. Oh yeah, I mean, I was, I was thinking like that's current what I was you. Too. He's like current me heavy. Yeah, current like, me would like land like, and like fall apart. I would like turn into like the the what's that gingerbread man and just like my leg would fall off. I was like, I was like, dude, how did you? Were, how are you in that situation? Number one, and how strong was this bitch? Because you got a lot of leverage. It's all leverage now. Leverage. Sure, I get that it's all leverage. Sure, fine. But I mean, you to need be fair, real we've never seen, good technique. We've never seen his lower body. Could all just be like you know toothpicks. Uh, it's not. It's, not it's, it's like tree trunks. <laughs> tree trunks. He's just been on a bulk for like fourteen years and like never did leg day. <laughs> now he's gonna cut for the wrestling. What's leg day? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen your legs Apparently. either. It might, it might not be applicable to you. <laughs> Uh, actually, Prime, I have a question for you. Uh, mm. Based off of our, uh, I don't know if you recall, our conversation a few weeks ago in terms of, like, we established I have no imagination or very limited, a different imagination than you. Uh, but, like, I do have uh, the ability to visualize, okay? Where it's like, mm. and I'm curious uh, in terms of, like, so, like, for me, let's say this has been at least, you know, a strength of mine when it comes to, like, you know, studying academically, as in, like, when I see a presentation, okay, and I'm learning, I can, like, visualize the slides, obviously not, like, it takes more than once I'm reviewing it, but, like, on a, on a test, I can recall it pretty, pretty accurately, and, like, I can visualize, like, oh, I know from this slide, from this presentation. Uh, um, do you have, like, is it pretty much, like, a similar process for you, in terms of, like, you're able to visualize in the same way, like, do you have, like, because like I have no imagination, but I at least have that visualization there. Is it maybe something different for you? If like you have a vivid imagination, but your ability to visualize information might be different than mine. I don't know. Oh, I can visualize. Um, I can visualize things from my past memory. Yeah, I can um, remember uh, text, uh, pages, you know, images, you know, like 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 images that were shown to me. I can recreate uh, those scenes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh well, yeah, I'm just efficient then. I just thought maybe it was just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've I'm fairly close to uh, photogenic memory. Like I, I'm 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 pretty like I don't have perfect recall or anything like that, but I often can remember like the page number and what the page looked like in like a textbook I was reading, and then like if like there was like a little known fact, you know, like like the Pearsons, like many of like the oh yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. like. And like early grad school textbooks have like those little pop out boxes and stuff. I can like during a test remember that box. And because I remember that box, basically remember I can't quite read it, but I can visualize it and then remember every single thing that was like in that box or in that paragraph. On that, um, uh, let me let me ask a question. I have here. pretty close of I have pretty close to photographic memory, but not quite. What do you think of these, Corey? These Vita, Vita eyes, the blue light defender vitamins. What do you think? I of just these? see uh, a white label Wait, with no writing on. on it, so I do not recommend taking unlabeled. Let's see. Uh, hold unlabeled on. Let's tablet. see. We get that. We get the, 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 bl the blur off. Vita eyes. They're like blue light vitamins. Blue what? You're 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 consuming blue light? Is that what I'm understanding? So, so like uh, apparently it's supposed to like re uh, theoretically. Donald Trump was right. We just get the bleach and the sunlight in in the veins. It's, so I, I apparently it's supposed to replenish the vitamin that your eyes use to absorb blue light. This absolutely looks like something that Alex Jones would sell. Yeah, I'm not, you know, because they sent me a free package of it, so I'm definitely thinking it's very Alex Jonesy. And and super super creative, unique branding, vite vite eyes. Like you, you can't get any more <laughs> creative than that. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking yeah. maybe we start selling on the Gibbs as Dr. Gibbs. Uh, well, you know? what, what I would say is, like, uh, you know, uh, at your own risk, uh, you, you, typically for a lot of these things, like, what they say is, like, in the bottle is not actually in the bottle. You might actually consume, be consuming either nothing or maybe contaminants or maybe things you don't want. Yeah, I mean, it's it. like mainly vitamin C. Is what it looks no, like. No, 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 no. That's what they say. That's what they say. It's a different story mm -hmm. in terms of what's actually. Yeah. So when when you're not FDA regulated and you are not a you're not a if you don't deal with uh, pharmacy care managers, right? So you're not like creating polypeptide chains and like a small because like most of the stuff that you get is like is made in small mom and pop labs in America. 
Um, but they're super, super, super regulated. Um, and they kind of have to be, I mean, somebody has to regulate them, either the market or some company or the FDA. Somebody has to like make sure because if you're off by just a little bit, like you can completely destroy any benefit and even possibly turn something toxic um, just by being like off of the teeniest tiny bit on anything, any component. Or what you'll find is that it's like drastic, more often than not, it's like drastically reduced in like its effectiveness. So like, yeah, most of the time when you're buying shit like that, like whatever you have is, it's it's like, it's it's a crapshoot if you're even getting what's in, what's supposedly on the bottle. It's different, mm -hmm. like so. Like I take, uh, I take desiccated liver and desiccated organ. Um, you can kind of guarantee that that's what's in there, unless they're just like committing fraud, because it's there's not like that doesn't need to be made in a laboratory. It's just liver that's cut up, that's cooked and then dried and dehydrated. Don't you do that at home? And then put it? in a capsule. I, I've never. I do that at home. <laughs> I just, I eat it yeah, raw. I mean, you could. I I mean, I ate. I just got sick of going to butchers buying organ meat butchers cooking the organ meat you're not if they're shooting them yourself and and butchering yeah. it yourself yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, shooting, gotta... shooting real Get... men use bow and arrows obviously yeah. well i don't even do that we knife hunt our grizzly yeah. bears let's go yeah Gibbs, he's not a real man like you i so uh go yeah, ahead Gibbs uh, got so loud <laughs> that like something on my computer turned your volume way down no my my thing does that i have a set because i get really loud sometimes and i have a set it like cancels me out when i'm like really yelling the wood that's why i don't use this microphone because uh it'll just blast everybody to death i appreciate the consideration you know i try i try <laughs> yeah but yeah I, I try and risk with the vite eyes i i personally would not but you know you're you're yeah, more I, adventure you're more so, we established last week you're I do think a there bigger is, risk taker there I are am. supplements you can take for like macular degeneration and retinal detachment to like help preserve your current eyes but like well those are really expensive so i was real <laughs> sussed out i posted those like doctorates i got and uh on instagram and i like put like dr gibbs yeah, yeah i put i put i put in you know hashtag dr gibbs or whatever and uh you mean doctor like, doctor gibbs yeah yeah dr <laughs> reverend gibbs or whatever and uh, we did both don't worry they're both tags now and uh uh, almost immediately i got hit up by this company and they're like we'll send us your address we'll ship you this shit and i was like they're like yeah and if you want to you we can we can do a little promo code thing and you'll get like 50 percent of whatever you sell i was like 50 percent yeah that sounds sus but all right oh so really you're just selling it on this show now that's why i want to show i, I haven't i haven't done it yet i haven't agreed to nothing there's been no agreements made I'm not promo sponsored. Gibbs. Promo code Admiral Gibbs. I am sponsored by Blue Chew. Go ahead and use your code Admiral Gibbs for Blue Chew first month free. Well, so you, so you do have some erectile you're, difficulty. Your volume uh, keeps getting uh, <laughs> super quiet. What's Blue Chew? It's uh, it's dick pills. Yeah. He's, he's, he's it's, it's Viagra. Black, Black Toy knows what it is. Black <sighs> Toy knows what it is. So fucking uh -huh. I don't. I don't need any help. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's really good when go. you. It's really good when you <laughs> push it up with your right you right those? and you snort it, right? Like, uh, uh, you got a candy flip. Have you guys ever tried, like, gas station dick pills? Those are, I, I have not, but those are absolutely scams, for sure. I don't know. I've, I've tried, like, um, I think, like, three of them from the gas station. Just because I was curious as to, like, how they work, if they work, right? And um, they actually do work. Okay, yeah. so it's not a scam. <laughs> it's not a scam. It makes you it makes you kind of feel like shit, but it's definitely not a scam. You're it's not supposed to do the, you're not supposed to do the rhino ones more than like two of them like in a month span because it's like super toxic apparently. Have you seen that, was that one supplement that markets itself at uh, improving the size of your loads? It's called. Uh... It's called locked. And that one hundred percent works. Well, that well, okay. Dude, that one hundred percent works. I, we had this conversation, Doobie, and I know the yeah. guy who sells it. And then you are like uh, trying to like hit me up for a discount. You can you can yeah. just buy the vitamins that are in that though. Like uh, I like I was reading what they I saw a TikTok about this, and I looked it up, and I was like, ah, it's sus. And it's all just like uh, like magnesium and like uh, niacin and some other yeah. bullshit. Yeah, it's just like a volume enhancer. It, it's it's I I like it. My my fiance likes it. I have no complaints. Everybody likes bigger loads. My, okay, my, my only complaint is that you have to take like fucking nine of them a day or some shit. But that that beyond that, it's like nine. It's good. Of them. I like it. Oh. You take a lot of them, yeah, and for a long period of time. Well, I take I take a lot of like supplements. Like the, the fucking um collagen pills I take are like there's like six of them that I take a day. Wait, you're wasting um, your. You don't need collagen pills. Oh, okay, don't whatever. don't fucking doctor at me. Okay, <laughs> it, it, I'm I'm taking it. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you want to waste your money, by all means, you probably have money but, to spare. Doesn't it help your yeah. joints, Corey? 
Uh, well, no, because people people think that when you ingest collagen, it's going to go to the collagen like in your <laughs> joints. But you know, you have your digestive system that like breaks down proteins into peptides. What's uh, your opinion on steroids, you, Corey? Hold on, pause. I take collagen with my protein, but I just take it as like a protein with like the, a more complete protein that may or may not be healthy for the skin, but mostly I'm just taking it. Do you do like yeah, a like protein like shake? If you're just taking a protein supplement, like, but, but people th- seem yeah, to take, I take it for like, I take a, joints. Like an animal based, I take like an animal based um, grass fed uh, protein with like uh, A2 milk and some collagen all together. And that's uh, 52 grams of protein and 18 grams of carbs. So it works out pretty well. I feel like we should put a poll up on uh, on uh, all our channels right now and see uh, if women actually want bigger loads. I feel like that's what we should we should poll. That's how we should. Start. Uh, we should first of all, first first of all get one, one response like, from one woman in the chat. Of collectively. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 collectively here, there's probably like four women in the chat, um, and even even then, we have to assume that they're honest, which yeah. I don't assume that anybody's honest on internet polls. I saw one study that, that like, uh, the thesis was that uh, semen is an antidepressant because, um, oh, that. like, yeah, yeah, there's, like, some study that showed that, like, if you don't use protection, then, like, she's happier afterwards. Um, I could say that sounds course, like a guy who made that study. That, uh, um, but, it, uh, it definitely does, doesn't it? Uh, and I'm yeah. sure you, I'm sure you dissected a lot. Uh, you can tell me the methodology, like what exactly, or did you just read that conclusion? I was a self. I, 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 yeah, I've read that conclusion, and then I bring it up when it's convenient for me. Okay. I don't, I, I don't uh, know why. Do be, I do be spreading happiness when he's taking those pills. That's what he's doing, right? That's what was the whole point in the first place. Spread joy. No, whatever works. And he said he, he has no complaints from his partner. So. Also, I just no, googled it, and uh, Harvard says that collagen is good for you. So, hmm. good for you versus good for your joints are two separate claims. It says good and, for your skin and joints. Just saying. Look at that. Mm. Oh, I thought there was more than good you for your skin you and can, joints. And I don't want to say that you can get any <laughs> scientific claim, especially when it comes to nutrition, diet, and supplements published. <laughs> In that, nearly any magazine, you know, but well, you that, can kind of get nearly any scientific claim and study with poor methodology published uh, yeah. uh, on uh, diet, uh, nutrition, or supplements in in almost all of these. Like maybe not Nature magazine or Science, but like there are so many places that you yeah, there, I mean, there is a caveat. These 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 papers do come from apparently collagen manufacturers. So well, a little bit say, of a conflict I, of interest I, I, there. I, I trust like a little bit, producers like the most when they do uh, like uh, panels and they do studies on alternate fuel sources. Like that's, those are people we can trust. Exxon. Uh-huh. Um, I, I actually, so two things. One, I wanted to um, quickly go back to the Vite Eyes uh, thing that we were talking about before. Yeah, Vite Eyes. Um, yeah, yeah. Because as you described it, it was to help replace the vitamin in your eyes that like absorbs blue light. Um, so this comes from the idea that blue light is like harmful to you um, in some way, right? And so like, you know, you're looking at your screens all the time and they have blue light and then that does a thing and then don't let it do that thing to you. Um, but uh, my understanding is that's not even like real. Um, that's like a, I don't, I don't know where it even came from, but it's just like a thing. And then that's, but but as soon as like you get those like health factoids, like those easily digestible health factoids, well then you can like monetize that, right? All those things. So you can sell like blue light glasses to people, you know? Um, and I mean, you can So hold on, there is some truth to that. It's just not I, the it's not the, the original claim that mm-hmm. like the, that it's doing anything harmful to your eyes is what's bullshit. Mm-hmm. But, but if you filter it, it does reduce stress on your eyes. It's the same reason why if you if you're in a harbor master unit or or like a air traffic control area at night, they're always using red light. Um, it's because it, it it's easy for your eyes to say adjusted to the dark and it's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. stress on your eyes. So what I'm saying, yeah. So I'm this you know, so what I'm hearing is like it's a like when you have these health factoids, they can just become anything and you can monetize that thing, right? So now you're running out of the um the vitamin. Right. And so now you can replenish the vitamin because you've heard that blue light, like I, like I described it, blue light does a thing, right? You want to stop doing that thing. And then, so like, let's monetize a solution to that thing. Um, so that's just like a, like a thing that you can can see this name examples of this. as has happened like throughout history. Right. 
um, like, and by history, I mean like internet history. You can just see a, a whole a list of these things. As soon as the public can absorb a, a, a one of those factoids, then you can just do anything with that. Um, I'm and then, I have a question for you. Oh, so, uh, and before you do, I just want a quick question, Doobie. Doobie, yeah. do you did you start taking all those vitamins when you were like started working out, like uh, like those supplements? Because that's what people who work out do. Like. Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I, did, I did a lot of really, really unhealthy shit at the start. Like, I went on a, a potato diet for, like, six months, okay? It, it, I felt f- like I was dying. Like kidney patient? No, I was eating nothing but boiled potatoes. Boiled potatoes with just uh, n- sometimes some sep- um, some pepper. Um, I eat a little bit of salt sometimes. I'd eat, like, eight of them a day, right? That, and that's, all, that's it, just with, like, water and, and that. So what was your uh, I felt like I was fucking dying, okay? Um, but I lost a lot of weight. Yeah, um, literally no nutrients. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, potatoes are like a superfood. So I, I think, like I think once I got somewhere. through that stage of doing like, and I also did the juicing thing for for a while. Um, nothing yeah, right. like ju- I was like juicing vegetables. Yeah, it's a shit. windstall. That's what um, So after I got through that stage, right, of trying to like find a way to like crash course losing weight, I figured out a healthy way to do it, and I started taking vitamins and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, if you want to say something to that, go ahead, Bam. But then we we'll go to Scott and uh, Corey. Yeah, I was just curious what your what the what the logic was behind that like everything everything as far as like fitness when you first get introduced is like cutting carbs versus like going with the most carb you know like the most you know starchly <laughs> dense food on earth is the only thing you're consuming like i've just never even heard of that diet. are you asking me yeah i'm asking you because you did it oh what um, was it, like, i think that lot that behind it at the time i think at the start um i wanted to Go cold turkey on everything, all right? So I wanted to do like the, the. I felt like I needed to do the hardest thing, because I needed to lose so much weight. And if I didn't do the hardest thing, I would just I would fuck up again, right? If I gave myself any any uh, outlet, right, where I was eating food that that uh, tasted good, uh, felt good, I'd fuck up. Um, okay, so that's not really a so. I think industry. you just like made up something. Yeah, I had nothing to do with the fitness industry. It was me saying, okay, how the fuck can I lose weight as quick as possible? Oh, some people do this. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I remember looking it up at the time. How many calories in a, in a bowl of potato, right? Oh, it's like 119 calories or some shit. It's like, okay, well, that's very few calories. I need to reduce my calorie count. So I just do that. Fuck the nutrients, right? And it was a very stupid way to do it. Um, so, yeah, it, it was, had nothing to do with the fitness industry. It was all just me being stupid. Okay, I was just curious. Like I was, I was like, I've never heard that, and I've looked at Scott and Corin. So I, I mean, I have a, and maybe it's a tangent. I don't oh, know, yeah. but like, I do have like this weird, like I'm not sure whether or not it is morally good or morally bad or morally neutral, and I mean this in a purely prescriptive way, right? To to separate a fool from his money, right? Like, like if you're stupid enough to buy supplements that there's no research supporting, there's no data supporting, um, you, you only bought it because you saw Dr. Oz say it was good on TV. Right. Um, and like, that's, that's your only claim of like any expertise or anything. And you spend like a good chunk of like, you spend four or five Netflix accounts a month. Like, is it like, like on this supplement that's not doing shit for you? Like, is it morally wrong because you're defrauding them in some capacity, but are you really defrauding them? If you're being kind of, if you're being upfront about it and saying like, Hey, we think it does these things, et cetera, especially when someone can very easily Google it. So it doesn't really, doesn't really fit the definition of fraud per se, um, because the information is readily available that it's not good. And so is it morally neutral or is it morally good to take money away from unproductive retards that don't know what to do with their money and funnel it into people that have the business acumen to take money from them? Like, is that not a better, like a good for society I have, to give money towards more productive, intelligent people and get it away from retards? I, I have thoughts on this, but like, Corey, go for it. Well, us. I'm going to springboard off of that and build off of that. Uh, separating a fool, I think, yeah, separating a fool and the money. Mm-hmm. And you said when everything's easily Googleable. So I'm going to bring it back to Lactoid because Lactoid made a claim. Of, uh-huh. I just, I talking just, about uh, fools. Yeah, I let's just, talk, no, let's no, talk no, to Lactoid. I'm, I'm not going to be Lactoid. <laughs> it's the semen claim, right? 
No, 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 no. He said he Googled something quickly about collagen. And according to Harvard, did, so did you read that entire article? Did you read the section oh, on should go. you try collagen? Obviously, collagen? he didn't fucking read the entire no, article. No, no, so, so, so uh, that's why I'm trying to get to the root of That's why I emphasized, quote, I just Googled this and I yeah, yeah, the first no, link. No. <laughs> exactly. So there, there is a section in this Harvard article that, that says, should you try collagen supplements or drinks? At this time, there isn't enough proof that taking collagen pills or consuming collagen drinks will make a difference in skin, hair, or nails. Our bodies cannot absorb collagen in its whole form because, again, like I said, we have a digestive system that breaks things down into peptides and amino acids. Okay, so you consuming collagen in its alpha helical form doesn't stay in its alpha helical form. Uh, and that's why, like, yeah, people okay, can Google Corey. things. Okay, but, Corey, but, well, know, then what about this? For all vitamins? Quote, other vitamins? trials have found that the supplements can improve no, 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 ability no, no. See, and decrease what? joint pain, such as with osteoarthritis or in athletes. What about that, Corey? Yeah, but that's not, so that's a separate claim. We can go down that, so, but, so, you, you, you mentioned uh, skin, hair, and nails, and apparently it's good. So, that Harvard one, does it have a section there talking about should you take it? Did you it get says, to that part? It says, it says, human studies are Harvard. lacking, but some randomized controlled trials have found yeah, yeah, collagen so, supplements again, improve skin elasticity, well, joint mobility, you're, you're, and decreased joint pain, and so, sperm so, is an antidepressant. <laughs> so, so what does it say under the question, should you try collagen supplements or drinks? What does it say? Does it I'm say- I'm trying to find that section. I, uh... <laughs> you're, you're, not gonna find, you're not gonna find that in literally any fucking scientific study. Any it's scientific really study? Bad scientific study. If, if it is a, it's a poorly, it's, if a scientist is recommending you take a supplement in their study, like they're giving you recommendations to take a supplement or to eat a certain thing, you're you're almost certainly looking at a heavily biased study like Probably. even when you see like even when you see like groups like like um like like um the governmental organizations like research from them being like you know where they where they hire someone to basically be like let's talk about why you know ultra processed diets are so great even the government will be like doesn't seem that it would fuck you up too bad like they don't tell you like go eat a bunch of kellogg cereal right like they'll just be like it's it it, it seems to be that 70 percent ultra processed diet is perfectly fine so long as you're getting your macronutrients wink wink also right? like, like but that's the tricky part because like I, I actually don't know whether you know lactoid does just you know is either being uh intentionally obtuse or unintentionally obtuse uh and just only wants to cherry pick information uh where he knows that my claim is I'm gonna, correct I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the most important sentence that the said you're just being kind of autistic that about said this. the available research has not shown negative side effects in people given collagen supplements there's there, there's no risk right there's no risk I, I it's, agree. It's like, it's like there's so there's some evidence that says it's good. Is there like a ton of evidence? No, but there's no so, downside. So why not? Like you well, know, no, so, well, yeah, that's why. Like I agree with you. Assuming a betting what, man should do it. Yeah, <laughs> Pascal's <laughs> wager. That the, the, the Pascal's wager. <laughs> Collagen <laughs> wager. Exactly. It's crazy. I mean, like, this, this is, is the exact is, same is, argument is I use for not wearing a condom. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> There is a risk, right? Which is you well, know, there is a risk there. Yeah. Money. <clears throat> well, yeah, you could turn into Myron and, and taking it. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> yeah, why he's but... pissed. She's really pretty. Like that kid's gonna be like way more oh, attractive. He's, he's pissed because it ruins his brand, and he's done. Who's uh, why does who, that ruin his brand? About... Sorry, oh, oh you want to know why it ruins his brand? All right, one because he's been sitting here for however long preaching all this bullshit. Then he's over here <laughs> acting like his half his brand is Christianity, and then he's like, oh, by the way, get an abortion which is pretty anti-Christian. Then he yeah, turns right around and he's like, oh, well, I'm so rich. And in that thing, it says, I don't have any money for you. So it sounds like he's poor. So not only is he not rich, he's not Christian and he's a hypocrite. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. Who, and then, talking about? Well, he's Myron, a hypocrite. It sounds pretty crazy. Just randomly started talking about Myron. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, so it's fine. I, I'm going to catch you. I'm going to catch you up a little you, you bit. Know the, so, you know the losers okay. from Fresh and Fit? Yeah. Like, like so most, one of the dudes, uh, one of the dudes just recently. One of the dudes like, nutted a one. Chinese escort, and then his friend he's, he's cried about it. He's having being a kid. Being like, I was soon by my dude for trying to tell that Chinese escort to get an abortion because I'm because we're boys, bro, and they're, the world's against us, and we like to murder babies, but pay no attention to that because the world's against us, bro. It's, it's just idiots being idiots. Yeah, How about, yeah, so something specific She's is weird, attractive, like, though. You specifically mentioned about I mean collagen because I was actually just um went with someone yesterday to pick up some biotin and collagen supplements. Like and although your body 
from everything from literally everything i've seen it says that like generally the body like a supplement w in, as by itself wouldn't be enough to like actually affect your hair and nails um yeah, collagen is like most abundant protein in your body but if you have you but if you if you're like protein deficient in your diet already I was about to say it, it can be positive to supplement it. Like if you're yeah, but having that, brittle nails or, that, Corey. or hair. Yeah, if you're protein deficient, more protein in any form is going to help you. I, I right. agree with that. But specifically, <laughs> well, specifically <laughs> collagen. Almost nobody and, is getting and the biotin. protein they should be getting for their weight. Right? Like you're supposed to be getting like what? Like roughly 80% of the protein. Yeah, it's um, like to, the, to the, the general rule of thumb is like 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. I don't think you know how much red yeah, meat I'm I saying eat. like 80% mm -hmm. is what I mean like like you know like <laughs> maybe you, you don't need 200 like I don't think I need college you should my, be getting like 160 is grams of protein <laughs> nobody is unless they're eating really healthy that's why I have such luscious hair it's well, uh you know yeah so, well that's the yeah. thing like I eat the joints of animals and my nails are very thick um so, I mean, Corey, Wait, uh, you, you that, Corey? Yeah, can you uh, can you change out your chair for a couple of only streams? oxtail soup Change out my chair. Why? Yeah. But could be, why do why? Because I want to see what happens when you sit on a soft chair. Sit on my, a soft my, chair. My back hurts too bad. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my rest my case. Okay. Um, that's that's for different still, reasons though. He fucking got uh, you there. I'm not gonna lie. He fucking cooked you there. No, that's because I fucked up on a deadlift. For a couple that's, streams. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was gonna say it's because he's like, never uh, his pectoral never. muscles are so like <laughs> thick, right? Like it's a lot of weight on his back, and you know, it's, I, I would uh, I would actually yeah. like I would actually kind of side with Corey. Like if you're a gym rat, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but my advice would be don't deadlift uh, if you can avoid it, especially yep. if you yep. do it wrong. Don't like I did. Yeah, I I agree yeah. with you. If you do it wrong, you just, you can mess up a lot. Yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. How much? How much? Hey you man, deadlift don't do this thing wrong sage advice well no it's um, just like it's the risk is the risk versus reward you get back from it like anyone who like the people who deadlift are like power lifters like they're doing it for the sport of it like professional athletes generally don't deadlift or power clean for that for that matter even um, though they probably should because it'll be beneficial depending on you you're obviously your athletic it impresses women though so there is that um why do you think i was trying but, to do it I way, a, way, way too much weight you gotta get that fat tummy bro. Picture, i was bro. trying to, i was trying to look good and it, it <laughs> definitely didn't work out no, you when you when it's over your head. That one moat, that second it's over your head. That's no, you that. it's gotta be the it's gotta be this post. Yeah. <laughs> well the, um, the over the head, that's uh never mind. And, I, and, oh, I, and I didn't do it with my wrong. I apologize. I, I didn't do it with my legs at all. I did it entirely with well, my lower plane back. Jerk, I think. I'm proud of you. I always snatch one of the two. Okay. If I if I use the wrong term, then I do apologize. This uh, clean and jerk. Clearly, I, I I'm not part of that particular group. I was going to uh, talk about what uh, Scott said. Um, hey everyone, this is Ruby Roundtable. Uh, we're doing the thing, right? Um, but like, it's an open discussion, so we're kind of going to see where it goes. Um, and I think we found out something interesting. I actually do. I had like a backup topic that I also want to throw out there eventually, but it's completely different from what we're discussing right now. Um, Oh, and there's like Toit Scott, uh, Corey, a doobie, um, my man, uh, Admiral Gibbs, uh, Bam, um, amazing individual, Ico. Um, thank you all. All right. So, and we have one, one person who will be here uh, shortly. So, you talked about like um, if you like separating pools from your money, right? Now, um, yeah. I have. I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted on the moral question. You're morally or not, it is that. morally good or morally bad or morally neutral to. Obviously, fraud is wrong, right? But if, no, but no. if someone's willing to buy dumb shit um, that isn't that effective, and you kind of just be like, hey, well, it might fucking help, as long as you're not actually lying. Like with the collagen thing, right? Like if you just be like, hey, look, some studies show that there is like some improved elasticity. There's no research to suggest this is negative. Why don't you fucking try it out and see? Because it might be really good for you, and you should buy it, and you should test it out. And it's only fucking, you know, one buy one, get one half off right now. And if people are just like, oh, my God, I got to buy it because of my joints, right? Like, you know, I mean, fucking. I buy essential so oils is, and is that wrong? Uh, <laughs> um, and. I have, I really want to exam. I, I don't know if you're even trolling me, Latch. Right? I, I can I show you. To, I'm not trolling you. I know he's you not, have. Okay. He's not, he's got essential oils and crystals. Okay. I got to That's going to be like and a separate conversation. Cards. You and I have. <laughs> okay. And that's going to be a separate conversation. But I do it just to make my room smell nice. Um, <laughs> they do but, smell great. Oh, my God. I also have a diffuser. Uh, like, it just but, smells good. Like, that's all. Okay. So, um, I, I'll, I'll take your. Um, 
I'll take your question. I'm going to take it to a different uh, area, right? Um, now, okay. I'm glad my, we have my friend uh, Echo Rich here, right? Uh, because this is going to make me sound like a edgy atheist, but <laughs> but um, it would seem to me that uh, if uh, the church is going to uh, sell you on this product um, uh, being uh, the miracles and uh, well, um, uh, prayer and whatnot, right? I mean, there's, then, hold on, pause. There's there's better research to suggest going to church is better for you than there is for fucking. No, 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 no. But that's not what they're selling you on, right? If that was that'd be one thing. I would, I would, I'd be totally behind it. If what they were selling was like, hey, we have this community, right? And we like we, right. do, we do activities, we hang out with together. They're selling and you the support kingdom that of community. Heaven. Yeah, yeah, or and support that community. You the kingdom of heaven. They're not exactly they're not right. Spell, yeah, selling you or, fucking, or hell connectiveness and fucking charity and yeah fucking brotherly love i mean that's part of it but mostly yeah. yeah they're selling you you know the kingdom of heaven exactly so um, if there, uh so that's a different thing um like when i was in college when i was in college i uh, i had a conversation with a professor that i really respected we had a, a conversation it was about like um uh like religious like fraud basically right so not like talking about like the major ones like Catholicism or anything like that, but like, um, uh, it was uh about like people just like taking advantage of the religious. And I remember at the time, it was like twenty or something. Um, I I was like deeply offended, uh, that people would do that. You know, like concerning someone's religion, like how could you take advantage? It's, it's so sacred. So, like e even then, I was like shaking my like beliefs. I don't think I was the uh, atheist at the time, but like I still, I I, I thought like. This was just such a violation, but I have moved so far on that, right? Like, if, like, I'm a prosperity gospel, and I can convince you that giving me money will give you blessings, I'm like, why shouldn't I, right? Like, like, what were you doing with that money anyway? Like, why, why shouldn't that person take well, you, that money? You're missing the key thing in the prosperity. Gospel. Oftentimes, they're spending that money on like very important is, things, like healthcare. Well, so, so you brought up prosperity gospel, which is really interesting. Uh, so, like, I hate. I, I, please fix your mic, brother. Uh, what's wrong with it? It, it, keep, it just keep. It just keeps going. Like it keeps tuning way down, um, quiet, and then going back up. I mean, uh, it down. looks good on my end. I mean, is that anybody having that problem? Is that yeah? I think it, are you guys having that problem? Scott? Is yeah, there, I think it's, it's you, only Papa. happening with Admiral Gibbs, though. Yeah, well, no that's weird because it, uh, it looks like it's working on mine. Maybe but your ears are missing. Might be Discord. Admiral, yes. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is what's interesting about prosperity gospel, right? So, I've had a problem with prosperity gospel before from a Christian standpoint. But what's interesting after I kind of dived into it is it's not that they're just selling the hey, give me the money and I'm going to be rich, right? It's that they're also selling the network. A lot of people that are really rich go to the prosperity gospel, and their argument is that if you're poor, you're being you know disowned by God, basically, like the God. God doesn't want you to be poor. You wouldn't be poor if you were actually a Christian. And so that when you go, you get the network and you inherit the network. And by going to these prosperity gospel church, like Joel Holstein, you'll inherently have more opportunity to become richer because God's going to provide that opportunity by being there. So they're not even selling you fraud. They're selling you the network as well as the, uh, you know, I bullshit. Think, I, I wouldn't consider Joel Osteen to be in the prosperity gospel. gospel. He is absolutely yeah, prosperity I, gospel. I'm just a bitch, I, but uh, that I, person. I, I was just saying, well, the Mormon church works quick, too like, in Utah. So, so, so the thing about prosperity gospel is like, it, there's a wide range of how how that is done, right? So, like on the on the on like let's say the the less egregious side, right? There is like you know the the Christian worldview of the of the first industrialists, right? That like it is it is good like if if you are holy and you are good and you are righteous and you are honest and you are hardworking and you believe in god then god will reward you and that like your 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 bad wealth and your bad situations isn't necessarily like it, it, it is 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 in some way a kind of like a a it, it's i mean it's really it's predeterminism right it's like it's like calvinism 2.0 but specifically with money right like this idea of like oh you're destined to do good because you know one thing or another but but at the same time i, I want to say that like on one end of the spectrum it really is just telling you okay if you're poor like look at your fucking life what are you doing are you making 
high time preference decisions? Are you living in sin? Are you being kind of dishonest? Are you doing things that are like bringing about like almost like a negative karma that's affecting your finances? And then all the way on the other end of that is kind of what Admiral Gibbs is saying. Like, if you're not giving me 20% tithing, God hates you and you're going to be poor forever. And I do think that there is like a kind of a, there is kind of a moral lesson, at least from, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all mysticism, so it's all bullshit. But I mean, but there is kind of like a, a kind of a gradient to how how egregious or how maybe potentially positive it is. So I on your moral so, system. So I specifically, I think that when I think of prosperity gospel, I think of a specific thing that I always thought was like really strange. Like, and they always came on at like that random channel at like one o'clock in the morning, and there was ABC see like. Uh, infomercial that would say that like pay $5.99 and your sins are cleared. Like, or, you know, the sin, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, and, like, and it was like very blatant. I've like, never and, seen this one. No, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, like, I generally think Joel Olstein is like the epitome of the prospect. See, I don't consider no, so the, the biggest dude is Kenneth Copeland, right? He's the dude who's like, you know, playing tube full of demons. I gotta have my own private jet. It's very much the idea of like God rewards his children, like the, like the, the faithful through cold hard cash baby right like you you pray to him hard enough he'll give it he'll he'll get you with some money i think um, you guys are confusing but, two different things hold yeah, on this is being i think you guys are i think you oh, i think okay, you guys are confusing let let bam finish because bam like, got interrupted so let's bam this finish that, we can, yeah. yeah so like there so yeah like uh i so that that's what i consider prosperity gospel it's saying that like giving this money is directly related to like how saved you are like the the more you give the more saved you are that and then these things do exist i think that combining that with like oh okay there are some pa there are some pastors from mega churches who are wealthy and they may have a book or something like that but they don't directly tie that to no. like it, they don't directly tie that to your wealth like me personally as a faith believing christian a god lover in here in a room full of sinners um me too saved by grace <laughs> but um i like i i only tithe like well i have a church that i tithe to now but i only i i don't tithe if i don't see the church giving back to the community it's specifically related to that some people feel like they've lost their some people feel like they lose their faith if they don't tithe and tithing is 10 percent um general the general rule of thumb like 10 percent on of i guess we can think your income from, right? Well, it's yeah. It's, I was like, it's either it, like it, there's two things. It's either ten percent off the front end or ten percent off the back end. It just depends on how exact you want to get off of that. Like basically, I, I do ten percent after I pay all my bills and stuff like that. But um, to my my home church, but it's because of the the work they do in the community. If I ever felt, if I ever hit a point where I felt like my church wasn't doing, like I was participating in the church where I enjoyed the message, but it wasn't like giving back to the community for whatever reason. At that point, I would no longer tithe. But some people do feel like if they didn't do that. They would like somehow be ruining their blessings, and I don't, I don't buy into that personally. So Scott, you go and then uh, Gibbs. Yeah, yeah. I was just I was just gonna say that like piggybacking off Pam a little bit. Mm. I think some of you guys might be confusing like pastors that are like just demanding money and are shysty with it than like prosperity gospel. No. Because prosperity gospel is saying like you, you you're gonna be poor. You're 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 gonna be like bad things are gonna come to you. And vice versa, good things will come to you if you give more money to the church. Like, like it, it, you know, God will reward you for rewarding me with all of this fucking money and rewarding the church, right? Um, and and like I said, there's different levels of egregiousness to that. But like, if you're just talking about like someone being like, you got to give, you got to give for the Holy Spirit, that's not really prosperity gospel because there isn't a carrot there, which is what right like there's the stick which is like you know hey hey give us money you need to and there's the the shame but you need the carrot which bam was talking about which is like clearing of the sins or god will reward you that's the carrot that like convinces you to give more money that makes it prosperity gospel as opposed to just going to church and then being like black pill the world is you know falling apart we need money to help people that's not prosperity gospel that's just them shaming you into giving them money to presumably help other people or to you know do things in 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 as god wants you to do them uh so first i want to say you know as a christian that joel olstein is hands down 
one of the biggest false prophets, apostates, evil men in the history of Christianity. Uh, no, they're second, all false prophets. Well, we don't all have to go into that, but he, he's, he's a real bad person. Uh, overall, we can look at his response in Houston during the crisis. Like, I was over here, one bedroom apartment. We got two like, rescue boats working out of my apartment. He can't even open up the doors. But another thing, if you really examine Osteen's uh, teachings, which I have, is Osteen uh, is one of the like prominent, most prominent prosperity gospel teachers. His, uh, his writings uh, promote prosperity doctrine, prosperity theology, uh, the belief that reward is a material gain uh, is the will of God for all pious Christians. He also promotes that if you are poor, that you are going, it's because you are not in favor of God. Like these are like, that's the carrot and the stick right there. So like he's promoting that you come to his church. Like, yeah, he's like that. He is like the epitome Sorry, of prosperity. Let me apologize if, if I, if there was like, if there was a miscommunication, I wasn't trying to say that well, Joel Osteen wasn't because I was, was using it. No. I was just trying to get like, be more clear about what it was. I was more referring to Bam because he said he didn't think that Olstein was, but Olstein yeah. is definitely uh like like by he he's a bad down, person, but I don't I don't know if he necessarily well, preaches prosperity. Well, I'm saying that like a very unique thing. Yeah, I'm saying that like whenever I look at prosperity gospel like theology, uh, like he's one of like the like the the de defining people that like when you look at his the teachings, especially his books, uh, they like when he puts them out, he advocates that like like in the book that you are poor because God hates you because you've not come to Him. Like in, like that is a thing that he promotes. In like not in, is I'm that falsifiable though? Like, yeah, yeah like, I mean, I'm not saying it's fraud. Right? I'm not. I mean, I'm not if God fraud. did hate you, he would probably. Make I'm just saying, though, but he, right? he like definitely. Right. Well, no, he might. No, I suppose, he might make, I suppose the he might make you rich, of, rich and lonely. The because what, what rich Jesus atheists think? would be the falsifying, all right? Well, right. So, God what does God has, say about rich? God like exists. being rich, you know? Oh my God! If, if God exists, He has the ability to make you rich. So if you believe in God, you might not believe in prosperity gospel, but at the end of the day, he certainly doesn't really love you because he could make you rich. Well, you, you, know, you can make the argument in the reverse. You know, what does Jesus say? It's harder for a rich man to get to heaven than it is for a needle to go through the eye of a camel. So like, I mean, he might be like, well, I do hate you. So I'm going to give you this money. A needle can get through the eye of a camel pretty easily. It's a camel. A camel can go through the eye of the needle, but like yeah, there archaeologists. You go. And yeah, it's the gates of the city. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like archaeologists discovered that that's like just a fucking bar that is like designed to make it kind of difficult for camels to get in so they don't drink all the fucking water in an oasis. So people Well, also, it out. sort of forced you to unpack your camel of everything that was on it in order to get through the gate, yeah. which is the symbolism so of us that, like, shedding right, all of our wealth yeah. so that we can enter the kingdom of heaven, not, all not all burdened by materialism. Yeah, there's no, what do they call it? There's no U-Haul behind That's an interpretation. Oh, sure. <laughs> That's your exegesis. That's man. why you, that, that's what that's, that gate was famous for, was that you had to take all of those things off of your camel in order to get the camel in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. So, again, but I said, I, sure. I'm, not, I'm not making so, a point against you or anything. Why do you have any money? Screen. Well, that's the idea, right? Money, money is the root of all evil, right? Love of money is the root of all evil. So you have to I mean, stop that loving a, money. That's one of the most immoral statements a human being could ever make. It's a decision. Well, sure. <laughs> but it's, it's right. Money I mean, Jesus says it, right? The, mm. uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm not telling you that you have to be Christian. I'm just saying that within the context of the Gospels, if you believe in the Gospels, then you're not getting, it's anti-materialist uh, doctrine. Yeah, but but Jesus. What he's saying say is Jesus is the root of all evil, though, right? I, he doesn't I, say I, like I that. think I think that is I think he, he that it does. Modern cope yeah. to reinterpret it that it's so, anti-materialist because it's, 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 it's considered that, idolatry. It's like to know the guy before me, like it, like if you, like people some is saying if you worship money. Like what, yeah, what? that's why people like Job are used as examples. Oh, idolatry! Good, 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 going through idolatry. Okay, so you talk shit about Jesus, and there you go. But it doesn't yeah. mean, but it, but that doesn't mean that like some people will take that yeah, and Jesus, like flip it to Jesus like the, like Buddhist can't fucking get antibiotic resistant tuberculosis under control in fucking Peru, but he can come fuck up my mic. All right, uh, oh, quite literally, you know. Hey, uh, yeah, cool. listen, they say God is a child of God. It's, 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 it works in mysterious ways, God. man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 but it's, like some people take that to mean go like full Buddhist and say that like uh, the Bible teaches like to never have anything. But there was there's there, there are richer followers yeah. in the Bible. Like there, have y'all seen the thing that they say? Well, there are. One of them idol. asks him specifically how how he can be a follower, and he says, "Yes, give up all of your wealth and come follow me." And the rich man leaves uh, sad. Yeah, well, yeah. That there's, there's 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 isn't that why everyone's getting good good on decision. that uh, on the redhead girl's case? Because she's like, I came to God, but hasn't given up all of her money. Kept all her money is doing like just. Oh, you're talking about thing. Nala. Mm -hmm. about oh, the poor yeah, everyone's calling her. They're like, oh, well, if you convert it and you're a true believer, we'll give up this nine million. Well, what's funny she is sold they... her cars and she sold her back. She didn't give them away. 
but you know what's really funny is they got uh they also have Riley May and they came at Riley May about it and she was like um uh something something prosperity gospel and I was like damn it. <laughs> I wanted to uh, so I I do want to get back to this point on the uh, prosperity gospel to be clear. I, I brought up a religion um, because it's like the first thing that comes to my mind when answering, dealing with Scott's question specifically. It's not, I didn't bring it up like to just shit on uh, religion. I didn't mean to make that. Make that I mean, I'll topic. take that opportunity if we need to. You know, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> but, it's, not, um, it's, like, I, it's like of all the enemies of Western civilization, like Christianity is way down on the list, right? Like I got to yeah. get rid of leftists and Marxists and Amen. commies before I start dealing with like uh. the, you know the mystics because like gotcha. christians hey, are out here doing what baby like, let me ask you a question hurting you know nobody Fucking. Mm. so i wanted to ask Duby uh if you're there um uh are you there friend it just must just be stripped like instantly do you wait there? for Duby, let me ask Fabian a question while you wait for Duby. okay all right hey uh Fabian, do you think that the uh the nazis are leftist socialists uh, it depends on how you 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 want to. It depends on what you mean by that, right? So I would say I, there's, no, the there's no there's no loaded question. Let's see what you think. So like no 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 no. I'm I'm trying to be I'm trying to be accurate here, right? So I would say that fascism is like the the concept that third positionism or third position comes after Nazism is a bit of a cope, right? Like Nazism and fascism are both forms of third position, which is to say that they are. They are anarcho syndicalist, right? Every single leader of the fascist in, fascists in Italy, as well as almost everyone um, in Nazi Germany, claimed that they were socialists, claimed that they were left wing. You know, Germany created the largest union to as ever to ever exist in the entire history of the world. Um, read the Vampire Economy by Gunter Ryman, a Marxist uh, economist that absolutely agrees that Nazism is uh, basically a mirror image of communism and um, and the USSR and the way that it handles the economy. So economically, it's without a doubt uh, communist uh, and socialist um, from a vein of anarcho syndicalism. Um, socially speaking, though. It's kind of a mix up. It's a toss up, right? So Hitler obviously was like a vegan. He was a lefty in some ways. But then Ein Volk is, was a right wing ideology. Now, obviously, critical race theory is based in Volkism, it's based in Nazism. Um, because, and, and, and you can see it even in the language they use, because, um, you know, W. D. Du Bois went to Germany to to study and learn about Volkism, and then he came back and wrote the you know the soul of black folks. Right, he's he's invoking blood and soil and the black uh, identity and anti colonialism is as well. You know, the idea that the black is a nation captured under an oppressive nation. But again, there is something different about the majority desiring to regain control from the from the minority versus the minority feeling oppressed and wanting to rise up and so the real answer is 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 that when communism becomes a threat um because it is an existential threat to a nation and to its people when socialism goes too far um or, or when it exists at all but but when it goes too far it obviously gets more dangerous um if it is if it's likely to take over the institutions you will see fascism and Nazism as a response, which adopts the entire economic model of socialism and adopts most of the social policies while maintaining some race-based politics and some right-wing cultural values. And so it becomes a mishmash of a sprinkled in right-wing cultural values with all of the worst things of communism and, 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 and socialism to protect the nation from communism. Yeah. Last, I'll just say this last thing. Lastly, um, you can tell that even though fascism is horrible, um, it is obviously better than communism because of those sprinkled in right wing values are not dysgenic to society. Mm -hmm. And that's why Germany, uh, you know, Japan, um, you know, Portugal, um, Spain, every place that has ever adopted fascism was able to heal and recover from fascism after one or two generations. And most places that have adopted communism uh, have 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 been decimated for far far longer because yeah. it's slightly worse. Also, a massive so injections from the West, uh, monetary injections from the West. Anyway, I love yeah. They, they were so communist, the Nazis, that they killed all the communists. Um, they were so communist that they created the largest union by dissolving all the other unions and then creating an organization which was a sham and that took orders from the capitalists. Uh, so sorry, but, how is that yes, different than how is that different than China or Russia? Or was that China. hashtag not real? Also, 
Also, Karl Marx. Uh, also, uh, Karl, uh, Karl Marx is inherently racist, so being racist is not a right wing trope. That's definitely a left wing thing as well. Well, I mean, Karl uh, Marx was a self hating Jew, but I don't know that he was. Oh yeah, he, he, was, I, I he was racist, but he was, but he wasn't like he wasn't any he, more racist than than like your typical intellectual people person of that man. Yeah. Um. Uh. Lula, could you go ahead. You want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say. So, um, <clears throat> you know, even if you even if you want you want to argue that the Nazi Party was like a right wing, um later right after the night of the long knives I, th I think it's like pretty indisputable um that it was far left before this right so gottfried fetter yeah was actually the, like who was one of the i think the economist for the nazi party in the early 30s and he was actually the guy who brought hitler into the party right hitler was not part of the nazi party and then gottfried fetter picked him and brought him into the party and kind of groomed him for leadership and Gr gottfried fetter was a avowed anti-capitalist and anti-capitalist um, beliefs are actually pretty common uh, before the Nazi yeah. party aligned themselves with kind of the established elite, the Junkers um, and some other families. And a big part of that was that, you know, kind of in this kind of critical race theory uh, lens, they just saw Jews as like they are the business owners, right? Then they're bleeding us dry. They're bleeding uh, Germany dry. I mean, if you replace Jew with white person... Mm -hmm. Like I've I've done this right. You you can like replace Jew with white person, and it becomes like pretty indistinguishable from modern day critical race theory, right? Like the you know white supremacy, the white people they just own give all it the two money. Years. They they own all they own just all the factories. They, they own all this. Were they right? business owners like, or, like, or were they just money lenders? Just give it two more years, and so, all the well, left well, will be so, talking so, about the Jews. Well, anyways. there was like a general like distaste, for, like under at least the Nazi party lens prior to the Night of the Long Knives. It, they Jews were associated. Really, all capitalists were. I mean, they were anti capitalists to the core. But Jews were seen as like an inherent capitalist class, right? That were focused more on owning instead of working, um, which was kind of the, the basis for why it's called the National German Workers uh, Party. Um, now, there was a point in which Hitler, because he was a demagogue, kind of betrayed a lot of the more uh, far left elements of his own party, had them killed and then associated with different political parties. Um, but there's still some elements uh, that were left wing that lasted till the very end. So I think the, the honest take is probably there's some far right like t takes the Nazis had some far left. But at the beginning, like bring Hitler into the party, they for sure were as far left as it gets. The big issue is, is because they're all like victims of populism. That's the, the that's the, the the combining factor between the two. Whenever you like have some other when you have some like other evil entity that you have to fight and then you lean into this like this one people or this small group of people like are here to save you and we have to revolt like they're they're going to end up at that same place no matter where you get like that's why i'm a strong uh -huh. institutionalist versus like I got, a revolutionary i got rich so it's interesting that we're talking about this today the day of the eclipse when the rapture was supposed to happen because i think that uh, the conservatives in germany must have been raptured uh sometime in the 20s right because uh if you look at all the different parties that ran in the 1930 election and then in the 1932 election what you'll find is that um you had on the left you had the social democrats and the communists and then you had the center party which is just an establishment party that Christian wanted to democrats. be sort of the middle of everything right and then you had uh, and then you had the nazis who were themselves apparently a uh, left wing pretty much a hundred percent of germany was left wing then right so what where did those german conservatives go did they just vanish and come back 40 years later like after uh, after everything settled down well like who were the conservatives voting for well hold on well hold on of course yeah, right. hold on no, 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 no. hold on hold on real look quick, at america quick, during the great depression look at the shift of politics there as well right so yeah very, i agree i'm just saying where did hold they on, go hold on hold on real quick i can tell you where the americans hold on went. hold on oh, am they i lost. muted lost I I'm just, I'm just, just or answering just Lactoid's question. We're, we're just, we were just ignoring you, Scott. So no. I, I know you haven't had a lot of time to talk so far today, Scott, but <laughs> yeah, I'm just no, no, answering really the question simple. that Lactoid got it as usual 80% talking it's, time. It's, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it's really simple. It's really simple, right? So Real simple. I challenge you, I've challenged, I challenge you, right, to find a, a, a Republican that is in a swing state district. A uh, swing state or a swing district in Congress or um or in the Senate today, that you could you could say is more right wing than the Democrat Party in the 1990s. So when you say like, well, where did the right wing people go? Yeah, if you look at the Republican Party today, it is absolutely what the left wing party was in 1992. 
right? 1994 crime bill. Bill Clinton has multiple missions to close down the southern border so that we can control it. Uh, Bill Clinton initiated welfare reform so that we could save money and have a more efficient welfare yeah. system and get rid of people leeching off of welfare. Bill Clinton uh, repealed the Glass-Steagall Act. Like, Bill Clinton is a better Republican during his presidency than any yeah. Republican alive today. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll have to speak right. it, but who did the part? Who did they vote for? Who did the right, conservatives so you're not, vote you're not, for? Right. So you, when w that's the thing is that like when you're when you're when you say like, well, who did the conservatives vote for? It, we're living right now in America where conservatives are voting for a left wing party that just happens to be left less left wing I don't think than the other party. Asking. There is no right wing party in America today. So what did they do? They voted for the left wing party that aligned with their views more, just like Americans are doing today by voting Republican. Yeah, but but okay, so right, and who was that party? They who was the they, they probably voted for the left, Christian? Who, yeah, who was voted, the least left wing party that they could vote for? They voted was for it, the Christian it, Democrats and the Nazis. Was it the communists? Mm -hmm. Okay, it was the socialists. So the socialists were the conservatives. You're saying the conservatives were voting for the socialist party. Uh, in because the most conservative. Right now are socialists. The most right wing. Literally yeah. 70, 75 so is Black Boy, though. Black Boy is a socialist. Uh, 75% of the U.S. federal budget, budget as we speak that. right now, includes two things. It includes mm. welfare and it includes debt, mm. interest on the debt. That's 75% of the entire U.S. federal budget. And yet there isn't a mm -hmm. single Republican other than like Thomas Massey. And That's Paul, if you assume like, let's that mon monetary things. conservatism is, it, you, that's just, uh, yeah, of course, I know, like, this is amazing. I, I love that when you just I just let you talk about these things because then you just say ridiculous things. So, um, it, it well, this was the coming. answer I wanted because because basically yeah. what he's saying thing is to just say it's absurd. I was wait, 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 can, can, can I clarify something real quick? Interrupted. Sorry, okay, right. I, I, Ico, can you? I mean, maybe I'm wrong in this. I can't think of a single country where like a moderate conservatism was in power or like made any kind of political gains during the Great Depression. I mean, we're talking about an era not only like the Great Depression. We're talking mm -hmm. like massive war indemnities and Germany's economy is just in the absolute shit. No, but I can, no, it make, but, it, this is why I'm not looking at, a, of course, everyone's going to be a fucking leftist. This is Germany why I'm not looking at control of the legislature. I'm looking at the popular vote, right? There are still plenty of Americans who voted for the Republican Party uh, during the Great Depression. It's just that it wasn't enough for them to like take over Congress or get the White House. Yeah. But I can tell you who the conservatives voted for. What the the I should say the pro capitalists well, hold on, hold on, I voted yeah. for in the I, I, Great Depression is they even they Republican. weren't even they weren't as bad off as Germans though. Like during following World War One. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, but my but my question is, it, where did they? Where who did? Who was the least left wing party? Now your answer is that it was the socialists. No, my so socialists I, were I the think, most I, conservative I the least, option. The, 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 the least the least left wing Christian would be nationalists. The, the Christian Democrats. Yep. Who were yeah, like kind of the mo no? The Christian Democrats were like a moderate German party. Then you the have CDU? the Nazis. Yeah, the CDU. Yeah, the Nazis, that's, what, yeah. that's what I told no, you. No, no, the, the CDU, CDU were not the Nazis. Not in 1930 and 1932. Yeah. After after the war, the CDU like becomes a thing, and it becomes a it's a, becomes a center right party. But I there would say the there closest was, thing there was to that. CDU before wasn't there? Am I well, no, yeah, but they got. Oh, if you're talking they got about, stopped, but they existed. You got to go pretty far down the list to find them. I can't even find them on the list in 1932. Right. Also, I, I, think that, yeah. I think that you, I'm sorry. If just, they got um, less, more than half a percent of the popular vote. Oh, no. I mean, then, did you also um, like sorry. the conservative people? I, I, I wanna, I'm sorry, I want to get this in because, um, uh, like, uh, Scott rightly said, you can't just say my idea is ridiculous, but I was literally going to say another thing and then other people started talking. Yeah, um, yeah. And then I'll, I'll, I'll go to Bam and, and everyone else. Um, like to what I'm saying, so. Yeah. Catholic like, Center Party. Uh, I think it's interesting that. Yeah, like, Center Party is the one I mentioned. Go ahead. I think it's interesting that when you talk about like why the Republican Party or any, maybe not any party, but like the Republican Party is not conservative, you bring up monetary policy, right? And you uh, say that to say, well, they're not being monetary, monetarily conservative, at least in your viewpoint. Um, mm -hmm. And so that shows that they're not conservative. I think all that goes to show you is that like that was a lie to begin with for conservatism. That I, I, I I think there are many brands of conservatism, um, and there are brands that don't include a a, a, a fiscally conservative uh, uh, viewpoint, right? Now, at least not a real one, right? That they'll the virtue signal to that, but not like a real one. But that doesn't. Okay, but to say on. then that that means they're a socialist, right? <laughs> on the other hand, okay, well, hold on. So it's just like. Too. 
it, the reason why that frustrates me is when you uh, say these things, Scott, is because I know, I know that like more What's than the definition of socialism. Oh, oh, no, I, 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 that, hold on, let me finish my, my literally the, the words I was about to say, right? And we can like discuss this, right? I know that you have a very um, uh, 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 defined idea of what socialism is. Right. And in, in any of these categories. Right. I know you have a defined yeah, I'm, I'm, idea I'm, about these I'm, things. I'm, I'm distinct and descriptive yeah. and accurate as opposed. To yeah. I, I, so I uh, what I'm saying is that like uh, but to that, but then I, I see you lump everything within so, uh, socialism. Like and it's like the thing. Hey, what's your definition it, of socialism? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm asking you. I want to put this on you. Right. Because my definition can be all kinds of things. But like, what, what, what is your definition here? Because if your definition of socialism truly, and you weren't just trolling, truly uh, mm -hmm. includes the Republican Party, then I, I feel yeah. like I don't, I don't, well, like I, I, it, it doesn't right, sound so, like so, it's so distinct. Yeah. Like, no. So, so here's, here's the issue, right? Is we as humans, we live in the present and we view history based upon our own lifespan. Right. So we have a difficult time concepting, conceptualizing things as they were before we were born, obviously. And we tend to look at things within generational shifts and within like 100 years. Right. So what you have to understand is that the denazification um, process after World War II absolutely had a tremendous effect on political conservatism and the Republican Party over here in the sense that when we were still allies with Russia in the beginning, we were doing everything we could to rewrite the concept of moral rights and moral wrongs. And the entire intelligentsia of Europe, including America, was, was running with their tail between their legs as the horrors of communism come out to rewrite what is morally righteous within academia, without academia. We are, have been as a nation, as a political party, as a philosophy have been completely infected to the point where yes, our right wing party is espousing socialist ideas, socialist tendencies and socialist policies. So if your definition of socialism is the original one, well, that really doesn't make sense anymore right the the pre kind of like right at the french revolution that yeah. definition of socialism would simply be that like you're doing things for the benefit of everyone right um and that could apply to basically any political ideology yeah. right if you're using a an a, a a a high communist vulgar marxist kind of interpretation of socialism right then socialism is the the transitory state in between Marks in between the utopic communism and the the death of capitalism because its inherent contradictions need to be solved by slow um, or fast revolutions and state-based policy where state takes over aspects of the economy for the benefit of the people and for the benefit of the worker. And I don't know how you can look at a program like Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid or any of these other programs that are wealth redistribution programs that are designed to fix the problems of capitalism in giant air quotes, right? To redistribute and solve the inherent contradictions of capitalism for the benefit of all of the workers and then say, well, that's not socialism because they're right wingers and they don't, and I don't think they like black people as much as the left does. It's but, stupid. It's, well, hold on. I don't, actually, socialist. I want to, can I, can I add to that? Before you go, problem. I also I want to take issue with one thing, which which I think you kind of touched on, is that this concept that race based ideology is a is a right wing talking point. It can be, it can be. But I I would also like to point out that Karl Marx is an avid racist. He's and he's the epitome of like left wing theology, like uh, philosophy when it comes to like uh, you know government. He's avidly talks about how the uh, American uh, N word should be like uh, wiped off the face of the earth and the slavery should be reinstated. Uh, all sorts of stuff because they're subhuman talks about the jewish n-word and says this all sorts of stuff so and this is a left-wing ideological uh, person so uh, the idea that the right wing uh the, the racism is a right-wing ideology is is bullshit it can be either side and so that's part of the reason why when people go oh the nazis aren't so aren't, aren't socialists because they were racist i just dude, laugh dude dude first of all like you're arguing with no one because oh, like, just saying it, it, Oh, well, sorry. We all well, agree there might right. might be might be Twitter individuals who think that sure. um, racism is the purely Groypers, a right wing right? problem, right? No, no, only the Groypers would be like based Marx. Yeah, yeah. Race racism. Is a, I 
I don't. I'm, you're all clear, I'm not familiar with those uh, statements uh, from Marx, but like I can believe that because I know he has some racist things. But like I can believe uh, uh, that he said those things. But like that, people on the left generally like understand that leftists can be racist. I've experienced racism on the left. Okay, right. So, so, so no one's uh, arguing against that. So all right. I. Um, as have all. I, white I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you. I'm sure you have. Um, but so, uh, I <clears throat> one. I don't think that Republicans are actually in favor of uh, um, uh, Social Security or uh, Medicare or anything like that. Um, I, I, I know. They'll, uh, they'll say, hey, we're not going to uh, touch those things because there are practical um, uh, electoral uh, concerns that they're concerned about, right? I think they're all frauds. I think they're all absolute frauds. Um, I think that the that's, modern that's conservative fine. party is... is hold, on, hold, on, mean, hold on, hold on, hold on. Then they obviously don't believe hold on, in the universe. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Or hold they would do something about it. Hold on, hold on. I think they're all frauds, um, uh, uh, which is something to be said. But I think even... Among the ones who do believe it, um, uh, I would say that they at least are conservative, right? Like there are true believers out there, um, uh, maybe not w within our Congress, but they 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 certainly exist. Um, and I didn't say they weren't you conservative. Have a definition, I just said they were socialists. You can be a conservative. If you have a definition, like any tanky. Sure. If you have a definition uh, of socialism that includes um the 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 most right well mm, i shouldn't say that um one of mm, uh, I, I let me not go down that path because i'm gonna have to fight on a different thing um if it includes the republican party i don't think it's a useful definition that when people are just What's your definition well oh, that's why i'm trying to focus on 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 your thoughts here right um because yeah, i gave that one that marx put forward sure I don't want to argue back and forth on like uh, what what it should be. I'm just like I want to what I want to say that the thing that you're doing is uh, less useful. Like if everything because you called um, uh, Republicans uh, socialists, you said what fascism is, is basically socialist, right? Right, like. Or, or communism, like the other side of communism, right? It seems like you're blending all these things together. I'm not saying I have the right definition, whatever my definition is. I'm just saying that what your definition doesn't seem to be useful in any a particular conversation because they're going to be you're going to be people who are going to nod their heads uh, about like you talking about like the Nazis were socialists, right? They're going to be people who like nod their heads along, right? Like yeah, you're definitely right. There were definitely left wingers, right? Um, and, and, and they'll agree with you, and they'll keep agreeing with you and, until you say, well, Republicans were also socialists. Then, they re then you bring it into a modern context, and like, well, that's not the case, right? Like, like what I believe is different from what those left-wingers uh, believe. And so, like, if we're all the same thing, then where is... Um, oh, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, this isn't a critique. This isn't a critique. What you're saying is, I'm not participating in the delusion of the masses okay. that that the right wing is a meaningful and that conservative and that the Republicans are a meaningful bastion against leftist philosophy because I point to the exact ways in which they are leftist, the exact ways in which they are socialist, and the exact ways in which they are participating in the slow destruction of free market, free enterprise, and freedom and liberty. And then you go, well, that's not useful to say that they're bad too, but you don't have an argument against the truthfulness of what I'm saying, and you won't put forward a definition of socialism other than what I said, which is M Marx's definition. Like, that's how Marx describes socialism. Sorry, as try, a process. Try. To, like, the back reason, what he's well, saying. The reason, why, the reason why I won't put forth a definition is because we're going to end up fighting about, like, what my definition happens to be, right? I'm um, curious and we're gonna say, <laughs> We can talk about that later. But, like, I will be uh, uh, fighting about what my definition happens to be um, and then comparing which one is uh, more useful. Why I'm saying a useful definition would be more specific um, so, like, I, I, I mm, it seems like to me that what your definition is doing is saying that uh, uh, these individuals, like, well, you just said it, right? They're not a, a useful uh, bulwark against leftism. Um, yeah, you're saying that. Um, yeah, Berkeley uh, conservatives are just. Yeah, what, what's the expression? The speed like, limit. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's like, so, like, I'll even give you an example, right? Like, um, if I took, like, uh, like a Bill Clinton standpoint, like, border security from. 
God, many years ago, right? And we compared it to leftist border security now, totally different, right? But if we look at Bill Clinton's border security from like the you know not nineties, he's a Republican, right? huh? Yeah, he's a Republican, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah like, hold on. By the modern clear, definition, like yeah. But, but, but please don't tell me that, like, because like I, there's no point in saying that to me. You're preaching to the choir. That's not true. I will readily say that Democrats are Republicans, right? I will say that they're conservatives. Bill Clinton um, so, is extremely progressive. Uh, I'll, I'll look at it. From that the other. doesn't sound like you have a very useful <coughs> definition of conservative. Okay, and I'll you're look at it. No, the Democrats are conservative. No, no, no. Um, I say corporate Democrats like Bill Clinton, right? Uh, he ushered in um, uh, uh, a. Um, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. Uh, no, I don't think. No, I don't think I am. I don't think I am. Right? I'm saying that uh, that they are, and maybe. Well, actually, let me let me let me put this forward. Then we'll discuss. Am I doing the same thing that you're doing? Okay, right? Um, I say that corporate Democrats are center right. I, I'd say that uh, uh, AOC's uh, statement previously that um, her and Biden would not be in the same party if this was a parliamentary system. I think that's absolutely correct. I'd say that like yeah. the the uh, the position of corporate Democrats, right? Like if we were just to break like our usual focus on the the, the left right divide, um, they, they would place them as a, as a center right party, right? And no. that's okay. Um, but well, uh, yeah, I agree. And, and the same thing with Thomas Massey and Ron Paul, right? Would if we had a parliamentary system, they would just be in the Libertarian Party. Wait, they can we be in the Republican Party? Can we disagree right there? Right. We'll, we'll go to the next thing. That's just not okay. true. Like it, I know it, it sounds good to say, like, oh yeah, they're <laughs> basically conservative. They're they're trying to like keep things the way they are. But like Demo I was about to say, but the Democratic, even the the establishment Democratic Party is generally uh, almost extremely progressive. Even if we look back to like you want to say that um, Bill Clinton was a conservative, here's some of his policies that would we would still like today. He um, expanded childhood immunizations. He had a five hundred dollar tax credit. He signed the Brady Act. He has, he had an assault weapon ban. He had the Violence Against Women Act. He increased the minimum wage. He had higher air quality that? regulations. He did. He created the the Hope Scholarship. Like you know all this money we're spending. Um, he they had the campaign finance Sounds disclosure like act. Like these these aren't these aren't like oh you know center of the pack conservative policy. These are extremely radical, like well, extremely progressive policies. These these are like some of the highest. Like government spending the, the, in the interest no. of individuals that we've seen in the, United, that in the United States. I know, like, None of that was radical. Between him and Donald Trump. If you you literally the, uh, banning I, I, assault weapons. What, what is, what is radical radicalism policy? to you? What is it, radicalism? No, I'm, to you? I'm saying because they're already banned. Huh? You you don't think they are now? But prior to the concept of saying that you can't own this gun at all, that's not a radical policy. It is radical policy. I'm not saying it's not. Of course it is. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Donald Trump and Bill Clinton are basically the same. Sorry, I'll try I, to I, the bumps no, I know, you, I know, because Donald you were, you were. I don't. Trump maybe you were born like in two thousand three, into the black and community. it's like an acceptance of like, right, all, like all these things have already been in place all your life. So you assume they're like, oh, okay, no, this is the way had, things are supposed to be. We've had strong, prior to them. We we've had strong gun laws in this country before, right? We we, we like we weaken our gun laws and then uh, we we straight like we like we our gun laws have fluctuated, right? And our our, our ideas of like what gun regulation should be has changed drastically. Right, mm -hmm. so like what what it is today, it, like it, like the, I'm just basically saying the Overton window on those things have moved. So I I can acknowledge yeah. that there was mean, a shift Bill at Clinton, that point. Well, progressive, that, like, same like, sex marriage, for it. Progressive and like, Tipper Gore was going after yeah. Satanist music and hating. Yeah. Increase to the minimum yeah. wage. Is there is there a, is there yeah, any is there any a, leftist progressive like here clutcher. who doesn't believe consider uh, increasing the minimum wage? Do they consider a conservative policy? What I'm saying are you saying this is a conservative party? You're I'm saying, picking. Okay. Well, I, I think okay. Bam's right. I like to a degree on this. Like, right, like okay. it's, it is I mean, the overton window. What about repealing like, Glass Steagall? Is that is that super progressive lefty to like let let commercial banks and private banks invest in the same businesses? Like, yeah, you can pick and choose certain things from Clinton that are like left wing progressive things, and then you can pick and choose things that are today considered very conservative. My point is that when you compare somebody like Bill Clinton's policy to your typical Republican in a swing state today, they're almost identical because the Overton window has not. Moved over to the left. Th th they literally true. are. Okay, give me, give me, name, name a conservative whose who policy lines up even close to Bill Clinton's. Just give me one. Donald Trump. 
Mitt Romney. Donald Trump does not. Donald Trump does not. Uh, they have the same anything. immigration policy. John McCain. They have the same wealth welfare Again, policy. I'm saying we, they have the same education policy. No, they do they not the have the same welfare policy. They have the, they have the Bill Clinton have massive have expansion on welfare. He cut, whoa. Say, no, Bill Clinton Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton no, shit. Yeah, for sure. Bill, Bill Clinton reduced That's welfare by by having by working with Newt Gingrich. He worked with Newt Gingrich to make welfare cheaper yeah. and less expensive, and to make sure that welfare queens got no less people. No less people were on welfare. But the the welfare the access people had increased. No, he yeah, turned, the, the, the block, no, no, he turned into block grants for the different states. He what did well, blocks, no, that, what, what did what did Trump do? Trump went in and had all of these special programs to try and bring welfare and bring business into the black community. The only the Trump biggest thing he attached to welfare nearly identical in their fucking policies. But you know who's not nearly that, identical in their policies? Biden and Clinton. Those are radically different. They're policies. not. I, I'm sorry. We're just re, we're just living in two different worlds. He now the biggest yeah, thing. That, the biggest thing that increased. No, I'm I'm literally gonna tell you the biggest thing, that, biggest thing that increased that decreased the number of people. The total number, amount we spent on welfare was related to the uh, related to the fact that he attached um work incentives. Basically, the fact that you had to turn into that you were looking that's for work. That's a Republican. Work. That's a Republican but, thing. But yeah, yeah. The, the, the access to welfare. The, the the total access to welfare increased. The, uh, the, uh, the amount of benefits you were able to receive under welfare increased, but you had to look for work, which ended up pushing like 10 million people off yeah, of welfare yeah, because they were right, they found employed. Right. That's a Republican, that's a Republican you're policy. Right. Government grew under No, you're, you're just, you're and doing so did tweet. welfare grew, and he worked with the Republicans to Cause, have a... Because uh, I'm about to say, it's an effed up thing to say pro thing. progressives are anti-work. Like, I, I'm not going to own that position. I'm not going to own it like... Uh, I didn't say anything about anti-work. Right, no, he, no, because he's saying that... Him and Donald that, Trump are basically the same. And, Trump is but a just, but we can't name a, but we can't name a single policy that is name on. Okay, well, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really quick. So... Yeah, I'm just looking at this. So overall welfare usage went down. It declined like sharply because of Bill Clinton's policies, at, at least according to the Wikipedia. Yes. Right. Correct. The total uh, he, number because they because no, and he, spending and spending. Yeah. So spending, spending, spending things. also went down. He cut it up into block grants and gave it to the individual states, which, again, is a Republican uh, incentive, like it's a rep Republican agenda as opposed to like a subsuming it within the federal government. Uh, like in terms of welfare, he he Clinton was he, literally the he last one put said, ice yeah, on the border he, he, and build border wall. Bill Clinton himself said, like, we, we are going to end, wall. we are going to end welfare as we know it." Right? Like he was one of the most anti-welfare presidents we've had in the modern era. It, again, there's there's a difference between the total spending going down and the people, the benefits the people who are on welfare have access to going up. No, there it, Republicans today love the idea of more efficient wealth redistribution because they're fucking socialists. They love the idea of if I can get more people in welfare, but I can have a path to getting people off of welfare and into the job market. Oh, the fucking Koch brothers would sign that bill in a hot fucking second. That's what modern conservatives are about. They're I about programs and wealth redistribution, well, but they want them to be effective and they don't want like immigrants to just like utilize some them conservatives and, like, forever. Okay. They they want them to get people out of out of poverty and be a stepping stone to making them productive Americans. That's the conservative opinion in positional welfare, and that's the position that Donald Trump has. And that's no, the the Donald, Trump, Donald Trump's has. position is, is literally just a cut. It's not it's not a stepping stone. It's not a access that's to more. That's not true. He, he increased welfare. So they don't he increased small business loans. He increased the small business authority. He gave HUD more fucking money so that more black people could get homes. He started operations and initiatives to bring businesses yeah. into the black community. You're just making up. Up shit. I mean, no, honestly, I, like Donald Trump, I'm like was a, was a well known like Democrat for for decades, decades until he decided to run. Yeah, he's been a New York Democrat. Yeah, but I mean, like even then, he's like a moderate Democrat. Let's support. That's the reason I brought up Clinton eventually, right? Like because Clinton was a moderate Democrat, right? And you compare it to like policies now, and sure, like the Overton window it has moved, and like that's why when you say conservatives or whatever, like there, it's some conservatives, not every conservative is following in the category that Scott said, and that's why Scott I think specified in swing states because they're going to be, they're not going to be yeah. a true Republican conservative or, or a true conservative. They're going to be there sitting here blue thing. dog Democrats, right? Yeah, they're gonna, Republicans that are. Right. Yeah, they're gonna the they're gonna be like they're gonna be you know they're gonna lean a lot more one way on these issues uh, and that are and it's not gonna be a true like conservative like I don't want regulation I don't want socialism all this stuff's bullshit like that's not what they're gonna be about because they're yeah, not they're gonna Paul pay, Thomas Mann. yeah they're gonna have to pander to their uh, to their their masses in order to stay elected in those states and I mean to some extent Scott is correct on the, on that statement and I would say probably mostly correct like if, and that's part of the reason why I brought up Bill Clinton uh, as the 
example because now if you had Bill Clinton run, if he would be in a totally different party. He's he would be a, yeah. he, he would be a Republican. Him. He absolutely would be a Republican. It's, it's really not a debate. On I, what? Oh, like the the border. All of his policies. All of his policies. We, we name one thing. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton I mean, welfare, the border, against, his military marriage, and what? And was it gay marriage? And was it gay marriage? In the army, you know what I mean? Like he was a social oh, conservative. Well, yeah, Hitler, for sure. no one was pro gay marriage. And the Clinton administration he was still in the height of the satanic policy. panic because they were hardcore fucking Christian reactionaries up against heavy metal music and against Dungeons and Dragons and against video games because it's going to cause school shootings. Like no matter how you look at it, Bill Clinton is more conservative. Just show me. Just Donald show me Trump the conservative is going to ban guns. Show me the gun banning conservative and what we can. Literally, talk about. Donald Trump did the bump yeah, stock ban during his presidency. Ban. Like the, he the bump restricted stock ban gun isn't banning. Access. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a radical, radical leftist position, in my opinion. Bump stock ban. Why can't I have a stinger missile? And, and like that's what I'm saying. Donald like and the, and the and the creation of the the hope scouts, the biggest educational investment since like. Donald Crap. Trump doubled the money that HBCUs got. Number one, and you, number two, he Donald gave like Trump two million dollars. Let, let's not have that conversation. That that was not a real policy. Oh, oh, nothing's a real policy, and it's no, I know it. But, no, it's but, legitimately or, 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 not a real policy. He, he to, signed. Hold on, hold on, man. Do, do you think that bump stock like, man? Let me let him respond. Donald Trump. Last real quick. Last real quick. Donald Trump has been an advocate multiple times. You can find quotes from him over and over and over again, where he has talked about how he will sign a bill that does red flag to get rid of conservatives or anybody else's gun rights. If someone says that they're crazy or that they're mentally unstable. And let me tell you, that is a far more radical policy than the assault weapons ban. I mean, way more radical gun control policy. You, the idea that like your ex-wife can call and say this person seems dangerous and he's made threats against me. Uh, please take away his guns. We'll worry about it in court in a year. Ben, that is a very radical gun control policy. Do you think that the bump stock ban uh, that Trump put out, or the red flag one, or like his stance on like gay marriage, would be conservative Republican positions generally? What Trump's? in the 1990s? Trumps, Trumps, currently, because like, Trump has been a very big advocate for gay marriage his entire a big life. Advocate? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you yeah, watched. He actually the, has been for generations. Yeah, massive. He's massive the first president who started out a advocate for gay marriage when yeah, it was he, legal. Okay, yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, he, in two thousand eight, didn't like it. Yeah, so he he uh, he's been like so so when you say but, but when, I, when I say Trump give him credit for that part though that part it doesn't make sense to give him credit. No, for that, he right? had he was a no, he was an advocate before. Obama like, started off against no, no, gay marriage. No, Trump started no, no, off I, in favor I, I of know, gay marriage. I, I'm I, curious. I hear, no, no, I hear you. I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I and I know that you're correct when, when you say that. But I'm saying giving him credit for that is one is. It, on that specific uh, uh, note, right? Now, position if, to be in what oh, the majority oh, oh, already. Oh, well, hold on. He was yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like, our first was, LGBTQ ally. Exactly oh, he that, was. He was, was also already, pro. No, he was pro gay marriage before it was legal. If you remember watching The Apprentice, the girl, there was a big, big episode that Christians boycotted mm -hmm. because they came after this guy for being gay. He says, "Oh, you're gay. Doesn't matter," and then moves on and fires the other girl because she brought that up. And he's been yeah. a big advocate of being uh, like pro homosexuality and uh, uh, pro LGBTQ. Uh, and, and, that's, okay. so, and, so, again, like, and again, and again, and again, and again. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And and what you just did there, like, demonstrates the thing that I was having a problem with a uh, friend uh, Scott. Right? Right? Like, yeah, you could be a conservative and not be shitty to, to, to gay individuals, right? Like, individual conservatives can have friendly relations uh, with uh, gay individuals, right? Well, and individual conservatives policy. can still have, um, uh, because that's not, I'm sorry, right? The, we don't seem to understand that individuals, right, who, who um, like, have, a, are, are all heterodox, right? There's a uh, few people, except maybe for our friend Scott. We actually might have an exception literally right here, right? But few people are so uh, and purely tied to an ideology, right? Like that, that it will, uh, that you can sit down me, like as a leftist, and you guys know I'm a leftist, um, uh, and you'll find something that you might consider conservative. Like you go down through all my beliefs, you might find something that'll be conservative, right? That's how everyone works. So it's not useful to say, well, then, oh, that's not a conservative if 
um, he uh, well, was kind to well, uh, a gay kind individual, of or if he has like black friends, like none of that matters, right? Well, it does have um, black and, friends, and being anti-black isn't necessarily a conservative. You name a few, and and he um, has Mexican friends, right? He eats taco but, bowls, and he has yeah. Mexican friends. But, so, but, so, but, yeah. so, but pride, but that actually proves Scott's point, right? So, like, this is the point he's making, right? I'm like an individual liberty Fire conservative. Thomas. I'm not. A, I'm not a religious conservative, right? When I go vote, I'm an individual liber liberty like conservative. I think you know, gay rights people should be able to do whatever they want in their own homes, et cetera, et cetera. When it comes to economic, po economic policy, I'm pretty anti-socialism. I'm an ultra-capitalist. I talk about like ultra-capitalism all the time. I don't think we need to have... We, I, I would even go as far as to say I'm more capitalist than Scott on some issues, because he's over here talking about moral things. When it But some of them, you talk about morality, <laughs> like debates, yeah. but well, I mean, maybe, but like you talk about morality on, on some of these... I just spent the last week Championing price gouging in disaster <laughs> zones, and well, in that like, case, well, that's the easy actually, position because every economist supports that. By the way, that's well, the easy actually, position. Like, were you so, actually I mean, practicing capitalism, though, right, Gibbs? Don't you own like a business or something? Right? Yeah, I, I, I he actually was practicing. Okay, capitalism. I've, bought, I've bought, I've bought stocks, prime guys. Okay. <laughs> But I'll the, have you know, I, mean, I am a proud part owner of Delta. Well, so I well, so so here's here's my argument for what I was going to say. I'm maybe more capitalist. So he actually argues about the morality of like, hey, whether some people should do this when it regards to capitalism. And my take is, take advantage of these fuckers. Their money belongs to me. It's better spent with me anyway, it's right? So it's, it is more capitalist. We don't have to go into what, whether or not. But the point that free exchange of but the point that I'm making, goods. the point that I'm making is this, right? Is so whenever I'm talking about like Bill Clinton or versus like, hey, uh, like Trump, they're very similar to the policies trump would be is like a 90s democrat right and there is this overton window kind of like we were just talking about yeah. but i think he is right i think lately the republican party is is by definition has socialist policies that they're pushing and they're not a bulwark against socialism like they used to be i don't i don't know why that's even controversial okay. really as a talking so, point yeah. so i want i just want to say I'll, I'll, say I'll say this one thing and then you can uh, back to bam and uh scott and i actually don't want to bring other people in because i think i'm sure other people have thoughts on this right um but I, w I, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, oh, am I actually doing the same thing as Scott, right? And I think maybe to a certain extent I am, right? Uh, because this is definitely, like, a matter of perspective. So, like, w w uh, I'm basically saying that with the uh, corporate Democrats um, and uh, uh, Republicans, like, they form, like, a uniparty, right? That, 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 they're, uh, that they have more in common than they have uh, uh, not in common. Um, and I, I'm not seeing much of a difference, right? And so when you say that, you know, well, Bill Clinton is like thing, Donald, yeah. Donald Trump, right? Yeah, uh, I, can, I can totally buy that, 100%, right? Um, but when I look at that, right, from my perspective, being on the left, that looks like conservatism to me. And then your perspective, being on the right, like that looks like leftism to you because they're, they're, they are less right than you are, right? Um, so... Uh, uh, but like, I, I, but I also don't, real terms. But, 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 sorry. Uh, sorry on, so let me just finish my, what I'm saying. Um, let me just finish this. All right. So, um, it, it seems like it's just a matter of perspective, but I don't make the, uh, the thing that I don't do is uh, go the extra step and saying, well, like they're all fascists. And I think fascism is from socialism, but you disagree on that. That's fine. Um, but I don't say that like, well, anyone to the to the to the right uh, to the right of me is fascist right and it seems like what you're doing is that anyone to the left of you is is a socialist is a, is a leftist uh, essentially right um that they have some what you consider to be heterodox um uh, like uh policy standpoints and so they are socialist and i'm saying like that's not useful even if uh from our, our framework that these uh, two entities, right? That, that people say are different. Uh, the corporate Democrats and Republicans. Um, that uh, to say that, that they have uh, similar policies, like it's not useful to just label them all like either fascist or socialist. There you go. So let me That's let fine. me respond We're, this very quickly, uh, okay. or as quickly as I can be. Right. Let me respond. What you are doing is you are using a subjective definition of all of these political philosophies, and I think that that is inherently not only not only is it not useful, I think that it gets very close to dangerous when we start utilizing political philosophy, especially things that are tied to ideologies like fascism or socialism or communism, right? That have that have 
participated in violent overthrows and revolutions and committed genocide and all these things because you start to get to this point where you begin to justify things based off of a subjective feeling of the political philosophy. That is what you are doing when you say, well, they appear to be conservative to me, but they appear to be leftist to you. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using definitions and then saying, and doing the best that I can to define these things and then saying, do they fit this definition? So a conservative, for example, a Burkean conservative is someone that is intentionally making sure that there are not drastic or radical policy changes that occur in a short span of time because the government needs to slowly progress because we must fear the concept that we throw a wrench into something if we allow government to progress too far or too quickly. When I say socialism, I'm using the definitions and the concepts that it is that it originates from. The concept that the state is getting involved in the market economy and, 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 and using regulations or redistribution as a means of fixing the inherent contradictions in capitalism, as Marx sees it, and that those inherent contradictions will lead us to late stage capitalism and beyond, and we need more and more socialism if we don't get a revolution for the people because they are critically conscious. I'm using those definitions. And so I'm not vibing out where they sit compared to me. What I'm doing is I'm using a definition to say, do they fit this definition? And uh, so it's, I, can, I don't know how you have an argument against that if you refuse to give those, to give definitions or critique mine. I don't know if Mark would and use any definition just, that includes, that includes any existing market in, in his, in Mark's definition of socialism, even though, even if it's a transition. You have not read any Marx if you think that. Mark, I was about to say, go to Marx. Or any Engels or any, anti, or any vulgar anti, Marxist. Anti Marxist. Got you. So, no, uh, what not, I, he literally says all right, multiple times. All right, all right, all right I'm going to have my point. Yeah, let, let, and, 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 and he I, says I capitalism is, has been the best economic system the world has ever seen. Up till now, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, to, okay. Okay. yeah. Now, there's there's some, there's a, a middle point of truth. There is a reality that the parties that exist in this country exist under the umbrella of liberalism. That's the su that, that's the part that we, the subject that we all agree to uh, agree towards. So the reason that we can have separate parties under the concept of liberalism is there is some overlap or belief that like basically there's there's different perspectives on things, but they all fit under they can they can coexist in the same country. I don't think I don't think communists and fascists could exist as two parties in in a like a stabilized country. Like I don't think that though like I don't think there's a, a they're literally in every parliamentary country in Europe. <laughs> Like explicitly, openly fascist party right, almost got a majority my, vote in Germany. Exactly what I said again. I don't think that communists and fascists can coexist in a party in, in a country because they like they. I don't think they can coexist because they're two sep completely separate entities. They cannot in any country on earth, and they don't. Um, mm -hmm. The where the where the the issue comes in is whenever we say things like oh they're basically the same they're they're doing the same policy it's it comes off as someone who isn't engaging with with what's actually happening when we look at our congress when we look at the, our citizens when we look at every every sector of our uh, of our politics right now they're not the same they couldn't be they couldn't be more different or well, they could be more different from each other but like we're we're teetering on the edges of of how different we can be from each other. We literally have a Congress that's almost non non functional at this point because we can't pass legislation because we're so far far apart on issues. Um, you have you have segments of the Democratic Party that are again teetering towards um, teetering towards strong elements of uh, of somewhat socialism. I would say like it's still markets. Like I don't. I don't like that definition of it, but yeah, somewhere towards a uh, uh, integrated social movement, and then you have large swaths of the Republican Party that are teetering towards extreme populism, leaning not quite but closely into fascism in their attachment to Trump. Especially if you look at politicians like Marjorie Taylor Greene um, and a few others. So it's it's strange that we would. Look at the look at the state of the the country as it currently exists. Look at how tough it is to get anything done, and say that like, oh, these two parties are the same. Like that just doesn't. It doesn't well, like hold, hold on with that. Nothing, so you're saying that fascism and and socialism or communism can't coexist. 
let me tell you why you're wrong. Uh, with, two with, with, with two real ribbon trope with with two two real world examples that we have today, uh, North Korea, China. Are you saying those are not fascist or co and communist like or fascist socialist combinations? Yeah, I don't consider China to be well. China calls themselves communists. I don't consider China to be communists. Um, I, I actually consider them to be. Extremist. They are, but okay. What about North Korea then? North Korea is definitely socialist and fascist, like as a combo. Like, what? What do you? How do you? How do you say that doesn't exist, and then deal with North Korea existing? I consider. Oh, uh, you're you're calling them fascist. You're saying that they have an economic belief on top of like having a dictator. But I'm saying that like when I speak yeah, exactly. communists, I'm talking about stateless societies. I'm saying that people who advocate for a stateless society and people who advocate for like this one true fascist leader. I'm Utopia. saying. Well, that's the that's same problem I have with Scott's argument all the time. That's the same problem I have with Scott's argument when he talks about libertarianism. And I'm like, okay, well, that's great and all. I believe that you believe that, but we don't live in a libertarian society where everybody's their own government. Guess what? Same thing with the, what you're saying. They're talking about stateless society. Guess what? That doesn't exist either, Papa, but North Korea does exist. So, like, how do you tell me that they're a dictator with socialist policies and then sit here with a straight face and tell me that they can't coexist? Like I, I just, I just stated that there's also no like parties and, 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 and that low communism yeah, is the yeah, they have their party, the socialist super state to take over the resources for the people, and that then there will be like an awakening or critical consciousness, if you will, right, where you would transition to the utopic stateless society. So a state-based socialist, a socialist state, is explicitly part of the praxis of communism. So yeah, like, you can't communism. say it's only real communism. How is that? Com That's literally how Marx describes it. It's a process. Like when you look at Engels okay. and you read uh, Socialism, Scientific and Utopic, part one, right? And you see him give a historic reference of, you know, the historical dialectical materialism and the way that he shows, you know, the industrialist becoming the new. Form and they say you have to of, kill all the like, fascists. What? What? I'm saying that I'm saying that the, the general communist, uh, the communist perspective is like, oh, okay, like the 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 the, the, the capitalists and the fascists can't coexist with you. You're saying that like you either have to be reeducated or killed. Germany, what about Cuba? Germany and not, the USSR s signed the Molotov Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, and the USSR gave financial and economic support for Germany to invade Poland and then switch sides like the concept that they can't work together ever and that like they can't have similar goals when they have a nearly identical economic model with different social values is wildly just ahistorical yeah i mean if you also look at like cuba venezuela currently uh so, so like uh, north korea all of these are in the transitionary like states where you have both so like what you're saying is just blatantly like not factual or, or true like because uh, you're talking about places without parties you read without without because you might system. become a communist but like read some marxism if you're going to talk about marxism like you yeah, okay but you're, you're talking about system you're talking about systems that don't involve parties well they did have parties and one party took over and, and then, then they, they the charge I, I don't want to focus on this this this, this singular okay. point for, for like a half like a hour or even longer than that and a means of analyzing history like it is it's yeah. two part it's praxis philosophy and a means of analyzing uh, yeah. the history like there's like it, it, it's it's a it's a cultish idea of of maintaining contradictions but nevertheless like it, there isn't a specific path or goal in communism and marx is extremely specific about how so, marxism will look different in every country he explains how it might uh, look in england right as does Engels. And then he explains about high communism, low communism as a, as a potential means. And then Bakunin so, took him to task for that I, and destroyed him even back then. Okay, so uh, I I don't want to like argue specifically on, on that this point for a long time. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I want to know what uh, uh, the other members of our uh, panel think. You guys have been all quiet here. Uh, so do you um, uh, hmm. Uh, do you think that uh, the the lines that we are drawing um, that have been drawn between like uh, Democrats, Republicans, um, uh, and like uh, liberalism and conservatism aren't very useful, and that like these things are uh, maybe uh, on on a spectrum? Do you think that y would you group them all together, or would you disambiguate them further? Like, uh, what are your uh, thoughts on these labels. Starting with, 
I, 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 know, I can give any my take. one of you motherfuckers haven't talked. I, so I've said this before multiple mm-hmm. times. Like I think political identities are really just kind of heuristics. You can use them when they're useful, but they're not actually. I don't think that they're objective. Um, I think libertarian is a big tent description. I only use it because I think it's most close to what I uh, say. Uh, see, Scott thinks I'm a socialist, right? So I think this kind of demonstrates my point. Therefore, a Nazi. That, like, right. It kind of demonstrates my point, which is that, like, um, I, I think, I think uh, this is like when someone says, oh, you're not a true Democrat or you're not a, you're not a true this. I, I think that's like the lowest form of discourse because it's like we're, we're having an argument over what you think the, like the parameters of your identity are and whether or not they apply to you as opposed to arguing about the actual prescriptions that you believe, which is really the thing that I'm interested in getting at, right? Because if your prescriptions are, you know, super libertarian, but you're calling yourself something different, I can still work with you, right? I'm still interested in, in bringing you over to my side because I think we share similar values. Um, so. I think well, the, the issue is... Uh, one second. Our friend Doobie has to leave. Um, we'll we'll uh, talk to uh, Doobie later. Have yeah, a good one. I gotta go. Sorry, guys. Take care. Be well. Peace out, man. Good day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Stay away from those dick bills. Perhaps. <laughs> He's not gonna. Working for Unless you use code, Admiral we'll gives on Bluetooth. Response. He's gonna just, no, just I, use the honey that the Arabs sell you at the gas stations instead. He, it's so much better. How'd you, get dick, how'd you get a dick? How'd you get a dick pill? Dick pill sponsorship, Gibbs. Can you explain that process? They, uh, they, uh, his, I, I saw He's that. Matt, I, I am a heathen, and uh, I saw Matt Rife was advertising on this thing, and so I was like, "How hard is it to get sponsored by this?" As a joke, and I clicked on their sponsorship thing, and it was a form. And they give you your first month free, and after that, it's like twenty percent of every subscription each month for people that sign up. So, like, say, like you, we wouldn't use my code. Your first month was free. You would pay whatever, and they'll give you like twenty percent of whatever monthly subscription that you buy and for uh, their. Digital. It's super easy to. It, it, he's just talking about affiliate links, right? It's super easy yeah. to um oh, get, like, affiliate get affiliate link. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. that's not quite uh, the same thing as a sponsorship. Yeah, it's not. I mean, and and when you sign up, they give you like a few hundred dollars uh, and like some mm-hmm. logos and stuff. So if I wanted to, I could put up. My like blue chew logos all over my stream and um, uh and i got i got my sponsorship money so it's like it's a little bit the, more than affiliate league, it's the fake it's my homeboy, you make it homeboy let me use one is uh he had the freaking blue chew and i he, he let me use one and i thought i was gonna have like crazy sex i was like That's oh illegal. man it's gonna you say that i had i had a buddy that this, this was his quote the other day he said i never had a boat i thought i'd never had a boner until I, uh, until after i did blue chew i, was, I realized uh, i never had a boner my whole you life you should make that a customer blue testimonial blue yeah, uh, I don't know. To me, it, it was just like uh, the I was like, oh, sorry, that's let's let's go to. Uh, he's like, my all my uh, reactions are, are iron hard every time. Um, but anyway, um, let's get to our friend. Uh, Iko, you want to say something? Uh, well, I was just just asking your answering your question, but uh, yeah. I think it's the, f- the function of the fact that we are in a two party system means that ultimately you're voting for one party or the other, and uh, that means your like list of priorities in terms of what you believe have to merge with a whole bunch of others that you don't believe. And so you're sort of forced to pick a coalition uh, that you don't 100% agree with every time. Like, for instance, uh, you know, for most of my life, the the coalition that ran the Republican Party was uh, basically neocons, libertarians, and evangelicals. And now there's a fourth uh, the MAGA folks are, are now a fourth uh, like group in that coalition, but they don't always agree with each other, right? We're seeing a fight right now between uh, between Trump and uh, Lindsey Graham over abortion, right? Because Trump has decided that the abortion issue is costing him more than it's benefiting him. He's he's coming out of the primary, so he doesn't need to like appeal to. Uh, the base anymore. Uh, now uh, he thinks that maybe he needs to just make himself a little bit less scary to s- certain aspects of the center. Whatever. Uh, and Lindsey Graham doesn't believe that. I think he's more cared. He cares more about what his base thinks, probably because he's in a state where he's never going to be a threat of losing a general election, but he could get primaried from the right. And all of these, there's the same thing with Democrats, right? There's like types of Democrats who are who are in this party, which is why Democrats sort of famously fight each other, right? They're uh, historically been called the circular firing squad because there's so many different like sets of people that are in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't work this way in a parliamentary uh, system, right, where you have multiple parties. 
There are other drawbacks to those systems. Ultimately, when it comes to you passing legislation, coalition. you have shifting uh, allegiances, right? Which is why nuclear power died in, in, in a noble death in Germany was because a very small party, the Greens, were able to, um, you know, become kingmakers, and all they really gave a shit about was uh, killing nuclear. And so, like I'm both parties yeah. did what they could to help them, like get part of the green sector. So that's a problem there, right? But you can't really vote your conscience in a two-party system. At the very least, in a three part in, in a multiple multi-party system, you can at least vote for a party that uh, that you mostly agree with, the one that you agree with more than all of the other parties. And then if you can get people on the back bench, they can swing a vote every once in a while for things that are most important. And I think those types of legislatures are at least a little bit more able to um, distinguish between uh, actual issues that voters are voting for in, in one direction or another because of the shifting allegiances of the back bench. We don't have that here in America. And so you end up having to support like a, a whole sort of set of issues by virtue of voting for one of the two major parties. Or you can vote third party, but your vote won't matter then. Your, or vote, vote your vote in, already doesn't matter. It might matter, matter in the opposite way that you hope it will. Well, your vote the, also doesn't matter if you live in most states, right? I mean, there's only a few key states in yeah. which your vote actually matters. If you live in California... Well, yeah. even in those states, it can matter at the congressional level or at the state legislative well, level. Like there's a lot of different... right? If you live in California, yeah. you're fine voting third party for president. Uh, but it still matters, like the fact that uh, Repu Republicans gained some seats in California. Help if they if that hadn't happened, then then well, uh, Biden would have a trifecta right yeah. now, right? So there are voters in in California who've made a difference for the bounce of power in America. Like, what do you mean a trifecta? It can matter. Uh, it's it's when a, one party has both houses of Congress and the and the White House. Yeah, both. So yeah. like uh, the last. President to have a trifecta. Oh, Biden ballot. had a trifecta for the first two years of his presidency, which is why he got so much shit done. And uh, Trump had did. it for the first two years. Uh, right, no, no, I, I, I understand what I'm, I'm saying. Like Obama did for two years. Sort of like presidential, mm -hmm. right? Like in the event there's specific counties in California, which is actually like right. kind of split. Sure, like I understand voting for one of the two parties, but in a lot of places, most places in America, at least for the presidential election, you can safely vote third party, right? If you live in a, st a safe state, you can vote third party in the pre uh, presidential uh, election. Yeah, I did for years because I was in Texas and I thought yeah, my cares? vote didn't matter, so I voted Libertarian instead of yeah, because I was cares? a Republican. That's who, the point, yeah. though. Well, yeah, who cares? Um, Texas becoming but, what was it it's the, a which, safe which state. Did you vote for? The, was it the Texas? You think state? Texas is still a safe state? Yeah, absolutely. Texas is going red. Come on. I wouldn't say it's sure, safe, but it's, it's not. Safe. It's not a swing state. Every, everyone no, said, everyone, swing everyone, state everyone said that last time, dude. Oh, but it's, it's, it's gonna it's go like, it's so close. It's, 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 nah, it's, got, it's no, yeah, it's gone more than recently. Thirty-two, <laughs> but not. Yeah, not that's like saying that. This, this, I mean, people still feel that Georgia is a safe state. <laughs> no, no, it's not. different. So Georgia's there was a swing state. No one should think Georgia. No, there was arguments that that Texas was going to be a swing state whenever, whenever, what was his name, Beto was running the first time, and then Beto like lost close one, and the next time. He ran. He got smacked, uh, whooped all over the place. And guess what? Now we're back to going to a uh, full uh, red again. Uh, Ali, um, what are your thoughts? Oh man! So I was sitting here listening, and I'm like, "Holy shit! I know nothing." You guys were just saying words. I'm like, "Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. all right." Let's talk. So I think most people, I think the average person, is about like that. Where they're, where they're going to listen to what you're saying, they're going to be like. The only thing I got from that was, hmm, Trump was a 90s Democrat. And so that, that it does make sense, okay, that, you know, him being a Republican, like, you know, and it aligns with the, the things in 90s. I was like, okay, all right, that makes sense. Um, I think most people, they can claim to be Republican, they can claim to be Democrat, they really only care about one or two policies. Like, I watched it here in Dearborn, where when Trump was president, everyone was like, fuck that, this racist, blah, 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 blah. All right, cool, so they voted Biden in. And then Biden gets in and, you know, now we have the war in Gaza and everyone's like, what the fuck? Biden didn't stop the war in Gaza. We're voting for Trump. Trump actually hates Israel and actually hates not Netanyahu. And so it, everyone just seems to flip on one or two policies. If you're, you know, pro-trans policies, you're going to be leftist, right? If you're pro uh, right now, it seems that if you're, you know, pro stopping uh, Gaza, everyone wants to be voting for Trump. That's what's happening here. That's what I'm seeing uh -huh. is everyone's going against Democrat. And they're going, oh, no, Trump is going to Trump is actually better uh, with foreign policy about this. He's harder on foreign policies. And uh, yeah, it's and or, or it's like it's, it's abortion. I think people pick one or two policies 
and those policies seem to like align them with the left or the right. But then on average, most people are just in the center, not really knowing what's going on and just kind of voting with whatever makes them feel good. And like, to like, one demographic. The there, there's one demographic that actually changes elections, right? And most people are not going to like it, but it's just true. White suburban women. White suburban women determine the outcome of almost every election in American history. And the reason for that is that white suburban women, um, they sit just right in the middle. Part. They can be Republican, they can be Democrat, they can switch between these two in any election. Um, if 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 things are particularly emotional or fiery, they may follow their husbands because of the 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 forms of conversations that they have at the dinner table, et cetera. And if things are died down a little bit, they're more likely to split from their husbands. Also, also they've been split for a few years now. Is the white suburb since the other, 2018. The other thing is the other thing is that suburban white women tend to live in swing state districts, right? Because when you live in the city, you're living in a district that is potential that's usually very, very blue. When you're living out in the country, you're usually living in a district that is very, very red. But when you talk about areas that vote in a swing state way, it's suburbs. Suburbs are the place that can go Republican or Democrat. So when when if you can win white suburban women. That is how you win every election. It doesn't fucking matter. Crazy college kids talking about Israel, Palestine. That doesn't win elections. What wins elections, for example, is Governor Yunkin, right? Targeting white suburban women being like, look at the crazy shit they're putting in schools. Look at what's happening in Loudoun County. And they got all the fucking moms that were mad, moms for liberty and those groups. And he destroyed were Democrats that outspent him three to one because he carried white suburban women. Like at the end of the day, that's really, and that is why mm -hmm. people are coping so hard about Trump being super, super popular and yet not being able to win certain elections because yes, Trump is super, super popular with a lot of people that are very, very vocal, but there is a real silent majority and it's the silent majority that almost always wins elections. And it's what a white suburban women think. And they don't fucking like a dude that says a bunch of halfway misogynistic shit. They don't like him because he sounds like an asshole. They don't like him because grab him by the pussy. And they certainly don't like him because of the abortion issue, which is why, and Roe v. Wade and them blaming him for that. And that's why they're, that's why uh, he's realizing he's not going to fucking yeah, win but unless he can dis In 2018, it was like the, it was the, family separation policy that uh, galvanized suburban white women for the 2018 mm -hmm. blue wave yeah i know i, I would have always um well, one of the largest demographics i've always seen is just basically the ability to get black people to the polls like that's why black people's argument is typically that we get pandered to around election time because they they, they understand to where the way black people vote but it's the number yeah, it, it, voter, it, it, turnout. It, yeah, yeah. voter turnout in the black community will give you a left wing victory. Because mm, I was about to say, when, when you deal with states like Wisconsin, we deal like Pennsylvania, obviously Georgia, North Carolina, like you would think, like, oh, Wisconsin, that's not super black. But then you think about Milwaukee is uh, uh, extremely black. And it, like, it's just the idea of like, what do we have to say to make black people go to the polls? Uh, Ali? So, yeah, I was just about, uh, we now in this cycle, I feel like we activated the minority suburban dad. And the minority suburban dad is a voting conservative this time with the book scandal with the, I'm just going to just specifically the fucking LGBT book scandal that activated. I've never seen so much men caring about what's going on in the schools, getting up and going to the, the, the school meetings, getting up and going and voting in, in the, in their cities. Like it is going, and it, it was literally typically minority dads would have voted Democrat due to racism. That's why they were going Democrat. But now, with their kids, yeah, like now they're, you're seeing a lot of them going conservative. And like Scott's point, it wasn't specifically that like um, college kids for Israel passed it. I'm just saying that a lot of minority people are now going conservative. They're now thinking of going conservative voting, and Trump seems to be the alternative because of these like one or two issues i think most so of them i haven't really seen have that in the better. elections like mm -hmm. i can't i've been hearing that analysis especially about the school district stuff mm -hmm. ever since uh ever since loudon county right but then in every election since then 
in the 22 uh, midterms, they were expecting to see that. Be, the, the Republicans went all in on the, on the anti-trans stuff for that election, and they didn't get the red wave they were expecting. 2023 election last year, uh, we, we repeated it in multiple states, and again, it was Republicans didn't win that one. And then they fl uh, Democrats oh, flipped you, like yeah. Michigan Supreme Court. I mean, all these statewide races that have happened this year, um, it, none of this stuff is materializing. I understand that it worked in Virginia in 2017, but since then, was, it, it, I mean, no, 2019, 2019. Magic, you always happen to find 10,000 magical mail-in ballot votes that are 92 percent. Oh, you know? don't tell well, me that. That, that might, that might, that might explain why Virginia went red, but I. I I'm not. I'm not being so tough on them. Uh, on I'm, that. I'm just saying what I'm hearing. I don't know if it's actualizing, but I'm. What I'm hearing is I seen a oh. complete 180 flip amongst like, an, um, at least just my community, and so yeah. I, I can't imagine that's not happening everywhere. I was so saying, I'm looking what, at the roll right now. Right. Hispanic men went from like they, in 2018 they were plus 42 blue to. As of 2022, they were plus 13. So there's a massive shift in, yeah. like, specifically Hispanics. Well, and then black, according to CBS, black voters. Yeah, yeah that, that's true. And then, and then Gen Z, Gen Z, like, the men, the men seem to be going. And then Gen Z, the, that, like, the young men seem to be going more right, whereas the women do seem to be going more left, but the men are going right. There is a, like, was, there, among Gen Z, there's a market shift yeah. now between the genders, yes. So and it's, I think, and, and I, think, I, I think if you want to understand that shift, I think it's really important that people here begin to start to pay attention to South Korean politics. It's because South Korea is about 10 years ahead of us in terms of that cultural shift and what is occurring when you have a society where a new generation occurs, where the men are getting more and more conservative and the women are getting more and more left-wing and more and more feminist. Yeah. It is extremely stark difference in South Korea. And I think we need to start paying attention to South Korean politics to see how that cultural impact uh, impacts the political system there, because it's probably going to be a, a decent predictor of what we have coming for well, I, I agree yeah, with you the here. things i've been hearing about south korea um I, I i would see those trends that you're talking about um but like i wanted to so uh i want to comment on what ali was saying um mm -hmm. at, at first i was agreeing with you but i feel like you overstated your case um <clears throat> so what? i will tell you uh, <laughs> right. I, I guarantee you no that's not uh, no problem no problem friend um so i uh, i think that so you, you were saying that um, there are individuals uh, who um, uh, they're, they really only care about like one or two issues and they're a uh, uh, shift in between, right? Like, um, and, and that's just enough to motivate them. What, what you're descri describing is a swing voter. Um, and that's, like, that's their definition, right? Like definitionally, that's what they do. Um, and uh, something will activate them and then they're, they move over to one side or the other. Um, but I think like, you know, decades and decades of political science can tell us that like most people pick what whatever party um that well their parents were in first of all right but beyond that like once they like form a voting habit they stick with that one party um with very little movement in between um not that it's impossible but that it's just like how that happens um but uh i i would agree though that like and and there's a part that i was initially thinking that you were saying is that among the masses, right? Most people aren't actually, you know, deep into politics. They don't discuss them like we do, obviously, right? And so when they're when they hear us talk, like they'll have your experience, right? Like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Oh yeah, Donald Trump. I know that guy, right? Bill Clinton. I know that guy, right? Were they the same? Interesting uh, idea, all right? But and then that's what they'll grab onto. So I, I'm with you there, mm -hmm. um, and uh, because of that, it, like, going back to what we were. Uh, Scott and I were discussing uh, to, for a little bit in which way is that like like those individuals like what like what are they like like uh, like how do you accurately describe their um, uh, their ideology right um, so, if they don't have a, 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 a firm idea of policy um, if they don't if they, they're just generally voting for their cultural team like is that person a liberal is that are they conservative like how would like what's a useful way of, of describing that individual? I mean, they're they're, they're um, voting. That, that's oh. what makes they're, white suburban women unique. Yeah. They don't they don't tend to ascribe to a political party or system. What mm. they do is they tend to latch onto what's popular. Mm. So culture, they're like cultural voters. Management. 
yeah. cultural voters. So right they're now, with actually Democrat or Republican, they're just it's like whoever most people are at their workplace. That's what they tend to just start gravitating towards, yeah. or whoever most of their Facebook friends are. Like that's what they start to gravitate towards. With that's why they they swing so much is because they're not yeah. moored to any political ideology. Yeah, with with Gen Z, uh, something I noticed and why I think so many Gen Z men have gone, you know, right, and so many Gen Z women have gone left, is uh, yes. honestly the, 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 the red pill with, with, like, the red pill. You have a bunch of young men who, honestly, I think at their core, want a house, a car, a wife, maybe a kid or two. That's like most men at their core, that's what they want. And that's, they're not able to get that with the policies that are coming with, like, leftist and progressivism, right? It seems that, like, that's, like, all, they're, yeah, they're, they're all against that shit. So, they're not getting late. Yeah, yeah, so they're watching, they're watching, they're watching red pillars. And it seems that it seems that like the red pillars are giving men something tangible, right? It's hey, if you work hard, you'll have money. If you go to the gym, you'll be good looking. If you learn how to speak to women, you'll you'll be able to get married and have kids. And these are the things that like men typically want. Whereas in the left, it's a lot of individualism. It's a lot of hey, it's okay if you end up forty unmarried. Like you should be okay with that. It's a lot of accepting these like things that typically we don't normally like want to accept. And so you, it seems that like the left is leaning way more towards women and the right is leaning way more towards men, at least in terms of like um, social ideology. And so people are, go people are typically voting with social ideology. That's what they're going to go vote for. If some someone says, hey, this guy is going to lower your taxes and you're going to be able to make more money. And then that way you're going to be able to afford more things like then. Yeah, they're going to vote with that person. Right, like they're gonna go Trump. Oh, this guy's a business guy. This guy fucks bitches. This guy, boom, boom, boom. That, that, that's what they're gonna lean with, versus like policy most of the time. I think for the for like the masses, maybe like people, you know, people like you are more invested. You guys care more, but for the average normie now, they're like, "What, well, bro? This guy says the things I'm thinking. I'm voting for him. He's yeah, gonna I be mean, my president." Well, again, I think that's that. an average swing voter. Though. But go ahead, you, you go, uh, Gibbs. I want to add to that. Well, two things. One with the Trump thing. One is I like. I don't know how much of this is a meme and how many of these people are actually going to vote. But like, I've never seen as many minorities be as pro Republican as they have been for Trump. Minority and a lot, uh, Yeah, and a lot of this has been like, say that that uh, what was that the the photo of him in jail? I suddenly saw a bunch of my uh, African American friends posting TikTok saying, "Oh yeah, that's a mean photo. I'm voting for Trump. That's somebody I want in charge. Well, I don't want somebody." Trump, mean, you know, Trump like, was a and, huge figure in the black community right. before his presidency. And then and then like and so we're you still mentioned ninety two percent. And you, I mean yeah, maybe and then you but then you also ninety two percent. What yeah, about the pro Trump? Yeah, we're gonna vote ninety two percent. But as no, but hold on, as far as people what, have been saying this for years, years and years and years, but, the I mean, black voters is on the verge of flipping, and then I mean, it then election yeah, something that's, goes that's and it doesn't point, happen. But, but I want to address something else. All he said is like, so he was talking about the social paradigm shift with the men and the women, and I think it's really interesting um, with the red pillars, right? Because the red pillars have kind of embraced. Uh, something that I, I don't necessarily agree with. Like I agree with some of what they say, and then I bre break away from them on a lot of things because they don't actually preach traditional values, right? They're preaching to like men that like aren't getting laid, and what what do men want? Like in general, men want to get laid. Mm -hmm. A lot of them do, right? And so they're sitting there and they preach a lot to that, and they sit there they preach these things. And it's kind of what we were talking about with Myron earlier, and I was saying his brand is done, and it's interesting to me because what they're doing is they're taking these concepts that have been labeled as toxic that every man feels right like it's like and i talk about this a lot when we do men's health panels i say competition is gone well what do the red pillars want there's a competition's good we want competition you want to be an alpha you want to beat up other people you want to be the best you want to be a leader like this is what we do we're sick and they've gone to this idea of the sigma male the alpha male and like that's really like uh, appealing to a lot of these men who feel especially these younger generations disenfranchised and as opposed to these women who are like hey i've seen the opposite i want these things and i think it's a very interesting like paradigm shift because of how like influential they've been like i was talking to one of my buddies uh the other day he just turned 18 and we were talking about like some of the differences between our generations and he he's like a fitness model right and he goes oh yeah when's the last time you got laid and i told him like i don't know like last week and he goes i haven't been laid in like three years and i'm like that's crazy you're like six percent body fat wait, 200 wait, wait, wait. Pounds. age might be a factor here sure sure <laughs> sure sure that 
that's true. I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to argue that. But <laughs> I thought yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, but he's like, I don't have any women. I'm talking He's got to have been laid in ten years. We got some three years legal issues. Right, sure. Yeah. He said three years, but like, but <sighs> I, I thought it was interesting. This guy's like a fitness model. Like he's just the guy that like if he was going to start like the OnlyFans, like this, he's like the real good looking dude. And I'm like, he's like, I don't know how to talk to women. When I do, they get like turned off by what I say. Like it's hard for me to like go meet them. And I'm like, bro, we go to the same bars. Like if I'm at a bar, you like I'll see you there with like a group of people. Like if it's eighteen, 18 year old at a bar, hold on a second, kids. Are you yeah, writing somebody else? It's, it's, Again, no, there's serious legal no, there's 18, no, there's 18 and up bars. You can go to bar at 18. You go to the dance hall. Like, it's not a thing. Don't be over here trying to turn this into a mountain, into a you like, can go you to the roller to, skating park. No, you can go to the country club and they have it's 18 and up. Like oh, you yeah. go to a concert, it's 18 and up. Don't be trying to spin this. But like the, I'm sitting here, I'm like, I see you in some of these places, <laughs> and I'm just like, well, you're not you're never talking to girls. And I'm like, why? He's like, Well, I don't know how to talk to him. And it's a real thing because if you go up to him and you're masculine, then like a lot of these women are turned off in these generations, is what he's saying. And I, I think yeah. it's interesting. That's well, the right. problem, Gibbs. These women aren't putting out, right? We fix that, yes. we fix the problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's the problem. That's Problem. Yeah, some men are just too masculine, and these women can't handle it's, it. Oh, yeah, no, like, they don't like. Wait, 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 wait. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to go. I don't want to go down this road with it because it's going to be complete fucking yeah. tangent. But holy shit, right? Like what it you just thing. said is that, yeah. There, you're, there's he's so masculine, except that you ignore the other thing that you just related to us, and that like when I talk to them, the things I say turn them I off, right? Problem. But then, I no, no, I know, I know, I know. When you the things that you were relating from your friend, right? He said when I talk to them, uh, it turns women. Uh, uh, the things I say turn women off, right? But then you said they don't want to like, masculine dude. Yeah, and then that's what you take from that. It is like he's being too masculine, and so yeah. that's why. So, or so maybe the same could be fucking shit. I mean, are you selling their only fans? That's what they're doing. But no, no, but you're missing the point with that problem. I know you're memeing right now, but like if I'm if not memeing. Hold on. Okay, so say you're a conservative masculine dude and you're 18 and you go up to women who are leaning left, they're not going to be like, oh, this is what I want. They're going to want yeah. someone that matches their like yeah, style. They, 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 they want a soy boy. boy. Yeah. They do. They want a soy boy. They they can sell their only fans too. They can control, right? My generation women like masculine men. And even in the older generations, like masculine men, so mm. I don't have that problem. Well, they're even like, they're uh, even getting sick of that. So okay, so I mean, what like ten, not ten, about, about, yeah. about ten years? Boy ago. bands weren't what? a thing back in the day. <sighs> No, definitely not. Mm. Definitely just, not yeah. either. What do you wait? Are, is is our boy bands oh, anti soy boy, or do you think the boy bands are soy boy? Uh, wait, wait, China had to ban no, feminine men. By the way, kid, look, look. I remember people because, my age complaining back back in the day mm -hmm. that 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 women were going for. We didn't call them soy boys. We called them boy band, you know, kids or whatever. Sissies. But like yeah. the, the same complaints were being made back then, right? Which is that this new generation, these mm -hmm. Gen Xers, are uh, you know way too uh, feminine. Uh, whatever happened to the real men you know uh -huh. and those were the people that that's what people were complaining about back then these are complaints that you know uh, people have every yeah, some people those are complaints that are happening now. It's different now, though, Ico. Every time they say think the Beatles, the complaints are happening now. When when I, like, listen, the college the Beatles were were soy boys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, no, 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 they were also rich. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Well, those were celebrities. Wait, those were celebrities and rich. When you're an average dude, hi. Okay, listen, I'm not ugly by any means. And when I was in when I was 22, I, I was the I was the ideal hippie. All right, long hair to my ass, smoking weed, chilling in a college the whole the whole fucking spiel all right the second you say anything any idea like any idea that leans slightly left in le uh, right in those types of uh uh groups you get demonized to fucking all shit you become an instant um, an instant misogynist you're instantly sexist anything you say is yeah. actually it sounds mm -hmm. like the 60s I mean, you're at, you're at a university, and women. Yeah, but I was still I was still part of I still I still held the same ideologies. I was a hippie. I was in those things. But if you say anything that goes slightly against anything that, that norm, women off, yeah. they don't like. It. No, 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 not yeah. even like women off. It, it's it's men in that it's men in that uh, community too. So like, the, I've I've been into arguments yeah. with my friends who are like. Yeah, uh, things. Everything is manipulation. Everything is um like, is uh, there's a power dynamic. Uh, well, well, everything is everything. Is and it becomes there's also it's birth control water and the microplastics. According to Foucault, again, back in the '60s, like these are not new concepts. These aren't, and they're new, not new not concepts for yeah, girls I know in they're college. Not new. Uh, I agree. Like, they're not new, they're but they're we're, seeing we're seeing it. We're we're seeing it. We have the we have more data on it now. We're seeing it just happen even more, even stronger with these younger kids. We are seeing the younger kids going heavily split. 
They're oh heavily God. split. And the reason is because on the right, there's something that's offering to men. And on the left, there's something that's being offered to women. We're not offering the same thing to both on either side. The right needs to offer more things to women and the left needs to oh, offer more things to men. It could also be an educational men. divide oh, as okay. well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Why is it an educational divide? Yeah, I'm not saying it's only that, but generally. Because generally Gordon loves the idea that like lefties tend to be slightly in their IQ. No, I, um, I never said that. No, 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 no. I never said that at all. No, 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 no. We might know. We might. You make it obvious. We know. No. Okay, yeah, but we already discussed. We already discussed that. Like, uh, there is an aversion to uh, college uh, in conservative communities, right? Like, we already talked about this. I'm not that like conservatives don't have college degrees, but there's an aversion to it. Well, no, actually, no, that's not fair. The aversion is only if you're going into like something like a communications. But there's no aversion if you're going into like law, medicine, or engineering. No conservative will tell you don't go into these three these three things. No, no, no. If you're going to liberal arts, they're going to tell you no. There, no, conservatives don't want you to be those things. I'm they're, they're saying you can, but generally they're like entre- they go the entrepreneurship route. Like go get a trade, trade you know, school. blah blah blah. Like yeah, th- so you're saying that like yeah, no one's gonna say like we want doctors to be uneducated, but they're just kind of saying why do you want to be a doctor when you could just be like an entrepreneur that wears a suit? Well, I mean, you have well, to the majority of people maybe. will be. They'd have majority to be. It's only a minority of people who are gonna be able to be leftist. doctors and lawyers. Be a it's an even bigger minority of people that's gonna be like successful business owners. Well, I mean, it's a mi- yeah, I, it's a minority of people who are going to be successful, right? That's that's why we have the like we have the norm, we have the average. Uh, go ahead, uh, lactate. I'm going to say two facts. They're going to sound like memes, but they're actually true. Uh, testosterone is linked with conservative beliefs, right? If you give um, people generally right wing people generally have more testosterone. If you give Democrats testosterone, they will become more right wing. It appears to have a cause. Yeah, increases effect. aggression. Yeah. Well, hold sense. on, but there has been a decline in testosterone, uh, basically since like the late 80s there's been a continuous decline of testosterone. so we need hrt so, to make more so gen, gen z's do you have like pretty low testosterone uh versus like lefties, lefties are so much more aggressive than the right like relax yeah uh, okay no, there's wow a difference. amazing there's a difference. oh sure but they're more likely to commit crime right. i got studies on that too but i mean that, that's kind of beside the point uh, was that your google search no that one more actually likely to demand government action like they're more likely so shouldn't boomers be like leftists then since well, they, I just when you get say, older, you produce uh, less tea, right? on, 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 on Gibbs, hold on. Uh, back to, what's your second Well, no, point? so those are the two points, right? So, like, one of the questions is, like, okay, why is testosterone decreasing amongst uh, younger generations? I mean, I think a uh, part of the... Uh, part microplastics. Of, well, it could be microplastics. It could be, like, the birth control water, which everyone, like, gave shit to Alex Jones for saying. But there actually is a little bit of truth to that. Um, obesity is also a big cause of, of that as well. Like as yeah, obesity rates increase, life, so. you have reduced levels of testosterone. So um, I, I think all of this stuff could uh, be affecting uh, potential shifts in uh, political ideology, but it also could be affecting just the general disposition of uh, so, Generation Z when it comes to dealing with, uh, with gender were, dynamics specifically. Were, were you talking about uh, hormones in the water when you, you mentioned Alex, Alex Jones? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hormones, or, 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 hormones yeah. in the water, right? So so birth control. Yeah. yeah so birth control. No, he, when you pee it through, but also a lot of women will like throw away unused supplies that gets into the water supply and then it leaches yeah. into the water and it absolutely does. And then, that yeah, the people, the reason why people give Alex Jones shit is because he takes turn, a turn the that, frogs gay. Yeah. Yeah. Like You're turning like, the frogs gay. gay. He yeah. magnifies wherever it is. So yes, there is a kernel of truth, Don't, but we were, listen, you absolutely listen. should give shit to Alex Jones for the things he says. Fair. Well, fair. I mean, you absolutely, you absolutely should, but also it's super, super important that you do not censor people like Alex Jones because Alex Jones serves one of the most important aspects in a culture that can exist, which is the jester, right? A, 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 a culture, a society, a king needs a jester. You need someone that says ridiculous outlandish shit. Because one time out of 10, they're true and they are canaries in the coal mine for free speech, but also they are canaries in the coal mine because they search out the craziest things that no one else would believe, right? Like Alex Jones also was the one that proved that the CIA was involved and in intentionally putting um, federal agents at climate protests and making climate protests violent so that they could then crack down on those protests at like um, at some of the, the, this was the very, very beginning of like the Paris Accords, right? So this is way, some, most of you probably, some of you are not even old. Like 2000s? I can't Yeah, like early, mm. early 2000s. There's a, quite a few things Alex Jones has found and exaggerated and been hyperbolic about. But then we can look at those things when other people go, well, wait a minute. 
But anyways, I just wanted to interrupt with this tiny, tiny little tangent very quick. There was a prediction made about the black voter turnout, and I would like to make a prediction of my own. And you can tie whatever you want to this prediction. I'm not making any claims about the election process or corruption or anything like that. We, someone said, Bam, I believe you said, um, 92 percent plus, you know, turnout for Democrats in the next presidential election. I, I'm going to say, when you take out these counties, it will be 85 to 75 percent uh, Democrat, with 25 to 15 percent going Republican, with the exception of counties that will obviously go 98, 99, um, closer to 100 percent, and that'll be Fulton County, Georgia, um, Cook County, Illinois, Maricopa County, Arizona, uh, Allegheny County, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Clark County, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and those like counties will people? magically have <laughs> have the most magical, super, super, super left wing uh, only voting for democrat blacks and it won't follow the pattern of any of the other cities in the country sure um, but you just put out like eight million say people. crazy uh, uh, like it, it's, that's a weird like it would be one thing if that, that only but, accounted but for like it won't, be, uh, that, it won't be that in all the non-swing states okay it'll be well, 92 wait illinois is not a swing, swing state well, illinois was one of the states uh, you mentioned like why is it list illinois i, I did I, because he, of cook county um but if, if you know anything about anything, you'll know why. There's only 40 million black people in this okay. country. Yeah, if you cut out like 25% of them, it, it may lead to different, different possibility of results. What I'm saying is, is there will be a pattern in those specific places that do not exist in any other population centers in America. Hmm. It's it'll be a magical pattern. But I, I don't, I think you're pointing, I think you're pointing to the prediction about percentages. Yeah, I mean, there is, there's going to be some black people who live in places that other black people don't, but in like the major population hubs we have in this country. It's okay, you're not getting it. If you play it back, you'll get it. Okay. If, 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 Trump, if Trump gets a I'm minor boost in Georgia, the most that I can he's say on YouTube. Georgia. He's but saying then, the thing that he claimed he was doing. not saying. Is I, I just, I'm just saying that like the, the thing that the thing that gets the things that, that gets conservatives excited that ends up happening every time is like you hear some random guy, black dude, say something like about Trump that they think is cool. But the the quiet part they don't say out loud is you ask that person if they've ever voted before in their life and they say no and they don't understand the process of voting. That's not what I said. What I said. I'll be, yeah, I'm I know. Not, I didn't say what I said. I'm talking yeah, about something clear. different. He's talking about something no, different. I'll be very specific and very clear. Um, but but I don't understand why you're responding because it has nothing to do with what you just said. B oh, yeah, Bam, he's, he's saying that there's going to be some magical votes. I, that appear. Because you're not just no, 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 no. I'm not saying anything. What I'm saying is very simple. Just subtract the word "not" very with specific. his earlier right. statements. So when he said "I am but not listen, saying," listen. just change that to "I am <laughs> saying." I count and then I count I'm, I'm being that's... very specific, <laughs> and you're being very vague. I'm going to be very specific. I have an election prediction tonight about the presidential election, which is that when you take these specific counties out, that they will the rest of the country, including all of the other cities in the country, will go somewhere between 85 to 75 percent towards the Democrats and 25 to 15 percent towards the Republicans. And it will roughly average out, as Bam said, somewhere between 90 to 93 percent. And but in these specific counties, for some reason that I'm not naming, it will be 98 percent plus in Fulton County, Georgia, in Cook County, Illinois, in Maricopa County, Arizona, in Allegheny County, Pens Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and in Clark County, Nevada. And you make with that prediction that's definitely going to fucking come true, uh, whatever you want. Yeah. So. I want to say on that choice thing before we turn into well, before I turn into Alex Jones. Um, I I think that there could be a there could be a way to like actually assist with everything that I said. And it's grocery stores are the problem. If we required people to start hunting more for their food, uh, testosterone uh, would shoot through the roof, and we would eliminate these people you that hunting will increase testosterone. I will because the people that don't have testosterone meat? smoking yeah, also because, increases testosterone. Yeah, yeah, well, well right? here's the thing: is the people that can't yeah. hunt are going to starve to death. Just give them testosterone. And, uh, yeah, well, right? yeah. So the people that can't hunt will starve to death, and those are the weak, thinly livered, uh, low testosterone. People. Why not just give them to? If, if you want to increase testosterone? Why not? But, testosterone? Wait, 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 prime, on. prime. This is actually or, like a really interesting argument because, like, we currently put fluoride in the water, and I. I've asked, like, what if we could put testosterone on the water and, like, it led the Republicans winning every election? Uh, would mm -hmm. I do it? It's a tough, it's tough. It'd be you know, super damaging to women. You should yeah. support HRT. Uh, they yeah, can buy bottled water, have, okay? Have beards. All your tans. women would have beards, and then you, you'd be well, a little upset about that. As for the other thing, as for the other oh, thing, I would the baby, I'll, I'll, Alex Jones, would be a lot more fucking. 
I, as for, for the Alex I'm Jones meme people. that we were making, since I look like Alex Jones, I'll just go ahead and say it. There's going to be some funny business with some votes appearing, specifically mail-in ballots, especially in these areas where it's allowed, uh, that well, all these votes are suddenly going to go 98% Biden in these areas. I'll say that. I'll say the thing that he's not saying. That's yeah, that's the conspiracy that he's got going. I'm not saying yeah. major I'm not saying anything on areas YouTube and Twitch right? are overwhelmingly... That's my prediction about certain. Okay, 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 we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. Uh, so, yeah. uh, Bam, you want to do something? Prime, would you no, be in I was favor just of saying the major. Like, would you be in favor of spiking the water with testosterone? I I wouldn't know, um, especially if it's a mood altering uh, 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 chemical, right? Then no, I absolutely don't want to. What if it's good for health overall? What if what, so? I've, I also have a study where if you give people with uh, like like. Uh, Neurotic symptoms like anxiety, if you give them testosterone, it reduces those symptoms. Do you agree with it now? What about just what about just prime energy drinks? So we know because since we know no fucking women are drinking that shit. Yeah. Right. Uh, first, and first you're controlling for the lowest T people too. On top of first, that. First of all, lack Brian, exactly, you ever seen these? I'm watching all these fucking yeah, stupid ass. Do, do you think you can absorb yeah. testosterone through the water? If you drink water spiked with testosterone, I would assume so. Well, don't like don't tell me. Shut up about this. Don't wait. You're telling yeah, yeah. me if I drink something like spiked testosterone, it's gonna have no effect. What if we hold on? What if we require like an injection? Like the interject and respond. So, do you think if you drink insulin, you'll get insulin in your blood? Yeah. Hold on a second. No. Let me read it. Yes. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, so wait. 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 So wait. So if you can't drink, if you can't drink testosterone, a little bit, a little bit testosterone in prime drinks. Well, let me ask this. Like you cannot. Get the concept. Of so what okay, I'm so what we can't we can't spike the water then. How do we do this? Well, hold on. The okay, vaccine. Wait, geez, it's, it's, that's what I'm just saying. We already required people to take the vaccine. COVID round two, baby. So why, yeah, why don't Why don't we, we just require? Why don't? Low TV yeah. Price. Well, so yeah. Why, what if we could prove? Okay, like he said, it's going to reduce anxiety. It's going to reduce mental illness across the nation. And they said, okay, now you have to have your testosterone booster once a year. Would you then be in favor of that? A male uh, male tea once a day, not once a year. I'm not. Well, well, how how would you guys? <laughs> But apparently, think. oral testosterone does seem to be a thing. So I'm curious what Corey was gonna go with. The that. bioavailability is, uh, if you want to get into a bioavailability in terms of, you're gonna have to drink mm. mountains and mountains of uh, water. Oh, spike I, testosterone. I am down, sir. We can put as much as you want in there, okay? You're just gonna have the lecturer's gonna have jugs it, of testosterone. He's just gonna splurge it into his. Oh man! Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, so okay. Oh, God, I don't know. And we just altered into men. We're gonna have a bunch of bald fucking chads, bro. You can make, make testosterone yeah, like Gatorade, like Gatorade pods, and then it'd be a Gatorade pod plus tea, and then you could just add it to your Gatorade. Everyone's gonna saying, be bald. Think, Everyone's gonna I'm be not, fucking. I'm not in favor. So everybody's gonna no? be fucking. Um, that's for sure. What about estrogen? I mean, if you're asking me, I'm not in favor in the, of the like requiring all of like hair mood altering. Of mood, like injecting you with mood altering drugs, like I'm not gonna do that. For well, fluoride is a mood altering drug. Even if it was, even if, if instead of uh, like putting estrogen uh, in people, we're doing uh, that right with, now with the birth control. Oh, yeah, fluoride, fluoride. Oh, fluoride. Oh, fluoride. Oh, this is just to counteract that, right? We're just trying to counteract Hold all on. the progesterone that's in the water supply. I'm not Hold sure on. if biology works the way that you think it does. Um, <laughs> do you have a doctorate in biology? Real quick, real quick. Yeah, do you have a doctorate, Brian? Real quick. Real quick. I, I know. We got Hold some on. doctors in this panel. Meaning, I can I can get okay, one on. in like meaning, ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Meaning aside, right? Me meaning aside. Right? Yeah. And I know we're kind of having a laugh about spiking the water with testosterone and stuff, right? But it is a, a, a very grave concern is the dropping testosterone levels and fertility in Gen Z. If you remember, if I don't, again, this might just be Admiral Gibbs, me and I, Cal Rich, that remember this. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if you remember Aaron Brockovich oh, and man. her and, and how much she fought against corporations poisoning people with cancer. The biggest thing that she is concerned about currently is dropping testosterone and dropping fertility amongst men. We already have research that is showing. Yeah, like that's a real problem. 2050, mm. that by 2050, the fertility rates are going to be, I, I'm not going to say non-existent, but they're going to get to a point where population replacement is going to be very, very difficult. That's how, that's how dangerous that's going to be if we don't have some form of intervention. Now, that intervention can be getting rid of the things that are causing this problem, such as microplastics, is, is one, like, and there's plenty of research. That's, that's not controversial. How much 
how much that's impacting and what percentage of the dropping tea is what is to be discussed. Not does microplastics, are we getting microplastics? Are we getting them in an exponentially larger rate? All the more reason to go plant-based, but okay. we keep consuming your but seafood. The science of that soy products. also reduces I think it will work out. Right? I think it would actually work out oh, like no, it counterproductive because it doesn't. Something needs to be done. About but, about dropping tea levels. It's I think the, just like doesn't COVID, the increase of the testosterone levels. Like, doesn't that end up um, decreasing the sperm count though? Mm -hmm. Counterproductive. Like, so you no, might be having no, sex, but it's but, actually going to lead to less kids. No, no, no. Your testosterone is an incredible. If you have low testosterone, right? So when this is an important thing to understand is that getting additional testosterone has different effects when you have different testosterone levels right so you know one of the one of the hallmark early pieces of research that was discussing giving individuals testosterone treatment was actually towards people that had medical conditions where they basically had zero testosterone at all and what they found is that there wasn't any positive benefit and it increased prostate cancer risk and what it turns out is is actually if you have low testosterone and you get testosterone injections you actually reduce your prostate cancer risk but it depends on where your t levels are and so when you have low t what you are dealing with is fatigue joint pain um lack of libido low sperm count increased storage of fat um increased swelling increased cancer risk like basically every type of fucking medical issue that you can think of is exacerbated by having low testosterone and our entire society is at a point where 25 year old men are are getting their t levels checked and they have less than their great grandparents who are still alive like World War II vets are walking around with more T, higher T levels. We're the greatest generation. Young men, it's it's really bad and really dangerous for our overall health and for the health of culture and society. Because, but it, but that's true for everything. Like, it's just, you're just saying it needs to be balanced. Because if, if it, but because again, high T levels are also have to have, have create almost all of those same problems in others. Like, it's just about you're supposed I, to have healthy yes, balance. Like if you have too much testosterone, yeah, like obviously you're gonna. Have if you're if you're fucking taking if you're doing a trend cycle and your T levels are through the roof, yeah, there's well, medical so issues. I wanted to ask Corey about this because uh Corey, so we were talking y'all were just talking though. about the trend cycle, right? So say you were taking like oral winstrol, winstrol but like pellets, right? And it takes like what four weeks to build up the like strozable or whatever. I don't know, I'm not a steroid guy, but why would that oh, work and like I mean, I've never done steroids, but like, uh, like I was, I listen, I, they wouldn't have worked for what well, I was you, doing. I was, you would all the, I was, the, the ecstasy uh, and all that other stuff, but, but, uh, yeah, I'll do, I, well, too far. no, no, I didn't say that. I just, uh, never, uh, had Mental the enhancement, I, never not physical I, enhancement. I, I, I never needed to do that because, uh, I was at the time I was just doing a fuck ton of cardio and I was staying tiny. Fair enough. But now if I had been, you know, trying to compete at a higher level, yeah, I probably would have done it. Can but, we get a photo of, of, of prime Gibbs? Yeah, sure. You want to see? I got one right we, here. We, I, need, I, need, I, want, I feel like Corey's has Corey seen this? Corey, I feel like Corey needs the proof. Yeah, I'll post. A, I'll post some good ones. But um, yeah, yeah it doesn't. Uh, uh, so my, my question was was how why does that work? Like if you take oral like wind straw or something as opposed to like taking like oral uh like testosterone. testosterone. Yeah, like I mean just yeah. that because I mean because obviously I'm not a scientist and yeah. I'll upload some photos while we're uh, you're a so, doctor. Oh. No, yeah, yeah, well I I'm, doctor. Doctor. I'm an academic oh. doctor. You know. <laughs> True. Uh, so uh, obviously, as the term implies, like Winstrol is a different compound. So you cannot take testosterone, the actual like molecular structure of testosterone orally or it's low bioavailability because you have a liver and there's called the first pass effect in terms of it'll get modified and inactivated uh, due to basically your liver uh, where pretty much things when you eat things, OK, they're metabolized in various ways. And one of them is like that first pass effect. And so Winstrol uh that will be like it can bypass or like you can modify a compound such that like once you you uh consume it uh it will act like testosterone so winstrol is not testosterone but you can mimic the effects and this is the whole uh this is all uh concept behind sarms uh selective androgen receptor uh modulators where it's like yeah you can uh testosterone is a specific molecule with a specific chemical formula and molecular structure you can mimic those effects just as you can mimic the effects of many opioids through heroin through morphine uh through oxycodone etc etc it's all a matter of going to bind your your uh androgen receptors that's it so there is a way to spike the water is what you're saying there there is so the, yes there is a way to stimulate your androgen receptors orally yes that but i'm nice. taking yeah you know as a scientist i'm going to dispute your claim of testosterone in the water yes i'm, I'm going to put you in charge I'm of the, all of the whole for oral uh, stimulation just so we're clear okay um uh and first of all let's, let's acknowledge that prime gibbs looks amazing like uh he's a very handsome guy um mm -hmm. very manly very manly very manly um very tiny. <laughs> very tiny um 
interesting uh but uh all right so uh this has gone in oh, good directions. for you prime good uh, for you gibbs yeah for low uh for your low t i i'm fine with like having some sort of therapeutic um uh response to that that's different from like mass spiking the water like i should be very clear all right like i don't <laughs> like, i don't know or like let's I, yeah, we can, we can acknowledge. Like just what, wants about, to what about Ozempic? Can yeah. we spike the make water it, with Ozempic? Him. Bring down the obesity. That where's the negatives there? Now we're thinking. Oh, yeah, at the very oh. least, make testosterone more available, right? Uh, maybe like yeah. a federal grant, right? We can just like really get our men full of testosterone. Isn't it? Che- isn't it cheap? It's, it's, I thought, it's, I thought, it's, I thought it was like relatively like cheap. Voting ability, right? Isn't TRT relatively cheap? Or is it? Am I wrong about that? No, no idea. Never Probably depends started. on the clinic, I assume. And... Yeah, the, I, I'm, I'm, one of my most conservative points is I honestly think we do. I think we have too much behind prescriptions. I think the more stuff should be available over the counter. Um, nice. Just the idea of like just going to be able to pick up some stuff just because. Yep. Like blue chew, right? You're going to get resistance what from mean, the right on making hormones more available, especially over the counter. Right. Like, I think that's going to. Be a non well, it'd be for with age, a lot of people, right? right? And also we, 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 other we, illicit drugs. They don't tend tw- to be. Tw- 21 and older if you just want to go shopping at the pharmacy. Uh, yeah, super easy to send your friend in there and, you know, to buy tea for you and then just give it to no, you. I think just on a waiver. Which they're already doing that. Like, like I mean, like, sure, like, it would be saying the quiet part out loud, but, like, Keffel's literally fucking I was famous j- for fucking... <laughs> For 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 using that her Discord tub. server to 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 get hormones mm-hmm. to kids against their parents' will, but like you know, Destiny says Wait, something what? slightly off about trans people, and we gotta fucking get rid of them. Like, but I mean, like it's it's already a thing. Like it, it, like you look at studies from Italy. This was involving minors. Not everybody in Italy is going to Spain in a quick train ride to go buy it over the counter, anyways. Like it's well, that's what I mean. Like that's what I mean. Or, why would they do like, that if it was easy there. to get without it being available over the counter? Then why would they be taking trains to a country where it is available over the counter? Right? Because Obviously, it's a fucking drive. Right. That means it's let. It that is means easy. It, right. Right. I mean, that, but that's making my are. point is yeah. that if you make it available over the counter, then it's going to be more readily available. If it were just as readily available without doing that, then nobody would feel the need to be going to Spain. So point. actually, that's interesting. You say that is it? Is it? There's I some evidence both the over-the-counter position and how people are willing to ride a train. Well, and the position that people are already have a black market for it. Well, so both isn't there? Yeah, but so, the black market is way more difficult to deal with than just. No, well, just hold getting, on, I go. Hold on. Isn't there some no, evidence that gets that? Quick, real quick. No, no, no. Real quick. Um, with there's like drugs, alcohol. Principle, there's a there's a basic principle in economic theory, right? When term when talking about regulating the price of a good or Mm -hmm. regulating the good out of the market in terms of legality and that is is how elastic is the good it almost it never matters what you do to gas because people need gas factories need gas boats need gas like literally the whole world runs on gasoline right so Mm -hmm. when gas prices go up the amount of gas that's purchased stays almost relatively the same okay the same is going to be true for people that have convinced themselves that they need hormone replacement therapy and the availability of of those hormones if you are psychologically convinced that you're going to fucking kill yourself or that like your life is going to be over if you don't get this thing you're going to fucking get it it doesn't matter what laws are there so you might as well put it in you might as well put it in places where it can be meaningfully regulated if you believe in that anyways like i don't think it's going to be that hard well i mean it's it's meaningfully regulated now for people 21 like, like there was, I don't know, I forgot, there was that activist that, that, that uh, Shapiro's sister got obsessed with for a while because uh, they were saying something sort of online about how if you have any extra pills left over, like, donate them to me and then I'll have make sure that they go to kids or whatever. Uh, right. And uh, also, for the record, nobody gives a fuck about trans women, uh, trans men, right? Like conservatives, like they just like lesbians, they basically don't exist in the conversation. Yep. They only give a fuck about male to females because those are the people that are in sports. Those are the people that are in women's bathrooms. Those are the people that are in women's spaces. And those are the people that make them sexually frustrated when they find out they're beating off to them on fucking Pornhub in the middle of the night. Nobody yeah, gives a fuck. About a lot of parents, a lot of parents uh, have some strong reactions kids. to their daughters becoming men. Yeah. Yeah. They don't yeah, want they care about, they care about, they care about it for kids. kids yeah. But again, well, yeah. in the general so, society. But, but, hold on. 
but is it? Hold on. Before we move on, isn't there some evidence to support mm -hmm. like with alcohol? I, I feel like I, I don't have the study in front of me, and uh, but I feel like I've read several times. Like for example, they've lowered the drinking age in some countries, and it's actually reduced uh, minors buying alcohol in yeah. uh, in yeah. larger quantities because it's rid of the cool factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So isn't there some evidence against like kind of what y'all are saying? Like oh well, they're just gonna go drive somewhere else and get like I I, I don't know like. Uh, Again, it's because I mean, it's, it's because exactly. there's a black market that people are going to the black. Like if if you legalize drugs, people will probably do less drugs. I don't know if that's uh, necessarily true. Because, I don't think that, you're dealing, think that you're dealing with like a chemical uh, a, a chemical addictive element there. Like that's different from like it's, just social factors. HRT HRT drugs, right? Like and you know like estradiol or like you, you, know, you don't just try crack wrong, once. Like, <laughs> androgen therapy, like you know puberty blockers, things like this. They are a highly elastic good. It's not quite the same as alcohol for kids because alcohol for kids is cool and they might try it or they might not try it. But if you're convinced that you're trans, you're going to fucking find a way to get your shit. They, they, they I just, I just don't see the right getting behind this. I just, I think, I think right now they're very anti HRT and no matter like, you know, what sort of logical positions you want to put forward in front of them, they're just, yeah, no, if, I, if for nothing else, if for no other reason, just the ick factor is going to have them like oppose this men, kind of availability. Men being able to get their testosterone, they will fucking, they'll fucking. Smoke. Yeah, men on T, yeah, for sure. No, I just um, think that like, I, I'm when I say that, I don't even mean like it has to be in the aisle at Dollar General. I just meant like, if you want like, crap, what's the, what's the big ADHD man? Sure Adderall. Adderall. Adderall? Yeah, if you want Adderall, <laughs> I think it would be cool if you could just like, Talk to go buy Addies. Go, go talk to the actual pharmacist. Pharmacist, they like check off a box saying they like uh, you know like oh this should last you thirty days. Well, and so check you off and you can't get another refill. We barely like, got no, hearing well, aids well, over the so, counter, and it took decades. So here's how the Adderall finally works do that. Over the it just happened really. this year. There, there, there is a black market for hearing aids. Doesn't mean you can buy like like yeah. thirty yeah. bottles. Well, hold on. So well, here's the thing with the Adderall, though, right? It's really easy to get prescribed it, right? Like depending on where you go. Uh, and, and now just last year, a law got repealed. Um, or not repealed, or like ran out, or the time went on the act, or something, and so it's even easier now uh, than it was like uh, six months ago uh, to get the Adderall uh, because used to you have to go and do checkups, and then you have to like go in every month. But so the the way is they can prescribe your pharmacy up to three months, whatever you're prescribed your supply, and say like I need, like say I lost my script somewhere, right, and I just like lost it on vacation. Uh, they can give you like the doctor can call in and give them an emergency supply, but it's up to like five or seven days I, I don't remember i haven't lost my script in like years but like uh you can give like only like five or seven days since it's a controlled substance and so you're like they're really pretty strict at the pharmacy like uh it, with going and they'll even be like oh you got it on this date even though your date say i picked it up uh today right the eighth and my prescription said the fifth and so, like, next month's prescription comes in the 4th, because, like, you know how, like, months work one day. Right? They would be like, no, you can't pick it up till the 7th because you picked it up on this date. So, yeah, even though there is a pretty large black market, I guess the, the way they're getting around that with the black market is these people, like, on the moment, like, the local level, is they're, like, just over-prescribing people, and then people are reselling it. But even then, like, there's a maximum to that that they can do. They're not going in there and getting, like... Oh, I got four strips of 30, 30 10 milligrams and 30 30s. I got three of those. They're like, they, like you can only pick them up right. once a month. It, it really Before. depends how plugged in yeah. you are with your with your psych or with your doctor or whatever. It I is. Mean, like, you, can get, they, you can get they, crazy they, prescriptions. They, they, yeah, sure. I mean, they get me pretty much as close as to the max so, amount you can get. Yeah. And like, even then, they like still like have pretty high restrictions. Yeah. So, so I don't know. All, but, but Bam, it sounds like what he's saying is that like, um, it's not well. At least from your last statement, it sounds like you're you're not necessarily. It should be um, uh, not over. It it should be over the counter, right? But not with a prescription. That yeah. like you go to the pharmacist and you talk to them and say like, well, this should last you this long and, and give you this. You get flagged if you go to other pharmacies and try to pick up the same prescription that day type shit. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, or the same know. amount. That or just like yeah, just letting giving people because well, I I think like that, they like, do a Sudafed. It's well, always so just we, difficult to get off. Like yeah, people don't have insurance. health insurance half the time. You know, maybe they have copays. Maybe like they, they can't take off time to go to work to like go to like multiple doctors visits. And I know that that's like it, it's not a high barrier of entry, but just for certain things like right. I don't agree. it doesn't mean that everything should be over the counter. But certain things you would be like, oh, okay, this is kind of this is a kind of intense. But like we'll let you try it out for yourself. You know, you. I think Sudafed's are yeah, great. Everything uh, should example. be over the counter. I think I think it would be too expensive. No to, you you, you wouldn't anything not be over the counter. Yeah. 
you don't even really have to put like a limit on how much people buy. It'd be way too expensive for like the norm to just buy out, and the pre- people who can like buy out bottles of alcohol and buy out bottles would well, just be should be able to Black buy out Joy, bottles of alcohol. Agree with that? Yeah, everything should be over the counter. I can think of and that, like two to five. <laughs> I can think of one example of something that I might be uncomfortable with being over the counter, and that's going to be right. antibiotics, um, like like heart like penicillin and stuff, because we already have an issue of like antibiotic resistant bacteria, and because mm-hmm. we're overusing it. I can imagine what mm-hmm. would happen if, like, anybody could just go into the pharmacy and grab it for whatever purpose and just start using it. Well, so yeah. when th- when I say everything should be available over the counter, right? What I'm saying is there shouldn't be a government regulation to stop you from being able to purchase whatever it is that you want. That doesn't mean that pharmacies have to sell something uh, that they think might be immoral or that they think be up to their discretion. Or that there can't be other ways of. Of, of dealing with those situations okay right? so then uh, I mean, like, that answers the question i was gonna ask you then so basically so the, the only uh reason why i think it's fine to have these regulations is because some of these chemicals are quite dangerous especially in combination of other chemicals right that's what the whole mm-hmm. thing about pharmacology that's the whole <clears throat> but you're saying that uh even within your society you would have like pharmacologists who can like uh like as a matter of maybe protecting themselves from suit or something, right? Um, uh, you would hire a pharmacologist and they would check to see if this will interact badly with other medications. It's just that the government wouldn't be mandated. Well, like, they'd act the way so bartenders like, are supposed like, to act, have, where they can't have, over like you know pour have, drinks. We and have, have cut up. So so so, 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 so supposed have, to. Okay, um, so we have currently the 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 major regulatory agency that handles whether or not drugs are safe is the FDA. I mean, the FDA had, you know, basically gave a, a blank check to Purdue to start the opioid epidemic. This is the same people that worked with Big Pharma during the COVID pandemic. Let's set that portion aside for YouTube reasons and political expediency, right? This is the same people that made it so that it was nigh impossible to get vitamins um, during the AIDS epidemic because they knew that blacks, gays, and heroin addicts were the only ones dying. Um, so they just made sure that they gave carp, you know, that they gave all the authority to AZT in extremely high doses so we can just kill off the gays who gives a fuck. Um, and this is the same company that has supported companies like Bayer when they intentionally infected people in Africa with AIDS by sending them tainted, um, um, tainted uh, drugs that they knew they couldn't sell in America. And this is the same company that 25% of all drugs that they approve are recalled. It, they, have, they have the worst fucking track record of actually being safe of like that you could possibly fucking imagine and then people are like well what if it was private we need this company that literally has helped poison americans like every 20 years with like the worst shit imaginable and it's like if you i would much rather have a private market where you go to the doctor and you say hey doctor what do i need and the doctor says hey i trust this company i trust their drugs this is who i use they give me really good information and i pay for that information and i'm an expert in these things this is what i think is best for you and your health as opposed to some government agency working with big pharma where it's illegal for me to buy fucking baby formula in europe when there's a baby formula shortage and the biden administration has to send a fucking airplane over to sweden to get nestle shitty baby formula back to us because it's illegal to buy baby formula that's better for us I, yeah, fuck. I, what, so I have, uh, I have, I have, I have pushed back uh, on on that. Like, I, 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 and I'd like to talk to you about that, but later, because I don't want to go down that whole rabbit <laughs> hole. Um, but, um, and it's only slight pushback. I think maybe we could probably like uh, work through it. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, I also got hot takes I, on baby formula. I just really the hate way, the that's FDA. That's a different thing. <laughs> a spike with testosterone. It's primarily a scam, but we can talk about that later. I would like to talk about that. Yeah. Um, so I went to. Uh, I have a, uh, a slight topic. I'm not topic. sure. If, I'm not sure if this uh, crowd will uh, glam onto this. I'm curious if you will or not. Um, but I've uh, been part of a group discussion, and uh, among my friends, something we've been talking about is the word female, and um, uh, whether the use of the word female is uh, sexist. Right, there are a lot of uh, women uh, who say that, like, uh, like don't refer to me as a female, like you refer to me as a woman, right? Um, and uh, there's a lot of pushback within my friend group about this, and I'm curious on like what your thoughts. Like, is this like 
a nothing burger or like should we you know refer to people as how they should be referred to is there um is there even if it's you think that it's not misogynist right like do you think do you think the word is neutral um or like can there ha be connotations attached to it um uh, that are negative yeah uh, well, the word the word became mandatory for like because it's men that are going to be using it and especially with nowadays with like what is a woman yeah guys are just female like the, the, we're, we're, we're they're being direct you know yeah. i feel like it could it, i feel like i feel like it used to it, i feel like it was uh i heard this like Boy, two years ago where where people were using female and they're like well we're not science experiments we're not fucking lab rats don't refer to us as females well fine but now the word woman's been stripped from us to an extent like people are we're, argue, we're arguing over that word we are people are arguing over it unfortunately you can disagree but they are and so nowadays when someone says woman right it's like well that's kind of ambiguous so female is like just a direct term it's not yeah. just that like no it's been weird to say woman for a long time in kind of a casual context like you know hey man that's normal hey woman yeah woman hey, has hey, always woman. been like the sexist hey, word female. Like, does not sound right <laughs> that's, 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 that's doesn't doesn't work either haven't you always heard the joke ring to it haven't but, you heard but, but hey lady hey lady is better well, I, I just, that's because lady's a noun I don't know. Maybe I just think that, like, because I, I feel like a lot of people are going to disagree. Well, I'm me making an affirmative case for it. Is, woman is a noun. But you yes, can't say, hey, woman, that doesn't sound girl. good. Well, girl. Woman is hey, just, woman. whoa, man, yeah. whoa, man, you be so wild. What I'm just what, saying the thing is, female we, we is, is an adjective, right? So it, it would be as if I were to refer to prime as a black. Like, um, it, there was a time in our history when we did that, right? But it's the fact. But black is an adjective. It's not a. It's not a noun, right? Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. A... Same thing with male or female. <laughs> it's right? so hard when you said it. I, know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, men aren't offended. That's the South males, African males, men, men aren't offended if you call them male. They're but, not going. But to we be don't call them males. males. Like uh, that's that's because we're not arguing. When because I hear we don't have an male. argument over what a man is, we don't when argue. When I hear the word male, so we do. We have trans men just like as trans women. Police officers. I mean, to the point where. A white male suspect, you know, age 35 or whatever. Mm. It, by the way, you can say male suspect because male is an adjective. You're describing uh, the it's sex a, of the suspect. A list of adjectives, yeah. For yeah. Sure. Um, like, in, in, but you like, don't know the sex of the person until you catch them and you check their sex. Otherwise, you're just, you know, assuming their sex. The, the, the uh, term is yeah. fine in, like, biological and, like, professional senses. But that's not what we're, we're talking about. We're talking about yeah. people using the word in common parlance. Mm -hmm. And I also push back against the idea that, like, men are, are like having to deal in the specifics related to trans people the majority of people don't like the majority of people don't think of, consider trans people in their day-to-day -day, day life they don't say like oh you know like oh this is it's some girls over there some women like wait a minute let me be specific there's females I, i'm here. gonna go ahead and argue that this female mm -hmm. thing is coming from the left the, the what women on the left are the ones arguing that they don't like the word female and so women on and the, so men on the left or even men that are talking to women on the left yeah they're going to use the word female because on the left the trans ideology is what's big and popular so the woman argument's happening more there than it is well, on the right i don't no. i don't i don't know if it's necessarily even just that right I like i feel like there's a right. there's like a couple layers of this right i think that what y'all are saying is true with the ideology thing but it's the same thing as like so like certain women and certain groups of women have trigger words right so if i was to say oh these bitches over here i have several groups of friends where they're like oh no problem Right, but if I call like my homegirl Misha a bitch, she's gonna stab me. Now, same group, two groups of women. If I call one of them a cunt, uh, that the one group of women pissed. The other groups of women, I called Misha a cunt, she wouldn't give a shit. But if I called like my friend Destiny a cunt, she's gonna stab me. Right, same. Then they're alternate. And then same mm -hmm. thing with the women thing. If I say women, she's like, "Why you call me woman?" You know, like you coming at me. But I'm like, "Oh, these females over here." She's like, "Yeah, these females over here acting up." Ha 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 ha. So I don't know that it's necessarily even uh like. Uh, the, the like the ideology thing, but I think it depends on whatever their specific nuance. triggers, nuance triggers are like to it. And I think we're getting to a point where like almost any word that's a descriptive word for a person is becoming a problem. Like for if a I woman. was. Yeah, I mean, for anybody, really. Like, earlier we were talking about, like, when we started this panel, we were talking about, like, uh, what's the definition of masculinity? And, like, uh, Scott was talking about chopping up liver and uh, eating it. And, and Lactoid was talking about hunting well, the people that's stuff and eating the liver. Yeah, and talking about the liver, hunting the liver uh, from the animal, you know, kind of thing, as, as always I was. And if I was to say, you were a liver eater, you know, wow. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're sitting there excluding all these other people, and it's an issue. And, like, and so, like, you well, can't almost use any descriptor now without I, people getting mad. I like, think... 
yeah. Like, yeah, uh, like it's, 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 to be fair, to be fair, women in words has always been a thing, right? So it's like that for the long longest time, it was like, well, the word bitch, right? It's such it's this but derogatory it's not just term. Women, but though, but there's point. no term. I'm, well, I'm saying there's really no terms and no things that you're calling men where they're like so staunchly offended by words don't really affect men the same way that like they're sure. apparently like, affecting women. Okay, when you're calling it super isn't true. No, like, and maybe and maybe they maybe it depends on the group. Like I'll speak like historically with black people, like. Uh, even with men, like even if it's uh, grammatically correct, black people don't be like don't like being called boy. Like it, it's something yeah, I don't know. It's something exactly. born into it. You call you call us boy. We feel offended by it. And but that's more due to racism this, like, than it is due to like your like male female. It's that's more because it's racist so than it me, is because you're a male. Me, bring up sexism with what, language. Let me change it. Well, but so it's, me, it's both. It's not just so, it's it, it, so it's a combination. If there was no racist undertone, I don't think any black people would or any black so, men would be so, oh, so would uh, care or with the boy. But the, because there's a racist undertone, that's the issue. Yes. Y'all hate so, Foghorn so Leghorn. So, so, so here's the thing, right? Um, uh, I don't know. Has anybody else here been in the military? Is it just me, or is there anyone else in? The, okay. So when you're in the military, calling females female is super common. Um, it's it's something everybody says. Um, especially specifically if someone is lower rank than you. Um, or if someone less so lower rank, but like they're in, you're in some level or position of authority of them um, in military culture. And so it is something that I and many veterans have had to transition out of when we went back into the civilian world. Because when you go back into the civilian world, you start calling people, you go, hey, female. And people go, the fuck did you just say to me? And like, but you're used to it being normal. And so it is absolutely true that it is culturally dependent and context dependent, but more so I would say it's culturally dependent. And what I think we're seeing is that with gender ideology, with critical theory, with TERFs, right, um, that are, that are, that are uh, gender critical, right, there has going to be a shift in our culture. And so when you see a shift in our culture, you're going to see a shift in our language and how we use it. It's just natural. That doesn't necessarily mean that that person's intending to be offensive. And that person actually may be intending to be offensive, right? It could be some weirdo that's trying to use female because they can't just have a normal fucking conversation at the workplace, right? Because they can't just call Sharon Sharon, but because Sharon's, you know, like, uh, you know, Sharon's, you know, Chris now, they have to be like female, like, like it could absolutely be derogatory to be calling like a trans man female, like to highlight their, their sex, their sex characteristics here. Um, but I do think what you are seeing is very common to like, we see this in the black community or well, not so black language towards blacks, right? You know, it, it was, it used to be appropriate to call, call black people colored. That's what you were supposed to call black people. And then that became offensive. So you're supposed to call them. Well, hold on. American, the NAACP right? And that racist. became offensive. No, they're not racist. They're just, just because they haven't changed the fucking name. Like it was. It's, retard it's is another term. That's right? like become offensive. Right. Well, yeah. Retard. It used to be. Well, that's when that sort of slid back moral. out of offensiveness again. Mm -hmm. Now it's right, okay so again. Black, black, right? Black is 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 how people prefer. And of course, with critical race theory and journalism adopting critical race theory, we are seeing that black now has to be capitalized, or it's offensive if you have like a lowercase black in a lot of things. So language changes um, all the fucking time. I mean, Shakespeare essentially invented our modern English system from Middle English by inventing like eighteen thousand fucking words, right? I mean. And so I think I think people are probably making much to do about nothing here. Um, and, and, and if it seems like it's used in a way to target trans men, then like, yeah, that's I would say that's probably an issue. Um, I mean, they have a right to their speech, obviously, but they're probably doing it to be an asshole. But if but if it's but if it seems like it's happening organically and it seems offensive, that is likely just the cultural landscape and how we talk about identity and gender changing. And that's something that's just naturally occurring. And it feels weird, especially if you're not in the demographic cohort that the language is changing in. Well, I think the bigger reason, I think the two target biggest target reasons is offensive. Well, I, I want to hear from Bam, um, yeah. and then I'll hear from Lactoid and Iko. Yeah, I would say I think the two biggest reasons it's offensive in, in common problems is, is one, it feels, it feels like it feels non specific to the humanity. Like, because female can apply to anything. That's that's uh, the one reason. And two, in practice of how people typically use the word, if someone starts a, a phrase with female, I don't even think it's actually coming at, at trans people. I think it's followed up by some generalization, some like sexist generalization about women. So it's like, oh, yeah, females be crying all the time. Or like, you've got that female brain. That's a different context. Uh, no, but I'm, I'm saying that like. Discussing females. 
We're talking about just specific individual, like, hey, female or that female over there. Yeah, well, I think I think, I think saying that I think the saying the prime the individual thing I think that's crazy. But I'm saying I think most people don't use it individualized. I think people use people they use, use it colloquially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no. Well, yeah, no, nobody's offended except for crazy, insane queer theorists and that people use the word female at all. That's not true. We're talking about the concept. We're talking about the concept of when you're talking about a person that's right there. When you're replacing this or that. Right. I don't Very think that's what Tom was bringing. No, the, I think you're saying the term that. female in general being used so commonly in like instead of woman. Like people are just referring to females as females. And I think so that's if, that, if you're offended by that, you're fucking psycho. That's what's that, I, that's nut that's nuts. the discussion that's if, be, that's being if, happening. Yeah. If, if, if 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 we recognize that in California, forty percent of Gen Z are identifying as either trans or non-binary, and, and so literally almost a majority of fucking Gen Z at this point, closely will will no longer identify as man or woman, and we're using female or male because it's literally impossible to. No, we're not. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about like. I'm not talking about politically or. You're like, saying socially derogatorily like socially accurate. you know yeah, females can't about, drive yeah, yeah exactly females can't drive. Use that with anything but but you that but the, yeah, that's that, dumb. that that's like that, that's say, all it was it doesn't matter yeah it just, but i'm saying that that's why people matters. are generally offended because it's usually followed up by something offensive i think if yeah. the word if the, i think if historically the word was used in like a positive light this like this conversation wouldn't have strummed up but you people people now when women hear the word female they yeah. it's trying to trigger something it's like it's going to be followed up by something sexy. females are told to bitches bitches and females is basically synonymous at this point but then once yeah. again to my to my point like people are just using the word it was what? women can't drive bitches can't yeah. drive females can't drive it's just they're I just think, using a different word and i think it really is like i think they're they're driving home that point of like what I, I, nowadays i think maybe yeah they are being offensive but i think we are really driving in the point of like okay cool we can't if, use the word woman anymore female if, if you are correct man, but they're not conceding correct, that it, hold on if if you are correct in in hmm? your approximation which which I'm, I'm willing to entertain this if you are correct in your approximation that there is a triggering aspect to the to the female who hears the term female because there is a certain cohort of like internet bros or people um, or a certain pattern that they recognize where they hear the word female and it's either preceded or followed by something offensive about that category, then it's not the word that is an issue at all anyways, because people would, 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 would use woman or girls in lieu of that anyways. It just happens to be that that's more common. And so if that's being associated in that way, what we're really discussing is females being offended by the very by the very idea of being spoken about or targeted as a cohort that is different and what yeah. you're seeing then is likely a growing feminist philosophy within females in our society where they are offended by the idea that females are spoken about as a different group um, and, and again, this probably brings in queer theory and gender theory here too. And the concept that like men and women are different. You're seeing a growing offense at the yeah. very idea that women are uh, different, different. If men and women are the same, yeah. then fine. Male, yeah, female. Sorry, let's go. But that's let's go to, uh, upon your uh, position, Black. I, 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 I really want to engage with this because I think you guys are all missing the mark, but we'll go back to it. Iko, uh, Gibbs. A couple things. Oh, and before, and before, and before you do, before you do, guys, if you've been, if you like him, uh, the, if you're liking this content, consider supporting the channel. Buy subs to the channel, gifting bits or gifting subs so that we can continue to have all these things, um, have these great discussions. You know, uh, this was a, a topic uh, last night. We wanted to see where it goes, but we've been having a lot of interesting conversations um, here because we've got a great group of individuals, um, interesting people who like to, uh, you know, discuss interesting things, have interesting ideas. Uh, so if you enjoy being here, consider supporting the channel, subs to the channel, get bits, get subs, or consider giving a super chat. Um, it will uh, uh, react to uh, the words. There are no super chats now. All right. So, Corey, I know Corey's anticipating me screwing this up, but it hasn't oh, happened that was, yet. That was elevating, right? Uh, he absolutely was. Um, but yeah, consider helping out the channel so that I can keep doing it. But, uh, Bam, thanks for being a real one for getting a sub. Um, so, consider you up there. Uh, I see a bunch of you not sub, but you seem to be enjoying the content. Consider. Uh, supporting the channel, getting bits, getting subs, um, or a super chat if you're in YouTube land. Okay, uh, lecture, please. One example that was brought up before is like um, I, a lot of studies that talk about like di like uh, like racial difference in outcomes. Like we'll refer to like whites and blacks, for example. Um, I've actually had to like defend that recently. Uh, like 
the fact that the study refers like to whites and blacks, specifically blacks, because that's seen, like been seen as offensive. I think that, like people are kind of shifting on that. And I've seen recent studies yeah. like start to move away from that language and instead like refer to like instead of blacks and whites, they'll refer to whites and black people, which I think is interesting. Um, they'll like make sure to specify black people. But with whites, obviously, it's just whites. Um, with the woman thing, I, I'm going to like, well, you this... want to be in danger of accidentally believing that white people are people. Right. right. Is, is, is white, is white lowercase too? Yeah, thing. Well, yeah, whites is white lowercase. Is lowercase. Yeah. Yes, black whites is up always yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, it's also but, like one no, I mean, that's, size that's smaller. That's the journalistic standard. <laughs> yeah. I, I know, I know. Well, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, but it I, is I, the case. Literally, that is literally I mean, that's because I know, I know. currently. I know, I know, I know. That's why I brought it up. But I want, but I wanted to say as well, like with the woman thing, this is like just totally intuition based. This is, I have no studies backing this up whatsoever Corey's gonna love it i think what this ha maybe has a little bit to do with is that the term female in in my experience is a term that's used generally by the archetype of a fuck boy right somebody who's trying to hit on a girl specifically and i feel like these kind of terms like like the, the terms that like are like my new hair an animalistic analogy the, 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 the term the, the, the terms the terms that men are like used to hit on women with I feel women have sort of like gravitated against because they feel they're demeaning in some way. So one of the things that like I, I've uh, like naturally comes to me is like, you know, what's up, girl? Like, that's something that I just say. But I can't say that anymore because I've gotten a lot of responses. Yo, of girl, like, let me get your mind. Yeah, yeah. What's up, girl? What's up? No, it, it just what's flows so naturally. I'm not even kidding you. I'm not even kidding you. And I've, I've had more, more than things. once. I've had more than once. Like, I'm not a girl. Like, I'm a woman. Yeah. It's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. It's like, all right. Like, yo, yeah. who, who are you calling girl? Like. Wait, what would you just say? Like, ah, uh, fuck. Sub woman like, well, doesn't. Sub sub woman right. doesn't have the same ring. Yeah, yeah, and and then sometimes girl. like if I'm being if I'm like feeling like in a asshole mood, I'll be like, all right, hey woman, and then of course then she gets pissed off even more. So it doesn't. Really <laughs> <say that>. <laughs> 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 all right, my bad. Bobby, Does, th 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 that's when you triple down. You go, okay, all right, female, listen up, and then, then <laughs> and then you get hit. That's what happens the third time. What, right? you, what you do is, or she gives you her number. You, you immediately, you immediately switch to a Julia Child. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, not in Julia Child. What a reference. The woman Julia. That, uh, uh, not Julia uh, Child. The, pretty the other female the cook, cook. That um, the, no, the female. Everyone the female knows Julia Child here. Julia Roberts. Shush, shush. The female. Do you know how little that narrows it down? The other female. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all keep interrupting me. The other, the lady that Paula does like Dean? all the glazed hams and like mass Paula Dean. Thank you. You switched to Paula Dean. You should have known I would do that. I'm not a girl. I'm a woman. And just immediately be like, oh, I'm so sorry, hon, sweetie. Oh my goodness. You need to get some meat on them bones. Why don't we, I mean, just really go full blown with it, you know? Um, thank What's you up? for that, Scott. Thank you. I appreciate that, Scott. Thank you so hey, much. Uh, let's Today go to our friends. Honey glazed ham I, with 10 uh, pounds of sugar. <laughs> oh, my, that sounds amazing. Oh, fuck. Uh, let's go to Aiko and then uh, our friend Gibbs. So Actually, I, I, I want to bring us back to my go ahead. earlier grammar point, because I'm not trying to say that grammar explains everything or that you can't like you can't like change parts of speech. Like there's uh, in fact, uh, since Shakespeare was brought up earlier, Shakespeare was known for um, a rhetorical technique called anthemeria, where you turn a noun into an adjective or an adjective into a noun. Mm -hmm. Like it happens, we do that in speech all the time. Oh, punch is made up so I'm not trying to say that just because it's an adjective, you can never say it, right? But there is an implication to the fact that you're referring to somebody as an adjective and, and not a noun that sort of robs them of their personhood, especially <laughs> Uh, Bam mentioned that like it's something that's not even necessarily human referenced, right? Like it can it, you can be referring to a female giraffe or a spider or something like that. You know, the old song from like even before I was young, the female of the species is more deadly than the male, right? That's the sort of thing that sort of pops up in your mind. The female of the species, right? There's something sort of what's a greater risk? animalistic about it. I'm sorry. You have to choose between woman or female in our current society. Oh, woman for sure. Where the idea that non-binary mm -hmm. and trans people are skyrocketing and yeah. most non-binary people, all they're doing is getting a pierced nose and like a streak of something in their hair and wearing a hoodie and they're boy modding magically or something. Right. Well, and if like, you, if, if you're listen, talking to an individual, you don't use either of these if words. If you want to solve, say, hey, you. 
if you want to solve the grammatical issue, but you still want to say female, you can say like a female person, I guess. Like just like you, just like you could say a black person or a white person. <laughs> female person. That black. sounds awful. Oh my god. Uh, right. I was talking to that female yeah, person to, over there. It's, it's, uh, uh, yeah, but that right because the female birthing person. They're birthing persons now. That's right uh, because female is such a clinical term that yep. even when you attach it to a noun in the proper way, it does sound sort of almost dehumanizing, right? What, like, what about double X uh, homie? How about that? Does that work? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or maybe we like uh, the 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 fact that woman is kind of ambiguous, right? Because we don't quite know if you're referring to sex or gender when you say it. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we need another word, and and that word is just absent. Mm -hmm. Right, and maybe the attempt the there uh, to use the adjective right? as if it were a yeah. noun yeah. is Thank it's. You. Uh, I'm not and before, and before, to you, and before, and but I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about for categories and, here. I'm just talking about and, accuracy. And, and just yeah, before you do that, uh, thank you, uh, Lady uh, Kira, for becoming a tier one uh, member on YouTube. Oh, that's super rare. Um, and that only happened. Uh, less than uh, ten minutes ago. Okay, so fuck I'm marking you. Marking it down uh, on my calendar right now. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> didn't Sorry. Even, you didn't even get into double digits. But like, I got <laughs> real quick. Like, <laughs> the just the state of our culture, mm -hmm. where we're supposed to, where's how are we supposed to as a society function like a well-oiled machine, where we where we can look towards progress of our society where we can live in a high trust society where we can depend upon the web of voluntary exchange of ideas and services and goods towards inventing new things and new industries and, and, and new technologies and becoming spacefaring when we're sitting here being like, maybe we need a new fucking word to deal with the fact that we use we new words all the time terrified in our culture to be able to, to, to worry that we're not going to offend somebody. If we look at someone that's presenting fem feminine and we can't say girl and we can't say chick and we can't say woman and we can't say, female. and we can't say they, right. We can't uh, use the singular they, right. Which, which, right. Like, even like, though Shakespeare used it, like, like it, you're, you're, like, you're, you're, you're that this is a problem in a society because we have to invent new words to try and hopefully not well, offend people. And they're going to hate the word. You don't necessarily need to invent new words, but you do if you want to say something specific, right? If you want to say woman, but you want woman to mean a female person, and you're not willing to use the word person because you don't like it, you know, sorry, lactoid, then you're going to need a new word. You're well, just going to need well, a word if you don't want to be misunderstood. Well, but then they're not just going to be clear. Like, like, word. We I see them as not, people. Okay? Why do we keep Can I just be, that's the problem? The problem is, what if minute, what if they well, don't I'm, like I'm, that I'm word? We're making, so, this is a, this oh. is the idea where men's fault. Where we're making up a pro, like we're saying like this is so difficult, and we're making up a problem where it doesn't exist. There, the, the problem doesn't exist. Exists. We we don't address individuals as women or female or girl. We don't talk to people that way. We say their names. We talk to men like that. Hold on. We'll I say, hey, well, we, I guess, who said What's hey, up, man? How you doing, man? What's well, up? We literally on, do that on, all the time. Hold on, oh, we don't say I'm male gonna, in that I'm way. I'm going to push back. Yes, because we don't have to. We don't need to because men weren't offended at the fact no, that no, we that's, used that's, men. That's so the only on, reason we're Hold on, hold on. Women are not affected at being called women. They're not offended. In fact, they're insisting on it, right? They're saying. No, but woman. But woman doesn't mean as a woman. Not as a. But woman doesn't mean what. Like, we don't have an agreed upon term. We're, 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 we're arguing what, what the term woman means. Yeah, but you 99 be, plus percent of the time, women, that's not an issue. Making that I mean, I understand that 99, but the only people that are complaining about the terminology are the people that are like, these are the people we're talking about. No, it's only okay, from the so, left, and those are the people that are having that wait, argument. All right, I, I'm going to let Gibbs in, but I really want to push back. Like, so, so hard on, on all so of this. So, I want to push back kind of what, like, Bam said, and actually, just kind of like what y'all said. Uh, so, yeah, if you're walking up and you're going, these females over here, you're like, hey, female, hey, girl. I, I mean, yeah, that's those, those are that you're not going to use that generally, like, right? Like, that's going to be dehumanizing. That's going to be a problem, right? And I, I agree with Bam when he says that, right? That's generally not how you have a normal conversation. Even Lactoid going up and say, what's up, girl? That's probably not good. You can go up and say, what's up, mommy, or some other wild shit, and then be better. But, like, like if you go up and just say, in like that, yeah, obviously dehumanizing. But this is where the problem lies, right? If you're, if I'm like, you're trying to say, I'm trying to. Well, you just gotta say it better. Oh here's the, here's, yeah, well, here's the trick. Here's the trick, though. Like, with, this is the it issue. Is true. Right? If you could just say it in a charming way, you'll get. Yeah, yeah, you get away with lots of. But here's the, here's, you think you can say yeah. mommy in a charming way? Yeah. 
Yeah, when I go hundred percent. Does I get? Have you ever been in Miami? I do. I always black say mommy. Black, black, black leather. But I guess that's that. I, I literally only use mommy anyway. Here, here, yeah, mom, mommy's uh, like proper. So, uh, like here's here our little mama. It all sorts of stuff. So here's do you the, not date like Latin women? <laughs> I love, yeah, it's great. That's, no. that's, that's, I guess that's, that's, oh, you're missing that's out. Not, that's not the point I'm making, right? So the point I'm making is that almost all destructive words have become a problem, right? So say I'm sitting here, like here on this panel, and I'm to describe like uh, individuals that are females, right? And we're gonna sit here and describe them. If I was to describe them as individuals who are female, like people are gonna be mad, right? They're gonna be like, oh, that's you can't call them that, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing if like when y'all said men don't get mad, men do get mad. Do you remember when everybody used to say, oh, say I was gonna describe, uh, we'll pick Lactoy here again because. I know he's not going to be mad. If I was going to say he's a cis male, well, he might get mad if I call him a cis male. He's going to be like, well, what is cis? That's an insult, just like uh, no, Elon Musk did, right? He's going to be mad. Or like or any really descriptive term. We've gotten to a point, it's not that we need new words. It's that every descriptive word that we've made is, is a cancel word now. And we can't describe anybody in any manner because everybody's got this cult of personality where they think they're special, right? And that's the problem that I keep trying to like emphasize. Yeah, it's, it's not just gender abolitionism. It's descriptive abolitionism. We've gotten to the point where, like, if you describe somebody any way that takes away their, their individuality, it's derogatory. It doesn't even have to be derogatory. I could say that Corey is a smart man, and he could be upset that I call him a smart man. He'd be he like, well... Know. He's like, well, I'm an intelligent male, or like, or I'm an intelligent uh, man of two zygotes, or whatever the fuck he wants to say. And like, you're gonna sit exactly. here, yeah, I don't know. I'm just making, I'm just making shit up, right? Like, we're just like, you know, the point is that I'm making any descriptive term that's like become taboo now because it doesn't matter what words we come up with. Mm -hmm. People are going to find a way to be offended because they all want to be special. That's the. I I love I love that we learned today that Corey is a parasitic uh, twin. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> is mommy the same thing as daddy uh, in this case? No, it's Papa. Poppy. Yeah, Poppy. Hey, Poppy. How you doing? Uh, for the Puerto Ricans. Why is it English when it was referring to women, but then Spanish when it's well, referring so, to I men? Mean, I, I, like I do this. this you say mommy. You don't say mommy. That's what I do this all the time. Like, okay, Papa, calm down. Like all the time. Don't I? He does it to me. He does. Yeah. Yeah, but I've never heard you call a woman on here, mommy. Uh, I have. I mean, hey, Mama, come down. You know, relax. Yeah. I mean, the ratio here is a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Mama, Mama. Not much if you ever, if you're ever yeah, in like sir, Miami, yeah. like the, uh, everyone, everyone calls each other Papa and Mommy. And yeah. same thing in New York too, especially if you're. Like, you, in, like, no, I always thought that was like a sexual cool thing. Pop. That's what I thought. <laughs> it is a sexual thing. <laughs> it's not a sexual it's thing. Flirtatious. It's yeah, not I mean, well, sexual. I'm definitely. I mean, it's Like you wouldn't do that in like a like a library. But if you're, in a I would place, absolutely like, do it in a library. Goofy, you could say like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> he might not. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Hello, mommy. Hot chick in the library. I'll be like, mommy. I'll be like, listen, mommy, how you doing? Hey, what you reading? Oh, mommy, what's up? You reading Karl Marx? I don't like that. I really don't like that. You you reading Karl Marx over there, mommy? Black boys offended. By the term, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm offended. It kind of like you also don't like the term woman. It makes me female, nauseated huh? a little bit. No, those are fine, but like mommy. The mommy is. Yeah, 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 well, you're thinking mommy. Um, is mommy. I, I, mama, you can use mommy. Mama. 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 is a white. All right, <laughs> I'm a white. Yeah, so. <laughs> get in here, destroy. I, I would like. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna put one. Um, I I'm with Black Twitter on this. I don't like referring to women as mommy. Right, like I don't want us associate. You just yeah, yeah, you're not around I, enough Hispanics. It's just yeah, you have to be around more Hispanics. If you were around Thank a bunch you. of Hispanics, you would code switch in that yeah. way. Just like I, me, when I'm dating a black girl and I end up hanging out with her and her friends for like a long and time. And then what do you say? I, like, come back. <laughs> yeah, what do you say? I'm not gonna tell you guys. <laughs> well, what do you say? Back, and Scott? I, I have a very different language. All right. <laughs> I'll just say that like, I'm, not, I'm not dropping in bombs, all right? I will, I will change, I will code all switch right. because it's just a thing that I'm about to say if you're around a black woman that's like that older than twenty six, she's probably gonna call you baby. And she doesn't mean it's actually. Well, or or any yeah, that's any or any other. Hey, 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 or doll, they'll call you doll. It's a term of endearment. Let me. Yeah, that, 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 that's kind of that's sweetheart. southern though. That's you generally know. southern, right? But then like, there's southern a difference between baby and a baby, right? Yeah. Word a in front and it changes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Look. But you can call a woman baby too, and that's fine. I am not. I don't like. Um, associating like my mother with um, an object of affection, like yeah. mm. at all. No, your like, mommy and mommy all. are two different. I don't even call my mom you. mommy, to be honest. I, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, even call my mom mommy. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Or, they're, they're two I different words. I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But like, I don't like mixing them up at all. I'm just saying it makes me uncomfortable. I'm not saying that like you that. should feel the same way. Yeah. I get you. Um, but uh, yeah, because it's it's weird. Like, I, she can call me daddy if that's her thing, right? But like, I won't do like the same in reverse. No thanks. Not um, but I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. 
Um, Alpha but, male. And that's not even yeah. a white thing, then. Call so, me daddy. Uh, now I just got your black friend to sign up for it. It's not. Well, it's just it's just like like in, in but, Middle Eastern no. culture, Lebanese culture, like no. Habibi, Habibti. We call yeah. people my heart, my like. It's it's just it's just you speak kind of romantically flirty. It's just what it is. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, Ali, Ali, Habibi, ain't it? Habibi. I don't mind Habibi. I don't mind being uh, flirty. I, yeah. I just don't like like mother. Like I, I get what you're saying. Mother. I get what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. yeah, that's your male privilege okay. speaking prime. This is indeed it is. But okay. So going back to the subject we were talking about, um, I think that, as, especially when I'm hearing from Scott and uh, from Ali, that you guys are mixing um, uh, the discussion that we're currently having, the cultural discussion we're currently having, um, being uh, the trans uh, discussion, uh, with this uh, separate topic of like calling cis women female. Yeah. Right? Like, that is a, a, these are two distinct discussions. That maybe yeah. today are being they are. They're, but like this, but this this thing predates right our current cultural conversation on trans individuals. Completely yeah. predates mm-hmm. it, right? Um, and uh, I, I would say that um, people have been um, uh, insulted. Um, they've been saying that like it's infantilizing or um, dehumanizing. They've had all kinds of different words from this, and I don't think. That uh, the people who are insulted necessarily uh, line up with who uh, the people who are like trans defenders. I think that you can me, find. Uh, I, I was women. saying that it's more on the left. I don't like think conservative women now. care typically what words you're using. I don't think conservative women I care think, about the word I woman. I think they do. I the think term they, female. I think they're there's, using there's, it now. You don't want to call it there's, bitch. There's, that's there's, poli- there's language policing on conservatives' uh, side. That absolutely happens. It's just on different axes. They don't even want to be called. Um, look Remember back in the fifties when you could just say whatever you wanted. Those are the days. Hold on. So 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 I don't. have a new fairy queen, right? I, 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 I don't talk about her much, but um, I, I think most of you are aware that my grandmother and I, you know, we talk all the time, and she's a critical theorist and a sociologist, mm-hmm. right? Um, I've been debating and I still her want to meet her. little fucking kid. Um, yeah, she probably won't ever. Sorry. Um, um, she, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not introducing her to, into the network. Um, but, um, you know, I remember growing up, because my grandmother was also a massive, massive second wave feminist, right? Um, she had a license plate that said fitness. I mean, she has a um, she has like so a quilt from like twenty different charity organizations that are like started in Richmond because she basically started all of the domestic violence um, women shelters in the state of Virginia. I love everything Colorado. about this woman. She's amazing. So when I was a kid, there was a big, big insistence on changing our language from both my father and I because we casually used the word chick, right? It was common in the '90s to call women chicks. It's like, oh, these chicks over here, this chick, chicks and, you know, and like, and you, you had to be very careful if you accidentally said that around grandma because it didn't matter that it was Christmas. Like, you were gonna get a fucking earful if you used the term uh-huh. chick because it's dehumanizing because it separates the woman from her identity because you're 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 labeling her as something that is a sex object that's meant to be seen as you know as something that is a you know an object of your affection and your yada 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 yada. And like to a certain extent, I absolutely agree with her. Um, you know, in in in, I don't agree with the concept that she gets to control my language or anything. But I'm in her home, right? I don't I don't I don't know that being offended is all that helpful. And I think it is a bit of a hysteria, um, you know, histrionics, whatever term that is loosely. <laughs> with, with They're hysteria. just being crazy. crazy. Right? Agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sexist term, yeah. Because you know, where they, they might be, comes from. It might be on their period, right? but go ahead. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You What's got it. But never the, nevertheless, I don't think I'm necessarily <laughs> disagreeing with you, uh, Prime. The reason I'm bringing up the trans thing is not to say that the trans thing is why we're having this issue. What I'm saying is what word seems to be offensive and the concept of dehumanizing a person based upon a word that is disliked is culturally dependent. That's why I said I had to retrain myself as a veteran when I went into the civilian world because we use it all the time. We say female and females don't get offended because it's totally normal parlance in the military, but in, in civilian sector, it's not. And so the culture is different and what those words are and what words feel weird or, or what we don't like. My argument is this, is that female is not a slang terminology, which makes it very different than some of the words and the battles we've had over the years. Why is it that a word isn't slang? That's very technical. 
has become offensive in some capacity to some people. Some of it is the dehumanizing aspect. Some of it is the way that it's used. Some of it is going to be the thing we've been talking about kind of all night in a, in a, in a way, which is the fact that women are becoming more feminist and men are becoming more red pill, more conservative, more, more, more pushing towards right wing cultural values. Um, and when we're splitting off and that's causing disjunction in our ability to communicate certain things. I'm simply saying that this is one of many factors that changes the culture and makes it context dependent and is probably partially why some people or the culture is changing in the usage of that word because many people are going to be offended by the idea of woman or the idea of female when a certain subcategory of people don't like gender critical turfs like you know jk rowling being like fuck you you're a female right it, it, it's not just the red pillars it's also the it's also the feminists themselves so yeah i don't necessarily disagree with you i'm not saying that tr this is all the trans thing fault I'm saying our culture is changing. This is one way it's changing. And my entire argument is, is the offense is culturally dependent because there are cultures that I myself have lived yeah. in where this is totally normal. Of course, so, every, yeah, yeah. almost all of the things that we are discussing is culturally yeah. dependent. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I was saying it was strengthened with like the whole trans ideology thing. I, but even beforehand, you're saying there was a problem before. I think women have always had a problem to Gibbs's point with like descriptors, right? I think... I think even referring to women as women do this, they didn't like that. And so like anywhere, chick was or bad, broads. baby was bad. They don't like yeah, broads, broads baby girl. There, there seems to one, never, too. there seems to How never be a word. Go? Like sugar yeah. tits is a problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anytime, anytime, anytime we <laughs> seem like, to like, use like, any why word. Why is broad even bad? <laughs> anytime we see, seem to use any word to want to describe like woman or female person, it seems to be like, well, we're not a monolith. So you can't just say women this because the, the term is a descriptor of all they're not monolith and i'm saying the, the the issue that we don't have with like men in this regard is that the assumption I'd, I'd assume the assumption is that when you say man people male mean male person they mean male they they're not referring to men and thinking of trans ideology or trans trans men right. they're referring specifically to males and none of us are disagreeing with that and that's what i'm saying right now it's it's such a like now it's maybe more it's less derogatory in in sense to use the term female because people are being more descriptive, and the, the other argument is that this the, the this typically this word thing only comes from the left. Like typically There's speaking, like here. if if we take out if we take out politics, right? If we if we if we really just try and look at it, you know, C. Wright Mills, nineteen fifty six. You know what I mean? Like using your sociological imagination here, looking at it from a different perspective. Um, so there's another thing that we have to consider which is very, very often offense, especially from women, is, but, but maybe not, maybe not, maybe it's, maybe it's, it's equal in both, is going to be determined from the, from the perspective of whom is saying it, right? If a hot guy calls you something or your boss calls you something or someone, your professor, or someone in a position of authority or someone that you respect says something, you're far less likely to be offended than by your social peers, especially if you're if it's a social peer that you find to be unattractive or you don't like in some capacity. And I think what we are seeing too, and this is kind of the real argument from the bell curve, um, as opposed to like Charles, you know, Charles Murray getting in trouble for one fucking chapter of race IQ. Um, you know, is this concept of as we've opened up our culture from living in small towns where everybody knows everybody, you know, well, his his whole point was like smart people go to university and there's an IQ brain drain. That's really the point of the book is that intelligent people are, are breeding instead of rebreeding in the community. Like the, the, the smartest people are going off and breeding and the dumbest people are pairing and it's like causing a, a separation. But, but I think there's some truth, maybe not to that per se, but there is some truth to the idea that offense is, is, is going, is increasing because respect of social peers from females is decreasing because females are no longer dating within the immediate male population that they're interacting with. They're on Instagram, they're on dating apps, or they're, or, or they're just meeting a higher percentage of people, right? It's a numbers game. If they're meeting a thousand people instead of 200 people, what we're seeing is an increase in females ability to choose better mates, especially at a young age where they happen to be more feminist and more politically engaged and you and their social peers, like you, you 22 year old girl in college, her social peer is a 22 year old guy. 
And like it used to be that that was a potential dating partner for a 22 year old girl. Wait, is this the and same man alive since current. you started talking about grandma? I feel like I would look down for like 15 minutes. I looked up, you still talking. I'm, I'm not saying you didn't I, point, I, but I, I was I, like, oh my God. Bam, mm. bam, bam. I, I know you, I know you checked out, but, but hear me out. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think what you might be seeing too, if is an in is a, a slight increase in offense because the 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 speaker of these messages are people that women aren't respecting or don't see as potential dating partners or don't see as potential equals because they have a larger market in the dating pool and a larger amount of people that they're seeing in general so those you know the the the, the those that they respect aren't necessarily their peers I, I don't know. I don't really, I mean, this is really just an intuition looking at it sociologically, but um, I don't know. I, I think that is, that might play a factor here in terms of any word in identification. Um, I, so I wanted to uh, go it's back. It's uh, for the record. It's not like me saying this is true. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> so going back to uh, uh, this discussion, right? Like, don't nobody think, know what he just said. I'm sorry. Don't no one no one had anything to respond because no one knows what he just said. It was a lot. Like I'm not saying it wasn't valuable, but it became so much that not a single person knew what to respond to. Bam, I'm bam. Sorry. Is this your first time? First time with Fabian? No, it was hilarious. <laughs> okay, That's I'm sorry, Prof. Sad for you to admit. <clears throat> like you, you can't pay attention and I, I did not. I, I, that's why I need my ADHD meds over the counter. <laughs> we, 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 got, we got to play Subway Surfers hey, hold on, uh, hold below on. Hey, in the bottom hey, part hey, of the screen. Bam, bam, bam. I got that black market for the year, the ADHD. All right, DM me. I got it. I do think you're actually very intelligent. Like that, Don't think that's... Can we bring uh, the term yeah, broad I, back? I, I just... I, I, I didn't broad. Want to... You can I, try. I, I want Dame. I want Dame. Dame is a good back. one. Dame isn't even Dame offensive. Was a, I, 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 I if, you call somebody, if you call a girl a Dame right now, it's, there's not a term on earth you can call a girl that isn't offensive, man. I used Harlan and Dame. 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 Oh, oh, Harlan will it. get you slapped, but Dame. Dame. No, they liked yes. it. They thought that Harlan. was funny. I'm bringing back Harlan and I'm bringing back Slatter. Slatter. I use that, by the way, Scott. I've been using that. These are perfect words for OnlyFans girls that are out here. It's like, I don't know if you're a whore. I don't really know if you're a whore if you're like on Twitch and like you're like an e girl with like your ass taking up seventy percent of the screen and you have a free OnlyFans and you're doing everything you can to get subscriptions from thirteen year old boys because you know that if you had a paid OnlyFans and that like the boys couldn't pay for that but they totally can give you Twitch subs and then log into your fans. I don't know if you're a whore. You're fucking close. I think of you as a whore, but I don't know if you're a whore. But you're definitely a slatter and a whore. And we need to bring those words. Back. I like Hussey as well. Can, can you Hussey's Hussey's a good B, one. right? Cardi B. Cardi B is not a whore per se, but the no, bitch likes to out. steal money from people that she may or may not drug in her stripping days and then brags about it like she didn't admit that she sexually assaulted people and stole money from them as a stripper. Uh, like, nah, nah. Slash yeah, if that, that, was, if that I, was I assign was agency to the men going to the strip club and taking pills hold, from the stripper. Hold, hold, I, hold, I don't know. She put it hold in on. their drinks. Hold on, sociologic. She built Cosby them. She literally admitted to Bill Cosby. Though. The only difference between her and Bill Cosby is Bill Cosby was a man and a doctor. Cardi B Cosby. I yeah, don't know uh, if they weren't. Pretty, I don't know. I robbing people is probably a little bit different than sexual assault. But yeah, look at Ali blaming bad, the though. victim right now, even when it's a man. Look at this. I, no one can call mm -hmm. Ali sexist right now. Ali is saying the men shouldn't have gone there <laughs> yeah. and they shouldn't have taken he's the pills. He's a habitual victim blamer. He's yeah, a habitual equal opportunity Wait, victim blamer. Um, I don't know if I'm was wearing that the men look like that running. They should have from a stripper and like I bet you not being they look weary bro. of that. He's being uh, consistent. He actually blamed the people that went to the Diddy parties too. Yeah, so like, I have no, yeah, like He's not sexist. Um, okay. Uh, I feel like we forgot Diddy murdered people. And like we're all mad that he Diddy is a GTA character in real life. Yeah, right? true. You know I mean? like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um. All right. Okay. So I, I was just trying to like roll Maybe it back. To, to say do you want a subject change? No, no, no it's fine. I don't care. I don't. I, I don't. I don't care. I, I don't, like, you want what, a topic I change? Know, I like, I'm, not, like, I'm not a fan not of Diddy. Diddy no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm, I'm not a fan of Diddy. Do you want a topic uh, change or do you want to stay on? 
It's not. Oh, I'm. I'm. I'm wanted to like uh, I'm try to get out of here. To be honest with you, I got shit to do tomorrow. It's oh, it, yeah. It's it's eleven thirty. I didn't realize that. Okay. <laughs> um, that's fair. Um, but uh, well, I mean, does, does it, did anyone want to uh, say anything more on the uh, the female thing? Um, well, I just wanted yeah. to ask you if you know of a term that can refer to women as that doesn't get misconstrued. Yeah, I would say, eventually. Would say oh, the same thing about pony. black people. Who does? Who Sorry? does? Wait, really well. What was that, Brian? I would say that you would say the same thing about black people. Re- like, um, yeah, all, 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 the only point that you're all making is like? that... Is that what you're saying? I don't understand. Wait, so who here watches? Well, there's not a term that you can refer to them as. Band the band band. Band. I would have asked Ben this. A... So, ben, do you watch wrestling? Not really. You, okay, well, no, you I, well, so you the Rock, know. the Rock came back recently, mm-hmm. and uh, he was using the mm-hmm. word "boy" left and right to all sorts of people, and uh, I was very interested that he was getting away with it. It's because we claim The Rock is black, is technically, mm, yeah. even though he's Samoan. Yeah, that, no, well, no, he, no, he's he, black. His dad's black. black. That was his oh. thing. He used to call people monkey, you know. So, monkey. do y'all have a problem with like foghorn leghorn? Yeah. Who's that? That's a, like the uh, chicken. Like the it's like from the, from Looney Tunes. Like, yeah, the chicken's like, boy, said, boy, let me tell you what, boy. That, 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 the chicken oh yeah, rooster. It's like the savanna. Yeah, accent. that probably wouldn't. That probably wouldn't work today. But I think it's like, yeah, like Appalachia. I'll say, Appalachia. I'll say y'all. You, you think that? I don't think it was. I don't think it was a strong southern draw. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. definitely a strong southern. The foghorn leghorn, yeah. yeah boy is absolutely a, a southern a, thing, right? Like a yeah. But I, I'm talking about what, 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 state was, what state was I say uh, I don't know. I consider like man, I, th- man, I thought he was from like Georgia or something. Yeah, yeah Georgia, like, Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, I thought that was the answer. I can tell you the answer. I can just tell you guys the fucking. It's an antebellum accent. It's going away. It's an yeah. actual southern aristocracy accent that doesn't really yeah. exist anymore. You only hear Maybe from like old country ladies. No, I hear people say that all the time. Like that boy over there acting up. Own plantations. Yeah, <clears throat> but that, that's fine. Um, I and uh, I don't talk about like going. Oh my god! I don't know. Um, <laughs> we were asking uh, Ali's question because Ali asked you well, a question in terms. Yeah, what's oh, the yeah, term? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, not derogatory towards women. Yeah, women. yeah and then I, you were doing I, the Venn yeah. diagram. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Virginia. Think... <laughs> which I don't know how we called it in the south. I'm sorry, I had to look up where he was from specifically. Apparently, he's from Virginia, which I feel yeah. like I'm closer with West Virginia, so I'm not crazy. Plus, I'm not really sure that you yeah, know an anthropomorphic chicken. Eventually, be able to answer. I don't. I don't know what he is. If he was going to be a race, what race do you think Foghorn Leghorn would be? Sounded like. No, that's a white man. Enough. You think Foghorn Leghorn is a white man? He's a white that's man. A white, that's a white man. That is pretty funny. That's he pretty walked funny, around actually. with his chest poked <laughs> out. He, he knew he, he, he had <laughs> rights. Ain't it, ain't it hilarious? I got a question for the panel after Prime Minister. TJ was fucking sounded like. Okay. I said, I said, I said, that one looks mighty nice in the quarters. We should give her our own home. You know, oh it's my! Hilarious. Oh yeah, that, that. Oh my! Thanks, thanks for making my night with that one. That is actually <laughs> awesome, Scott. <laughs> yeah, <hilarious. laughs> um, but okay, so I was in Venn diagram. But you're talking. Yeah. You're basically there's a Venn diagram of offense, right? And who falls like who like when you say your word, who falls within a particular circle of that offense? So I think there are black people who don't like to be called black. Right, mm-hmm. there are black people who don't like to be called African Americans. I just learned on Twitch, right? Uh, oh yeah, there was a whole thing on Congress about it. All the black individuals around me uh, are fine with be calling African American, but like mm, whatever. Um, but uh, there are people who, who uh, don't like to be called colored. That's a bigger cohort at this point, right? Um, and <laughs> Negro, depending on the concept. Yeah, right. But like, there's just like, <laughs> but never but from white can, people. But, uh, <laughs> So, okay, hold on, how, hold on. What about I'm so? What about Hispanics, right? Russian roulette of me. Hispanics are kind of like on the line. So that girl, that girl got canceled. Negro. <laughs> so that Mexican, Hispanic that is also Mexican, an adjective. So hold on, that Mexican, uh, that Mexican weather girl almost got canceled because she blamed her black, uh, black, black dog Negro, and they, uh, they, they, they canceled, almost canceled her for it. That's She's totally like, well, how? insensitive. Come on. And they're like, and she it was is. like, well, how else do you say black in Spanish? Yeah, I have, I have a story time real quick. So Ooh, my I don't like the this story time. What did you get reminded is, from? Yeah, I was I concerned. <laughs> I don't know what we just heard. <laughs> it. it gave you a good story. <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> concerned. My, my grandfather, my step grandfather, <laughs> who is married to my grandmother, right? He is a right wing, super high functioning autistic person that works in the computer industry. Ooh, this is it's not getting any better because he is he he's worked on the Discovery. He's worked on the Challenger. Like when NASA couldn't figure out what was wrong with their software, they they call him. Right. He's he's wicked smart and he's also crazy. Um, so my grandmother had a black cat 
named Iggy years and years and years. One day that cat died. And so she, wait for it, wait for it. So she gets a new black cat that's a rescue one day. And of course, Jimmy playing the long game was like, we should name it after Iggy. And she was like, oh, really? And he's like, yeah, let's name it Jiggy. <laughs> so he's got a black cat named Jiggy. And he waited years years training this cat to answer to a certain thing secretly until she brought over black politicians that were very important within Richmond city and connected people that were coming over for like a hosted dinner with the two of them because she's, she's politically connected with quite a few people. And he waits until they're sitting there, sits down in the room with these two well to do you know, a well-to-do black power couple in like local politics. And it just goes, come here, chicka boo. <laughs> come here, chicka he, She did not speak to him for like three years. Like she slept in a separate house for a while. Like he I thought that was going to be bad. worse. That's not, that's not great. But I honestly, when you, when I heard Iggy, I just knew. <laughs> what was, I, I thought in. a different word was <laughs> coming. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, okay. Because you know what? We were talking that's about okay. old resurrected racist and sexist terms. And I was like, that's one you never hear anymore. And he and he played the long game so that he could call the black cat Jigaboo in front of fucking <laughs> connected political black. Is that a racist people. thing? I've never even heard of that term before. That's yeah, so yeah, it is. yeah, you can't call you can't call someone that. Yeah, uh, well, I never well, have. I, I never even like, like knew that that would have been effective. Not saying it. I would even yeah. recommend not saying it. <laughs> you're giving him another tool. He just added another, another tool, tool <laughs> in my tool belt. Thank you. So, so, I, 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 I would even say that you would, might get canceled on Twitch if you say it. Like you might. Uh, well, I'm not going to say it on Twitch. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, private. Uh, okay. Wait, but, okay. Uh, I, I wait. So I've yeah. like it's been. I've been like trying to get this point across literally 20 minutes. Okay. There isn't a just that. Just that, um, <laughs> yes, there are, there are offensive terms, and I think it's fine. Like that happens when um, uh, you're talking about a marginalized group uh, that they get be very particular on how they're referred to because oftentimes they're referred to in very uh, disparaging ways, and so that's why that happens. Not, I don't yeah, think it's anything specific to to women uh, to women folk. Um, I, I think it's I think it's just in general that once <laughs> you have a. <laughs> Thinking of, uh, <laughs> he's trying not oh, to get cats. That's, that's the Western thing. That's definitely a Western thing. Women folk, right? Yeah, right. Oh, at least the yeah, imagine the, the wild, the imagine folk. wild Western books, right? That's what that is. I, I don't know if they ever said it before. Anyway, yeah. So when you're we have a marginalized group, they become very particular about these things because language is used against them. It's used as a culture, yeah. right? So they're going to yeah. react. But, but with the yeah. black community, it feels like you guys do typically agree. You pick a word and you agree. It may shift every few years, but we pick a word and we agree. But with women, it seems like no word. It fuck it, like to Ico's point. What? Even if we created a new word, no, that no, was, no, no. Uh, so, 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 Ali, you yeah. ask the vast majority of, uh, of women, "Hey, does uh, the word women, um, a, a woman, uh, is that offensive to them?" They say no. Is the word mother? Offensive to them, they say no, right? And we're a breaking person, uh, of actually, actually, but we're but we're literally yes. in the process um, of changing the term maternity like ward, yes. yeah, to birthing like place, like right? So it's like it's it's like, seeming I, I, that I don't I don't know if we are actually in the process of, of actually doing that. I think that in within some specific context, we're are, are discussing these things, but no, yeah. there is no large. Scale, that would be a good long term um, bet. Yeah. Um, it also exactly. wouldn't be that. It also we wouldn't be an issue of like a, a professional medical place, like yeah. uses a word. Like that's not the same as like society. Lactoid well, no, but but but, but but it but it leaks into society, right? If if not if now yeah, birthing person becomes the well, not, no, 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 sorry, I, I I didn't mean to do say birthing person and start a whole thing about about birthing person. I I just have a quick question for the panel. So I I can think of insults for like white people, um, but. I can't think of any like gendered insult towards a man. Uh, you can't. Someone, that's all, that's my point. Someone in my huh? chat said, uh, oh, "Penoid," which you... sounds pretty. Fu this, like, this is the that new one. could be offensive. That could become yes. an insult, but I can't think yeah. of any like it's... actual insults that there like, isn't. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that dovetails with what I just LPS. said because not marginalized, right? The, oh, the non-marginalized group they don't have insults like that. Like, yeah. like there's lots like, of. Yeah. Even, Not even insults of power. Y'all don't hang out with no women. Oh, oh my God, guys! Uh, even the words Bro. against white people aren't actually offensive to white people, right? Like I can yeah. call like 
No, you know it's not the same. No, right? I, I, I'm not saying it's I the think, same. I'm saying that at least there are some offend, like offensive words no, that no, for no, some no, no. white people. But like can be that's offensive. like not but, that but offensive. It's, but it's yeah, well, because it's, it's well, well you and I aren't like southern you poor white people living in black communities, so it's not going to hit us the same way. You can come up with a word. Right, um, and like black people can say words to white people in an attempt to hurt their feelings, but it doesn't work doesn't in the same, the same way. Yeah. And the same laughed. way, uh, uh, women can uh, use words for uh, the male He's side. Of the one, care, I, I agree with Prime. Black people are easily offended, uh, unlike white people that are stronger and better. Uh, I'll disappear. <laughs> I mean, you can clip it, clip it, clip it. <laughs> You can call somebody a dick. That's gendered, right? Oh, it's that's just, not. Well, yeah, that's we not gendered. gendered in no one cares. You're not. It's you like call a woman a dick, right? Exactly. Calling a bitch though. It's kind of. Yeah, but, 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 but even when you call, even when you call a man a bitch, like the insinuation is you're acting. Yeah, call a woman. Right? I said to call the, a woman a bitch. See, men are more offended by being called a bitch than they are being called a dick. Well, for, for sure, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, or a pussy. Yeah, exactly. The gendered insults. It's the female version of that insult that's always worse. The, right, like, call somebody a pussy, they'll be offended. Call somebody a dick, and they'll, they'll probably fess up to it. But I think that's just it's just has more to do with like we are, you know, bigger, stronger, whatever. Like our words do would hurt more. They, they, women are more affected by words, it affects them. Hold Women's on, y'all really are definitely funny. wrong on this subject. There's there are ways to insult men that are specifically gendered. Uh, y'all just don't hang out with enough women. I'll give you the example. Uh, one of the ways is uh, they start talking about your member for well, quite a bit. Well, like, yeah, oh, but that's not like an actual this word. Big motherfucker, the LDS, the we hey, this LDS over here. I've heard that's that a, one. That's a personalized attack, right? It's not necessarily gendered. It's not right? universal. So, I mean, hold yeah. on. I mean, the the one that was here with gendered is if you call it a predator, right? If I was gonna be like, look at these pussies over here, what's the implication? ran through same thing all these little dick motherfuckers over here it's, no, it's okay. not a, no, 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 no what we're saying is there's not like a single term that i, I can think of at least it's uh, yeah i predator. agree with you like, the, the, the go-to insult for women is like big head small dick that like you know as yeah. bill burr famously said right this is like yeah. what they always do creep and predator are probably like even though they're not specifically gendered, they're probably more used like to just like to attack right, maybe that creep, yeah, maybe yeah. They, they, they call creep, man, you know, but it's not because sex you're a man. Past, yeah, sex I mean, past. I definitely, like, I can, definitely, you can absolutely say things to offend men, but not because they're men. You, Wait, the dick, some other adjective mm -hmm. about them. Fuck Are you boy. referring to the sex pass or the little dick thing? I, I just I didn't. I mean, fuckboy is pretty gendered. Yeah, you know, fuckboy. Yeah. I mean, fuck yeah, well, fuckboy actually might be the closest thing. Actually, yeah, that's a good. That's a good. You idea. can have yeah. no, no. You can have a gendered attack, right? We can come up with gendered attacks, but, but they're not. Yeah. But uh, like, like using Bad the N word, for example, right? That's not like, and a, it's a, it's a racial attack, but it's one that's like broaden right to your whole category like i'm insulting you and everything about you i'm, I'm insulting like your race right like i'm, I'm insulting very powerful these things that are fundamental to you rather than like this is an attack against a specific um like personality trait about you that mm -hmm. i don't like that happens to be gendered right like, like it's like incidentally you, you know, it's like, like Predator is just happens to be gendered. Uh, yeah, like more, I know. think fuckboy is used in a pretty general term. I've also heard people mm. like refer are all I, I, fuck boys with you? Well, yeah. Well, I've also heard some people, and I've never said this, but they'll say things like, um, you know, like uh, I don't even know how to fucking phrase this. They said like, you know, well, there's black people, and then there's n words, right? And, and like, yeah, yeah, like uh, they will differentiate uh, mm -hmm. in their mind, at least, mm -hmm. as to like. But uh, but the, the point is like, but, whenever you there's there's terms that like whenever you see a woman without knowing anything about her, you can offend her. Not yeah. not but I'm not not saying sensitively, but I'm saying that like you can say things like if a woman logs in like comes into this room right now, we could say, why aren't you in the kitchen? We don't even gotta know her name. Yeah. And like you're attacking her for being a woman. Like there's nothing you can say. Like just seeing the. Or guy. if you just say cunt. I think I think predator is the only like word that maybe puts men on like tipper edge because that is typically like no one really refers to women as predators. If they do, it's like they did some extreme shit. Cougars and hmm. Cougars. Do people, people refer call to them, them as predators? That is not like, an insult. Cougars are predators, yeah. Cougar that's, that's, is not an insult. Yeah, even when women not, are predators, they're well, still not no, insulted by that. Well, it can be used that way, but I agree, it's not necessarily an insult. Yeah, well, inherently. yeah. yeah. So it, it, like, it, it, it implies that you're a predator, just it's putting... Uh, yeah, there could be positive or negative spins on it. Like, I thought it meant because you were looking for cubs. But that's, uh, well, yeah, it's it's a cougar is just an older woman that doesn't have kids. That That's milf, I thought.
No, no, that's, that's all sort of milf. Cougar that's, has no, kids. No, yeah, oh, yeah, you're right. Just milf just have sex with cougars you. without kids. Yeah, no, cougars can have kids. Cougars, 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 cougars can have kids though. Yeah. There's no, no oh, yeah, cougars just that. like young men. Also, that's all also, also cougars. A lot of women like being called cougars. They're like, don't call yeah. them. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm saying it's not always an insult. Yeah, you're right. It's yeah, yeah. It can be. In yeah, fact, I like I like hunting me some cougars sometimes. Yeah. You go out you and you know, I, I like to be haunted by cougars. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Like, what? Why? why like, I mean, they don't like the masculine men, males. Let me men date you. younger than women do, like, on average. So it's all, like, it's not, I'm not something to really be offended mm -hmm. by because men actually do it. But it's weird that, like, women get, like, it's, they have, like, a term of, like, to be celebrated that they, like, F young dudes. But you don't have, like, like, a creep is the word of the dude that, like, Openly talks about F young girls. Yeah, this is a fair yeah. double standard. Right? Well, Leonardo DiCaprio gets way more shit than like some of these other female celebrities that get with the yeah. guys, and they're and but they most, exist. But most he gets called the predator. Of sex we, gotta guys, go after, we, get more. we gotta go after canceler or um, what's his face? Uh, the life of um, Will God Smith. No, I, yeah, uh, she fucked that I'm, one young rapper, right? Oh well, there's that. I was oh, uh, Jada. Yeah, but, no, Jada, Jada Smith. Jada and her, wasn't he like her son's, nineteen her son's or friend. something? Yeah, yeah her, her son's, son's friend. friend. Uh, Holy well, hold on, shit! Allegedly, if allegedly, if she was a man, she would have never recovered from that. I'm sorry. But she was talking about August. Know. August and uh, yeah, I'm August, he might not be age. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, I I'm thinking of the guy who played Wolverine. Um, oh, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Thank you so much. Yeah, his wife is like super old. Is it what we ordered there? That, so is uh, uh, what's his name? I don't uh, know about super old, but I think yeah, the, right, the older. Another yeah, one with Ashton. Like Ashton. I mean, I, I, anyone so older than me is super old, right? <laughs> it, ain't that right, I go? Right, it's relative. Um, but uh, especially <laughs> if she's a woman. Especially if she's a woman, she's super old. Yeah, she's sixty-eight. How old is Hugh Jackman? She Madonna. Madonna's another one. Madonna um, gets with really young guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, but she was like historically like a sex symbol. Like, well, uh, she yeah. was. She and was. Maybe I'm sorry. I don't want to be mean, know? but she was. <laughs> no, that, listen, some, some, some people, people, some people, people age yeah. like Lucy Liu uh, aged like this <laughs> Madonna <laughs> aged like fucking the Trip Keeper. Yeah. Like milk. <laughs> entropy. <laughs> no <laughs> one can <laughs> escape the march of entropy, okay? At some point, we're all <laughs> like, going to be there. Can you describe entropy to me, Lactoid? Uh, it's what happens with Madonna. You look at Madonna, you're like, ah, uh, no. Uh, how ugly Madonna she is looks like Madonna is like especially ugly for an older woman. Especially, hey, we're not like, being like, I, uglier than the average older woman. I don't hey, believe that Madonna. Did, please hold give on, me money. we gotta be careful. Uh, Didn't what's his name what get Madonna's canceled? Watching, like, don't you mean? Attracted yeah, she might, she might, she might, she might, maybe she, she wants some of the young men so on this her. panel. Who knows? Uh, Wait, didn't didn't what's his name literally get canceled for ranking attractive women the other day? Wasn't that a whole thing that like, you were putting them on a list I and you didn't get her permission? So we got we got to go get permission from Madonna before we rank you. Him. Yeah, you you had him on the show. What was his name? Tom Fuller. Didn't he get like the people came after him for he called him a sex pest because he had a list. Because he had a list of women that he would fuck. No, he would bring he would bring up like IG girls and like uh and uh, he would bring he'd them bring on, his, on, the on the like uh, on the show. He'd like bring up their Instagrams and he'd rate them on their Instagrams. And people were like, "How dare you do that?" And then it was like a whole thing with uh with that one chick kelly jean no, where he was just like had her picture up and just ugly. kept it up on his stream and so people called him a sex pest was that the like, whole he, drama was that really that's it? the stupidest drama i've ever heard was like, like, yeah so she, never so she come does to my cosplay street, guys. So, so she does cosplay or whatever he pulls up her instagram on on his page and just leaves her like photos up and just like use it. he goes no well i'm gonna keep doing that and then says like sexual sexual things and the whole thing was um like uh you're objectifying her and his argument was like she's literally trying to be objectified so yeah she's what's appealing it? to his so, sexual interest yeah, yeah. then they said then so, they said that he didn't get permission from him yeah he didn't get permission from her so sex pest there is going to be a day where like you know you, you'll go to a fucking strip club and the strippers will be lecturing you on how you, you know, how wrong you yep. are for sexualizing them that will happen i pr i promise you I, I i was at a i was at a music already festival. happening i was at a music festival i had uh essential oils Right now, you, you'd, you'd give people the whiffs of the essential oils, and so we were sitting at like at like a tea, like a tea, a tea, a tea, a tea parties of sorts. Yeah, chloroform. And, yeah, and and so and so and so like I'm giving it out, and then this one girl just looks at me. She goes, "You didn't ask the consent of the people if they wanted to smell that." And I was like, "Okay, I don't know. All right, all right I feel you." I, I will say at festivals, there is one thing that I need people to ask. Poppers. Me, and I punch people in the face when they've done this is the stupid fucking light shows. If you get in my face and you start doing a light show, you're getting an ass with it. There's going to be a whooping. I hate okay. that shit. It's annoying. It's terrible. Wait a minute. Hold don't on. So, so the argument of like, well, I don't, you don't, you didn't ask for consent before smelling the oils or whatever. Like, I don't I ask for consent before putting, putting the whiff, like, you know. You don't ask for consent for cologne. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, okay. If you were to come up and spray cologne on me, I might be like a little bit upset. No, I had like a, yeah, like, a, a, like a roller of essential oils and I'd like hold it in front of me and they take a whiff. And yeah, it was because like, you know, you like eucalyptus, you just think you, you got a whiff of like eucalyptus because you're in a festival, it's congested and like all this shit. And so you you have like were you, were you, were, were you, you weren't shoving it in their faces, right? No, no, no. I'd hold it out and then they'd go in. Well, okay, but what like does that seems fine. does the consent matter on like the expect the social expectation of what they're smelling? Like, what if you had like really strong, powerful smelling salts? Would that be like now or a smelly person? Right? Are they even allowed yeah, or, to be in public? You know, or or I I would assume that she was referencing no, like for poppers, but I, you know, like I don't know if you're just sitting in a crowd and just you know yeah, not poppers you know, are expensive too. You know, yeah, dead lip, like yeah, I'm about to say I've I've done. How do you know what the pricing of poppers is, Gibbs? How do you not? I am an avid heathen. Heathen. Yeah. Poppers? Like, uh, You're a yeah, heathen for poppers? I'm you know, learning stuff about you that I didn't know. We established this like last week. When we were talking about the flavored whippet cans, because yeah, you were annoyed that the duster cans has a I, that I, bad taste. I am still annoyed about that. Well, I told you they have flavored ones now. It's fine. You've never like been about to, you know, I don't want to, at the risk of revealing too much, but like, you've never been like about to, you know, do some provocative activities with a woman, and then she's like, here, let me smell that popper, and then loosen up a little bit, and then you do some real wild shit. No? Wait, no, 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 no. Have like, okay, so you the poppers are for the woman, not for you. Uh no, they're not for me. I'm not. Why would I want okay. a popper? That's why I was I asking. I was I'm like, not, I'm not, I'm not my butthole. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's some <laughs> other use for poppers that I know about. Maybe no, no, it opens no, 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 up no, the no, front no. too. I don't know. I, I think uh, I, I'm not sure, all. but I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, but I think it also is good, good for like a uh, erections or something, or maybe like um just like yeah, increasing okay. sexual excitement. Well, we don't need that because I've seen like. People who topped and bottom, like you know, who use pop and yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, I've seen them porn. So yeah, it's like it's, a, it's like blue chew yeah. is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's their yeah, next, uh, that, that's their next product line, actually. And when, yeah, maybe the poppers do something because, like, may, I don't know. I feel like the I feel like the the blue chews is a scam. Or at least whatever I had. Maybe it was a little Are you going to take this shit talking about your sponsor? Are you going to take this shit? Uh, listen, you know, I'm going to, I'm listening. As, as Anti capitalism. A, uh, hold on. As, as a, as a uh, doctor, I'm not going to anybody do anything that they didn't enjoy or wouldn't enjoy. So if he didn't have a good experience with it and in a legal setting, then he shouldn't partake of uh, that said uh, drug. Okay. But then again, um, I've heard people who say that I've heard from people who say that Viagra, like they've taken like five Viagra's and it didn't work for them. So no, they probably shot. got other stuff. They got mad shit going on at five yeah, that, Viagra's. Those didn't guys, work. Did, those guys five, five, Viagra. It's got yeah. a delayed impact. So like after thirty minutes, it's just like boom. Well, they say because I, I thought it just like made your dick hard, but apparently it doesn't. Apparently you still have no. to be like around. No, you still have to I know be, some yeah. people. I know yeah. some people that take Viagra and then they they're like it's not. They take Viagra. They take it like, they take it like Adderall. Like, yeah, they'll take Viagra and then like the next day they're like we're hard. For, like you know we're gonna be able to get hard on command. It's not like thirty minutes later. Let's go. You know. It also kind of depends. On, it also depends on your um your dosage. There's like the. The high dosage is, is supposed to be used immediately, and then like a low dosage where she like take like continuously, um, and so like you're ready at any time. It's like Cialis. Um, Cialis is like the the yeah. once daily thing. Have you guys Viagra's seen? Like yeah, you Cialis. Is, I'm thinking of Cialis actually. There's yeah. a strong correlation between Viagra. Just recently, I, I they can't prove causation, but there's a strong correlation between Viagra usage and uh, mm -hmm. reduced Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. What do you, what yeah. do you, I'm actually curious, uh, Corey, so have you seen this well, stuff that's been coming out about like 60 so fucking percent reduction or whatever? Well, I want to so, a question as well that you, you can answer with it. At the end uh, of the day, go ahead, Gibbs. So yeah, so uh, is that like, uh, I read, I was reading the other day, and I keep seeing this in the TikToks, that they're calling it, what is it, uh, diabetes 3 or whatever, or th whatever the third type, does that have a relation to the, uh, the, the, the doctor? Thing? Yeah, I'm just, we're asking our fellow. Diabetes, I haven't heard of that, I'll plead ignorance of that. Um. Because I haven't heard of diabetes three, um, but yeah, well, so at the end of the day, like Viagra and like similar drugs, like they they are just like vasodilators. They're just going to increase blood flow overall. I yeah. can sort of imagine a mechanism of like yeah, increased blood flow also to the brain. Probably has some sort of maybe prote protective effects as well. Obviously, there's a correlation. I haven't done a deep dive into the studies, but like yeah, generally speaking, uh, having more blood flow to every part of your body, including your penis, might be some beneficial. Spike the is. water with Viagra. Viagra. In the water. We're gonna spike the exactly right. No, we have Alzheimer's. We, we put testosterone and Viagra. What could go wrong? That'll probably make white people mm -hmm. have more babies. I know that's a big concern for y'all. We just start having two. We we start Thank having you, two separate. I, I appreciate sinks. that you're concerned. Oh, wait. For, I we start having two separate sinks in the baby. home. One with estrogen. One with testosterone. Uh, we just fuel. We just fuel it. 
<laughs> and you know, I, I, you know, I want more white women. So like, whatever gets me that, yeah, fair enough. Um, Prime's on our side, right? He's got a direct financial or a sexual interest, interest in maximizing the white population. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I, I think we should leave it there. Um, <laughs> right there. Right there. It's exa- no more words. Just leave it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, thanks, guys, for uh, coming through. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to go through this quickly. Uh, lag to it for, for being great um, and hilarious. Uh, been, uh, I love it when you're uh, here and make jokes and stuff. You make good jokes. Um, but f- funny man. Um, uh, Corey, uh, thank you uh, for uh, being here as well and for uh, letting us, like, uh, smacking down all the stupid things that, like, lag to it tends to say. <laughs> um, correcting him uh, when he, like, starts to bring up studies like he's a big boy or something like that, right? Um, or a big man. So, yeah, or a big man, or a big, big man. Male. Excuse me, big male, a big white male. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> With the right. poppers, <laughs> it's no, rosemary. Not, it's rosemary. I don't, I don't think he. If, Wolf okay, toy. I, 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 uh, let's not answer the question as to whatever that was. Um, Admiral Gibbs, um, thank you for uh, coming through. One for. Um, uh, putting those thirst traps in our group DM. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Our friend uh, Gibbs here was a pretty handsome guy. How tall are you, Gibbs? Like, I'm Gibbs? like uh, five eleven. Five eleven. No, also, uh, tall. You're just as tall as uh, our friend Lactoid here, right? Um, uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for uh, coming through and being tall. That's all. That's all you added to this. Um, <laughs> much like it Gibbs is one of my favorites. I just gotta say, he's just really one of my favorites. Um, he's just a fun guy, and I really, really enjoy your perspective. Like, like non-ironically, make that. I appreciate clear. that. Uh, Iko, thank you for coming through uh, as well, friend. Um, and uh, we didn't get a uh, Shakespeare reference, or you didn't even really bite yeah, you when did. I like. Yeah, you did. Big of the Shakespeare from you. you did yeah, you make a Shakespeare well, reference? Scott made a Shakespeare. Yeah, it was about the Scott Shakespeare's thing. using the singular they. Yep. Oh, oh, was that was that what you were talking? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. It was on my grammar spiel. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I I was also expecting uh, uh you to, to uh bite on the uh, the, uh, the the religious thing, right? But you didn't you didn't bite. Oh, um, that's okay. <laughs> um, uh, it's hard to offend me when it comes to religion. It really is. I know. I know, I've tried. <laughs> you're, you're very good. No, I, I I don't try. Um, but uh, you're you're fantastic, and I appreciate your insight. Um, Bam, thank you for coming through. Um, you're fantastic as well. Um, one of my best <laughs> guests, which is why I have him in any uh, context that I can. Uh, so thanks so much, uh, Bam. And Ali, I love it when you're fired up uh, because you I, you jump in, you make some uh, uh, great points, and you come up with wildly different perspectives. So thank you so much, man. You did so okay. good, Habibi. 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 Oh, yeah, what does that mean again? Uh, you were trying to say, like, I was it, my heart, my love, I love you. It's just, okay. it's just, you know. Okay. Admiral Gibbs, thank you for uh, getting a sub, Habibi. Uh, there you go. Being cultural, being ethnic, don't we love it? Sorry, this is weird. <laughs> that was weird. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you all uh, for uh, coming through. Once again, I, I say that and I have not prepared a place to raid. Like, you would think that in all that time, I could just do this, but I, I'm like physically or intellectually incapable of having this ready beforehand. So I am going to send you off to uh, uh, who's streaming other than Lactoid. I, I would say it to Lactoid. Gibbs is streaming. Uh, I will Gibbs is streaming. Well. Okay. At Admiral. Thank Gibbs. you for the raid. I appreciate it. Yeah. We love you, friend. Uh, we, re- we love you and appreciate you. Yeah, I honestly love Mondays. These are like, uh, mm-hmm. it's like nice to know that I have like a Monday like debate scheduled every week, no matter like what it is. It's like, oh, we have no topic. It'll be good anyway. Yeah, well, it's a good it time. Out. Yeah, like cheers. Uh, Wait, yeah, you already did the raid, Prem. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I don't know if you want. If you guys still want to chat, I want to talk about this fucking Florida kid thing. Let me use the restroom, but you can talk whatever you want. Go, go. go ahead. That the okay. So the um, how do you guys feel about that Florida law where they want the kids to uh, under kids under fourteen to not be on apps? I think social media. And then um, because I sent this to you, Prime, I want to discuss this. If you still want to use it for next week, you can tell me. But 
uh, this fucking 11 year old or 12 year old just like walking around South Beach, Miami on kick, like being being like streaming and he's doing the Jack Doherty, um, uh, you know, like going around fucking with random people, adults, whatever it may be. And he like and, someone's food, I think. Or and he's grabbing someone's food. Yo, fam, <laughs> listen, if I'm sitting down and I'm eating and some kid just comes and like fucks with my food, it's going to take everything in me to not want to just annihilate this kid. Like, I just want, I would want to slap the fuck out of him. And this is like, this is becoming an epidemic of kids using it. With TikTok, there was the fighting the teachers trend, the, you know, stuff, uh, hit your teacher back like to what, two, three years ago? The, like, so how do you guys feel about like banning kids or actually requiring like, you know, IDs to use the fucking internet at a certain point, man? Uh, well, so, uh, Canada, I even, uh, I also, I think, uh, mentioned this story, I think maybe last week, uh, or at least put the story in the chat. Uh, like uh, Canada's like suing some social media companies because uh, like the actual like uh, the Ontario School Board is like suing I think Snapchat, Instagram, social uh, be, as a result of like uh, pretty much social media's effects on their attention span and pretty much uh, uh, so yeah with that Florida law I like there, there's a problem there that I see uh, I don't know if legislation will actually solve it uh, I'm I'm willing to run the experiment because like yeah the kids uh, having access to social media like. Uh, like, I think we're clearly seeing negative effects, uh, both, both in terms of their mental health, potentially, uh, and also just like, yeah. <laughs> um, I think, almost, I just think deviancy is on like a fucking rise. Well, and I, I think, think, there's, and I think there's, there's a reason I, I'm speculating, sure, but you know, uh, yeah. take care, Lactoid, always a pleasure. But you know, I think there's probably, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I think there's All right, writing on Adam to Gibbs. Uh, thank you guys for gave subs and on bits and all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you later.